Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to continuing coverage of the Merritt Western Poker Series main event from right here at the Merritt Crystal Cove Hotel, Resort, and Casino on the beautiful island of Northern Cyprus. Ali Najad, alongside professional poker player and author Dara O'Kearney, and more importantly, alongside just 16 players who remain from the over 750 entries that were compiled across three days of play. Here we are on our fourth and final day looking to crown a champion. Over $370,000 will be awarded to that champ. For the meantime, though, roughly $20,000. The payout, a large ladder left to be climbed, Dara. And as you look at the chip counts of this feature table, let alone the final 16, certainly some themes begin to emerge in terms of what we can expect due to ICM. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see this on the table that we start with, but there are essentially three different groups now. There are the big stacks, there are the medium stacks, and there are the short stacks, and they're all playing different games. The, the big stacks really want to put the pressure on now, get to the final table with a large stack, and to be able to apply the pressure right through the final table. The medium stacks are mostly concerned with getting to the final table. They don't want to take any risks at this stage of the tournament. The short stacks don't have that luxury. They have to look for a good spot, look to gamble, but purely by virtue of the number of big blinds they have, they have less tools anyway. Their games are simpler to play. But the the more complex play will come from the the chip leaders and the medium stacks. It is somewhat risky, though, uh, a bit of a responsibility in terms of how one proceeds with those big stacks. If you are going to get aggressive and look to exploit the opportunity before you, you could rather quickly find yourself amongst the middle, if not the short stacks. Got to be disciplined when you face resistance. A hundred percent. We saw we actually saw that in the warm up event. We saw the guy who, who started on the feature table as the chip leader was the guy who ended up bubbling. Now he didn't do anything wrong, but it's really difficult to play the chip leader stack because you have different considerations against every player at the table. Um, we spoke recently to Elliot Houdon who won WPT win. He said playing the big stack is actually the hardest thing. Well, the challenge is going to be met by all 16 of the players, whether big, middle or short stack, as we are just about ready to get underway and take you inside this lovely resort consisting of multiple different properties and our feature table consisting of multiple different nationalities. A very eclectic an ethnically diverse group here, led by Alexander Chernikov, with over 90 big blinds representing almost 40% of the chips in play. Dara blinds at 100 and 150,000 with 150K big blind ante. That means each and every orbit, these eight players will be losing 400,000 in chips unless they're able to keep pace. The short stack belongs to Orthodoxos, Orthodoxu, sub 10 big blinds, and I think you and I are both anticipating the first time he elects to partake in a pot, it will be for all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, defense is big blind. He'll, his only rule move is all in. And away we go. Chernikov there in seat two, rolling up his shirt sleeves, understands he's got a full day's work ahead of him. Yes. First action will come from a beautiful ace, king of hearts for Sanjagal. Yeah, Sandra Gao was the most impressive player for me yesterday uh, in the phase of play, the last phase of play that I commentated on. Um, he he was essentially cooler when he ran queens into aces and queens, but he managed to get away preflop, having put almost a third of his stack in. He then spun it up, and now you can see he's got a very healthy six million stack. Opens to three hundred thousand. The min raise as we get our first look at Edgar Raful, fourteen bigs, second shortest stack at this feature table. <coughs> Arun Jazar in the small. And there is Orthodox who I doubt that 10 6 offsuit will qualify. And you can kind of see a little bit of the frustration on those short stacks when they have to get through the blinds as the commitments are so significant, especially in the big with the ante. Yeah. Causing you to post twice effectively. They'd love to take a whack at things with all of that money in there but yeah and as bad as it is now the fact that there's a big blind ante and that doesn't reduce as the number of players on the table reduces means as we approach the final table that'll be a real uh, driving factor to uh, force the speed of play there is your chip leader alexander chernikov he really held the chip lead on multiple occasions certainly maintained a top five sort of stack for much of yesterday's play fought clean really didn't see him step out of line or do anything that would have caused us to question his procedures 
Yeah, he showed he showed imagination in that hand where he cooled the the two pairs of queens with the aces. He flattered the um, the aces initially, which which drew in the other queens. Um, but other than that, he played very very straightforward. Jack ten suited a very attractive bit of kit here for Masiej Komarowski. Off of two point four million here, showing some pause. 16 big blind stack. Wow. That's, um, yeah, that's a hand he could certainly have, uh, have played. But he might be keeping an eye on these shorter stacks, though. There are three of them yeah. at this featured table. And thinking to himself, I want to await some determinations in yeah. terms of their fate. Yeah, that, 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 that's what we call an ICM fold. And one of the things which happens um, when ICM becomes a factor, people generally think it just means play, playing tighter, but it's not as simple as that. Essentially what happens is the shape of the range changes. You often open more ASEX than you would without ICM, but you fold that type of hand, uh, a hand that doesn't have any blockers to the type of hands that are going to give you action. And worthy of mention is the fact that 16th will pay 19,155, but 15th is a pay jump to 22,000 and change. So that's, that's definitely a consideration, yeah. particularly with this stack here. You can see a seven big blind stack. Um, we already have some people in the chat. Um, Preflop Academy asks, where's Dominic? Dominic Panka, who is sec started overnight second in chips, is on the outer table. So no doubt we'll see him at some stage. Now, why wouldn't you have taken advantage of the opportunity to troll whoever that was and say, oh, Panka played a huge <laughs> pot last <laughs> he night. Bust. He, he busted 17th. <laughs> <laughs> 8-9 suited here for Komarowski. Certainly of 10 jack of spades isn't good enough. This can't be. No, if he, if he folded the jack 10, he's folding the 9. There might be a little bit of stalling going on here, um, hoping somebody busts on an outer table, which would allow him to open up his ranges. You do see the time box there, 30-second shot clock in yeah. play. Yeah, we saw this in the, in, in, in the warm-up as well. When they introduced the time box, um, it didn't actually speed up the, p the pace of play. All that happened was that everybody was taking the 20 to 30 seconds pre-flop. Suddenly they became cognizant of the luxury. Yeah, it's like, no, well, I, they allow me to use 30 seconds, so I guess I might as well use it. I remember once upon a time the, the days of Chris Ferguson. He really was one of those players who methodically, well before the advent <coughs> of the shot clock, would take exactly the same amount, amount of time, whether he was calling, raising, or folding in an effort to yeah. not give anything away. Yeah. But I think in today's game, people largely understand that it isn't necessarily emblematic of a, a sort of a, a time tell for you to... No, you know. no. I, I think you could, you could definitely take it too far. Um, you know, if, you've, if you dealt mine too off under the gun, you don't need to take 20 Correct. seconds. <laughs> Maroon Jazar, the ace-five offsuit from the cutoff. Third in chips, so slightly precarious for him to be taking some chances with two bigger stacks out there. Yeah. Orthodox who has a hand now which he would normally go with, um, but again, because of ICM, he might be... Uh, I think he might have already decided he's going with this, but he wants to use the maximum amount of time. That would seem prudent. Ace eight, obviously uncomfortable insofar as we know that a lot of ace X is in Jazar's <coughs> opening range here, but late position in the cutoff. Yeah, unclear whether or not he's capable of stepping out. Yeah, if it, ace eight is actually kind of a borderline hand because oh, yeah. if you think uh, your opponent is opening any ace, then ace eight is the ha is the one which beats more than it loses to. Good point. As the all in is delivered to the middle. <coughs> so 16 players left. He is on a money jump here. I mean, I don't think Jazar can fold getting the price. And one would hope that this was something that he had taken into consideration before he chose to make this open, Yeah, is the prospect of having Orthodox's button on the short stack jam on him. And it certainly appears that he knew exactly how he would respond as we see him call with the ace five and he'll be disappointed. Yeah, you can see those numbers don't add up to 100 because there are actually quite a few chops uh, given the proximity of their kickers. Orthodoxu giving his rail a little update. Taking the best of it. 
to the King-10 deuce board. And he does hold the ace of spades, which is working. Nazar looking for a five here. 2.35 million chip pot. <coughs> Turn is clean. And Orthodox who just needs to fade the five in order to at minimum chop. And the jack allows him to play both the ace and the eight. <coughs> I don't think a chop was available yeah, as of the turn. So, a clean start to this first orbit for the short stack. And, of course, <laughs> tremendously disappointing, not only for Jazar, but for Edgar Raful, who now will inherit the short stack title. <laughs> You feel okay about Ace Five opening and then calling off there? In the yeah, cutoff? I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm, like I mentioned with ICM, it's not just a matter of playing tighter. We should actually be opening more Ace X, particularly in late position, because we're blocking the hands that are going to give us action. He is very unlucky to run into a dominating Ace, and then he was unfortunate that he had to call off, um, getting the price. But uh, you know, you saw the preflop equities. Uh, the Ace Eight was only fifty-four percent to win there. Um, there were a lot of chops as well as, as as the occasional win for the AS5. So it's one of those spots that you just, it, it, it is what it is. It's essentially a cooler at that stage. Um, people think of coolers in terms of like aces against kings. Right. But there are certain spots, particularly late on, where you have to open your hand, you have to call it off. And this was one of them. Two black fives also deemed inadequate by Komarowski. So we're certainly seeing a theme emerge out of that seat of hyper conservative restraint pre-flop yeah yeah i think he recognizes he's pushing up towards he he's at the cost between short and uh, medium and he's actually therefore the one of the stacks that's under the most icm pressure at this stage a double up while helpful to him still leaves him well short of the big stacks um but busting now not only does he go out in 16th to not get the pay jump, but obviously it completely annihilates any chance he has of finishing in the top spots. Annihilation is certainly what's on Serge Mata's mind as he jams with ace-king suited, a real powerhouse on the button. Will there be patronage behind him? Certainly. Sanjargal does not rate to be the customer who is six-deuce off suit. Taking a beat. Puts it into the muck and a bit of a weird one for... Yeah, he's he's short, but I don't think he can call off here. Um, queen high is queen high. Ara Melki <laughs> Setian correctly puts it into the muck. A free look for the boys, by the way, as Mata would love to assert the idea that he's not just mashing the button. I'm seeing if you have good strategy. Sometimes. I'm afraid from camera. Well, don't get camera shy on us, Serge. It looks like Sanjagal admitting that he's afraid of the camera as well. Worthy of note, Dara, oftentimes on pro tours, we grow accustomed to people who have really been there and for whom a moment at a feature table or a final table, for that matter, is, is not at all weighing on them, but not so here in this main event. Yeah, absolutely. And in my experience, players who are maybe appearing on a feature table for the first time, it tends to go one of two ways. They either play more conservatively than normal because they don't want to do anything which is uh, which seems stupid, or they go the other way and they start doing all sorts of uh, uh, unusual lines, let's say. They're trying to impress with a high-wire bluff or a hero call. <coughs> Ace seven now for the button of Sandragal. Yeah, I think the two stacks behind are, are shortish stacks. So this is a hand he doesn't want to raise call or raise fold. So the best play with this hand is just to move all in himself. That's the exactly previous hand done. was a bit interesting because I think Ace King suited possibly qualified as strong enough to raise call, but um, he decided to just shove. Would have liked to have seen his stack a little bit shallower 
if he chose to rip it in there as opposed to maybe have a depth yeah, that exactly, would yeah. allow for some post-flop play. Yeah. Sandragal wipes sure. virtual sweat from his brow. So far. As his race uh -oh. gets through. <laughs> Heading over to one of our outer tables now. And I say one of, it is the lone outer table. It does appear that we have a pot in progress. Might just as held be involved. It appeared that he was as he folds. So perfect. disciplined you. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. He's my friend. Another day. Oh. Two queens for Orthodox. What a lovely start this would be. Yeah. For him, as he has already enjoyed one double up, Dara, and at this depth of 2.4 million, is it simply all in? It, I don't think it has to be. Um, he's got 14 big blinds. Once you go above 12, you can start having some raise calls and raise folds. I think this certainly qualifies as strong enough to raise call. Um, if you shove this, you're not going to induce uh, a lower pair uh, to give you action. But if you raise this, somebody might look down at sixes and decide to shove it or ace-x, uh, where the x is lower than a queen that you're in great shape against. Not sure if it's with intent, but he's giving off some real reverse tells here. Yeah, he does move all in, so... Oh. Interesting he, he chose to use one of his time cards on that, too. I mean, he, he always knew the decision he was making. And those time cards could prove very important as we get further down yeah. toward the final table. This decision, far simpler than the ones that he might be facing later on. Yeah, we actually saw that in the warm-up event. Paul Brown came back as the shortest stack, and he used all his time cards. But okay. he actually ended up as a big stack on the bubble. Okay, so King-Queen is giving action here, and... Some protection as well in the event that... Yeah, yeah, there's no way Komorowski is getting involved now. He just wants um, Orthodoxu to bust here and secure the pay jump. Normally, you would think Sandra Gall has the stronger range here, um, and, he do, and he does, but on this occasion, Orthodox has the stronger hand. <coughs> and the two queens will be thrilled <coughs> to be in this spot. <coughs> Worthy of note, Raful already folded a king of spades out of the big blind, so oh, yeah. just a couple of kings are actually available to Sandra Gall here, who... Has sort of stepped in it, but of course has Orthodox who covered. That's the good news. The bad news is a six high two club flop. Although the two clubs are working for the time being in conjunction with the queen of clubs. Now a chop available on the turn. Two actual kings and a five, what he's looking for. Instead he finds a heart and Orthodox who. Doubles once more, and the long face at the onset has now begun to produce some wry smiles. Yeah, tremendous um, start for him. Exactly what he wanted. He wasn't happy, I think, when he got there and he saw that he had to post uh, 300k already of his very short stack. But he's got two quick double ups. Meantime, in the chat, XRO asks, where is Vladimir Doroshkov? As far as we know, he's still on the outer table. He was certainly there at the start of the day. Um, Someone is on fire so, today. yeah, he's, he, he's still in. He came back with uh, almost 4 million. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 the hometown hero, by the way, is Orthodox Sue, a Cypriot. Yeah. You were saying about Doroshkov? Yeah, right? Doroshkov was, one, was the other player who really impressed me yesterday. He just mm -hmm. had total awareness of things like pay jumps, uh, what the ICM implications, and he remained incredibly patient um, playing the short stack, and now he's right back in the mix. Shout out to Dark Angel in the chat who's joined us. The ever present Dark Angel. Hearing the words ever present Dark Angel <laughs> had <laughs> over your shoulder had sort of satanic <laughs> undertones. <laughs> Uh, 
that either. So Jazara here, he's not going to be playing Queen 9 under the gun. Okay. Orthodox looks really happy with himself now, and why not? Two double ups. He's up, he's, he's up to above average now, having come in as the short stack. Really able to loosen the collar. There was a lot of pressure on him at the onset. Let's not get too relaxed, though. 7-8 offsuit is 7-8 offsuit. No. And as I was saying, he, he, he's now in that spot. He's used time bank two time cards already, and that happened uh, on in the warm-up. An English player called Paul Brown, who came back as the short stack, mm -hmm. used all of his time cards quite early, and then got to the final table bubble and had a big stack and a lot of difficult decisions. And the fact that he wasn't able to use more than 30 seconds definitely impinged. Komorowski has a king-queen here now. This He has tried to be avoided getting invo uh, involved, but he has seen the short stack double twice. I think he's just going to have to uh, go with his hand here. On the button, off of two million. Falling. Yep. Player is still hunting that pay jump, so that might have everything to do with why we see hands that are never going to call, taking a little bit more time than yeah. they might have otherwise anticipated. Uh -oh. yeah. <coughs> and the time cards do add an additional complication to the, uh, for the dealers. They're already tough yeah, job, made all the tougher by the fact they have to press uh, a button on that box every time the action moves onto another onto a new player, and they also have to press it when, for example, they ask for a chip count. Uh. Well, certainly would be remiss if we didn't point out that the dealing staff here is top notch and yeah. certainly ready to meet the call of a time box or any other challenge that they may be faced with here on feature tables or cash games or anywhere in the room truly. Shout out by the way to the costume department here <laughs> at Merit. Definitely went above and beyond here, keeping with the thematics of the Western Poker Series. Kind of a cool little wrinkle. Each of their series has a, a theme of sorts. We've been teasing yeah. the upcoming uh, sort of flamenco theme yeah. that's around the corner. I believe it's Miss Angela here in the room that is responsible in part, along with her team, for helping orchestrate these things. Now we find that Chernikov activating yeah. from the small blind, targeting Maroon Jazar. Yeah, Jazar has to call off really tight here because of the ICM. Even King 7 isn't strong enough, and you can see that's a great result for Chernikov. He got a hand which had him dominated to fold. He can pretty much shove any two there. Jazar was pretty irritated by that situation there. Imagine if he would have known that he was up against Queen 7. It's yeah. just such a wonderful spot. Yeah. Ten million. Good for you. At the table. Some chip envy on display <laughs> as Rap Fool came over to go. What color are the? What is that? <laughs> yeah. Sanjagal, part of a modest but certainly active Mongolian contingent that has made their way here to the island for this particular series. Really the standout nation for me in terms of the unexpected. You know, in the Middle East, we know there's a lot of, uh, yeah. a lot of gamble, but not a lot of opportunity. So clearly coming out this way makes sense. Europe, obviously tons of poker players from all across eastern and western parts of the continent, but Mongolia really struck me as a, a big surprise. Uh, I would presume 
This is a product of online poker kind of making its way into the territory and then those looking for additional fixes in the live arena. Yeah. yeah. Hopping a plane. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They really draw from all over the globe here. Little trivia for you. What's the capital of Mongolia? Ulaanbaatar. Wow. I should have known. That's, all, that's the kind of thing I can only <laughs> ask a fellow American and hope that they won't know. <laughs> you Europeans are too good with your geography. Tough booth. He's <laughs> too suited. <laughs> not a tough spot, though, for Chernikov, who no. opens to 350,000, and now Orthodox who weighing things with Queen Jack off suit. Obviously, the one guy you don't want to do yeah. a lot of horn locking with is Chernikov, the Reaper, as it were. Boss stack. Yeah. Yeah, you can call here, but you really don't like it. Uh, this would be a snap call earlier on in the tournament where there's no ICM considerations. But uh, this is this is actually towards the bottom of the calling range. He probably folds Queen 10. 10 8 7 does produce two overs and a gut shot for the Queen Jack. Ace Deuce still in front, working back to our hearts and the best hand. Even when you do hit kind of the dynamite sort of flop when you're orthodox yeah. so you're just going to take such <coughs> passive lines yeah. that is the issue you can end up just leaking chips because you can't play a lot of hands that you would normally play aggressively yeah. aggressively you end up having to play them very passively mm -hmm. so you're going to leak chips when you when you when you miss and you're going to not necessarily get paid when you hit as well check check in the turn now producing a double gutter for orthodoxu but chernikov improving to top pair Kind of a curious spot here. You're tempted to maybe try to represent the ace, recognizing that Chernikov can open so wide from the button. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's an unusual spot because Orth uh, Chernikov should be opening almost anything on the button. Orthodoxu will have actually have a much tighter defending range than normal, and therefore ace X composes a larger part of his range than normal. But even with the range advantage here, he can't be too aggressive. He's now got a double gutter, so he's... He wants to continue, he has to continue, but there's only one card to come. Half a million is the price. <coughs> just about a ninth of his remaining stack, and he's wow. just going to let it That's go. That's a big fold. That's a big Double fold. Uh, he knew, I mean, he was drawing to the nuts, essentially. Uh, a king of clubs would have been, a club would have been slightly problematic, but the chance that our opponent actually has a flush are very, very remote. Um, I think he could have called there um, for the additional half million. Question from Aidan <coughs> Quinn in the chat. Who's impressed you most that's left, Dara? Um, th the players are we already mentioned. Um, Doroshkov, um, Dominic Panka obviously is an absolute beast. And um, Justice, Justice Health, yeah. who's a secret beast uh, online, online phenomenon. They're obviously uh, extremely technically good. The player who I hadn't heard of that impressed me the most is um, the Mongolian player Sandrigal and this gentleman on screen, Luke Bandel, who appears to be all in. As we take you to the outer table, we do have something developing. It is Vakos Joma against Luke Bandel, two jacks against ace nine. Flop was three ace deuce. I'll hurry up. And obviously, the two jacks were climbing uphill from that point forward. A four on the turn, a deuce on the river, I'm being told. And yeah, Roma will double through the Frenchman. Yeah, big hit for Bendel there. He, he he played superbly yesterday as well. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. You get it in 70-30 favorite, and if you don't hold, it's probably not going to be your day. <coughs> Meanwhile, up front with the ace-nine suited... <coughs> Sanjagal made it 325k to go. Melky Setien, he's queen, an understandable jam over the top. And the ducklings really looking quite vulnerable and undesirable for yeah. Tomorowski. I think he's just, take, he's just using his full time here. I don't <coughs> think he was ever calling off there with twos. And that does show good awareness, too, from Komarowski, an older gentleman. He's aware of the, of the time dynamic, the fact that they're on a paid jump. Yeah, the ICM not lost on him, and that was displayed in, 
in the very first hand, I believe it was, after he folded the 10-jack suited. Yeah. Could have opened it from middle position. Yeah. And this is also an example of the time just yeah, orthodox, being utilized there. Orthodox is never playing 7-6. Again, we're seeing the same phenomenon because they now have the uh, the time cards. That's kind of legitimized taking 20 to 30 seconds uh, on a decision that isn't really a decision. Do you feel like when we're down to two tables that each time we're at a pay jump, we should go to hand for hand in order to prevent this sort of... No, I think that would, that would be over the top. It would slow the game too much. We saw the bubble really slowed yesterday. Yeah. Um, but there, there's really not much you can do about this. And you can, you can get lucky or unlucky as well. Um, you know, you can be on a table where everybody's playing really fast and the other table, everybody's playing really slow. And that gives the other table a, an equity advantage. Um, that's a situation where David Lappin always tries to educate his table that they should be taking their time. We buried the lead a touch, which is that Sandra Gall is willing to spin here with wow. the ace nine in really bad shape. Made the added investment. Flop is of no assistance to him. Does have some back doors available, and Ooh, that is one what a hell card. of a card. What a card. Flush draw and open ender obtained as ace queen is really sweating this river. Which is Oof. a black five. And Sancho Gal, you can see there, he has so many outs, very disappointed that he didn't hit one of them. And he's going to be uh, all but crippled now. Yeah, face telling the story as we bounce back to our outer table and find Dominic Planka with Queen Jack off suit up against Sergei Efimov's pocket jacks. Board is 3 7 Queen, so top pair for Planka and. Obviously, Efimov is going to be super disappointed given what great shape he was in with his holding. And the pay jump has been secured by the field courtesy of the departure of the Russian, Sergei Efimov. Yeah, Jacks are running bad on that outer table. Yeah, they are. Back here, though, the ace nine suited... 325 open, 2 million the jam over the top off of a not incredibly deep stack. Are you okay with calling off another 1.6 plus? Feels rich. It does feel, yeah. It feels it feels right on the cusp, actually. <coughs> There's 400,000 in blind and Annie money in there. There's yeah. the 2 million that's in there, plus your 325. So we're looking at 2.725, 1.6 for a whack at it. Not quite two to one. Mm, not quite two to one, yeah, it's really close. I mean, once you put in all the king queens and the hands that you're flipping with, you're probably getting the right price, um, but they're in the, there is a risk premium due to ICM. Yeah. Um, so I suspect if we ran it, it might be a close fold. Nothing close about this one, as I expect we will see the first participation from Komarowski. He did open the button, I believe. With and, the king and queen, take yeah. it down, yeah, with king queen, but here up front. And using a time bank, the pay jump has already been secured, so really these banks are just designed to sort of uh, reduce the range that these players' opponents are, are, are placing them on. Yeah, it's possible he, this is, th there's a little bit of Hollywood here. It's also possible he, he he's actually does have a decision between normal raise and shove, and he's trying to decide between which of those two options is better. Um, goes with the all-in. He does go with the all-in. He was relatively early. I think in late position, you would be more likely to raise, but in early position, when you have the whole field to get through, um, maybe the shove is the better option. No takers. Ace eight suited now for Sandragal on the heels of having had ace nine suited. He is covered. Boy, this would be particularly ruthless, Dara. Oh my goodness. He's got a rush of cards. Yeah, he stuck it in. <laughs> yeah, and he's gonna get shown the two black queens, which will be a very disappointing Sight. Yeah, have you said how impressed I was by him yesterday? I'm not 
convinced by this call off here. Um, it was Komorowski from relatively early position. Now obviously, Sandragal didn't know just how tight his play has been, but this is a beautiful flop. Maybe no reason to stand up, sir. Open ender. Five or ten will work, and ace would as well. Instead, it's a jack of clubs on the turn, and now we pull outs off the board. As Komorowski has the clubs covered, but still 18% is Sandragal. Can he get there? No. It is a flush on the end for Komorowski, and back-to-back -back suited diamond aces spell the end for the Mongolian. Yeah. Yeah, he enlivened the second last uh, session yesterday where he got away from those queens and then subsequently spun up. He's had a bit of a nightmare today, it has to be said. He has been on the wrong side of uh, a lot of almost coolers where he has the second best hand, but um, I think he will possibly reflect back on, so on at least two of those hands and wonder whether he should have got his chips in. The stacks were very, very close, clearly. Uh, they're just having to make sure. <laughs> so we've already lost a couple of heads as the field is down to 14 now, Dara. Page jump to 22,000 and change. The next jump will be at 1312. That transition be good for an extra $5,600. And it looks like we're going to bounce back to our outer table once more. What have we here? It is just as held with the ace jack, and it is ace nine for Luke Bindell. Lost with the two jacks earlier, covered here, and not a great flop, but he's right. It could be worse. Chops are available on the paired board. A nine would be a clean winner. Can he get there? No, it's the jack, and that is it for Luke Bindell, who really just was kind of top class through yeah. and through yeah, he in the was, time yeah. that we witnessed him. Yeah, yeah, just a cooler there, um, blind versus button. They're just making sure that he is covered, uh, counting the stacks. Stacks were obviously very close. Yeah, by our accounting, it's going to be au revoir, monsieur. Meanwhile, we got one brewing here with Arun Jazar, ace 10. Two point three to start. Two point three to start. So just under twenty. No, sorry, I'm not even doing it from maths properly anymore. Fourteen. This is an unusual. I mean, I guess he's raised folding this. Um. But Elke then using the bigger size is weird. Elke Setian is a customer here. Eight four deuce board. Not in either player's domain. Two quick checks. <coughs> Feels like a possible opportunity as played for Melky Setien to try to assert that he was just calling a wide variety of hands. Instead, it goes check, check, and he binks the jack for a winner on the river. Hmm. Yeah, Jazar's unlucky here. Obviously, he's been outdrawn, but I would have preferred to have seen a shove preflop, which would have got the fold from the queen jack. <coughs> Instead... <coughs> The ace-10 is being milked for 250,000. Oh, 
looks like a call might be forthcoming, although as he call as he breaks the chips down, he shoots a glance over to Melky Setien to see whether or not he can pick anything up and uh this will be disappointing. Yeah. For Jazar. Yeah, you can see there. That's the look of a man who's been rivered. On more than one occasion in his career, it bears <laughs> noting. Yeah. It's, you, you reckon that's the every time? It's, it's a cumulative effect yeah. there. Um, Barry Carter has turned up in the chat. Esteemed co-author Barry Carter, who co-wrote The Mental Game of Poker with Jared Tender and also Four Strategy Books with me. And he, he had threatened on Twitter to do this. He's popped up to say that last hand was a split pot. He said he was going to do that every hour on the hour. Uh, referring, of course, to a infamous hand from yesterday, where um, in a big tournament elsewhere, five people left, a player thought he was eliminated, walked away, was actually a chop pot, and nobody at the table picked it, and the player was eliminated. You know, it's funny. I saw something on Twitter that alluded to this, and I, I, it wasn't immediately clear to me. What it was, yeah. What they were referring to, and now I have... Solved the riddle, courtesy of the two of you. Glenn Miller's That's getting... That's shocking, by That way. is shocking, yeah. I actually saw that at an Irish Open once. Um, it, it wasn't a final table or anywhere near a final table, and it certainly wasn't a feature table. But uh, two players get it, got it all in, King-Queen against King-Jack, on a ace-Jack-Jack board. So the King-Queen, assuming he was drawing to a 10, stood up. Uh, there was an ace on the turn. He thought he was dead, and he walked away. And then uh, there was another ace in the river for, for the chop. Nobody at the table copped it, um, including the dealer. I looked up from my phone and said, stop, that's actually a chop pot. Wow, well, fortunately for that player, you were present. But unfortunately, he'd already walked out, and nobody knew who he was, and we weren't able to find him, and he blinded out of the tournament. Oh, man. So it looks like I'm pretty sure the big blind's getting a walk here. 4-2 <laughs> off is just one of the few hands you can fold. And he does. Komorowski looking just to see what his hand was. And it's the 10-3 off. Glenn Miller in the chat. Quiz question for Dara and Ali. What is the angle in degrees, if any, between the minute and the hour hands on the clock at 3.15? <laughs> this is at 315. Yeah. Well, we know oh. that the okay, hour guys, hand is going to be past 90 degrees. Why am I indulging in this? <laughs> this has nothing to do with the task at hand. <laughs> yeah. I've been trolled into it. <laughs> do we have a chat ban feature? I'd like to exercise <laughs> it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Not I the typical ban-worthy <laughs> transgression, but... Hey, my Russian bet. That's a nice choice. Pocket nines here for Jazar. Ten big, just over ten big blinds. Yeah, this is all going in. That's a bad choice. And we're down to 13, so... If it's red, but it's mine. My choice. Immediately being admonished, by the way, by his compatriots. Yeah, it's interesting. We got a bit of this yesterday, too, uh, the, the, the hand post-mortems. It seems like players are not uh, shy about expressing their opinion on other players' play. Not exactly the most endearing practice at the table. No, no, indeed not. I don't mind when recreational players do it. It's 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 part of the fun, but uh, it, sure. it it does annoy me when when professional players uh, start indulging in it, especially when they're on a bad end of an outcome. But certainly, yeah, printing money in terms of the choice that was made. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Never want to do anything to discourage bad play as a professional. You only want to encourage it. Bears noting, by the way, Dara, that we are oh, on another pay jump. First. Got there pretty quickly, too. Mm. Yeah, Ace pace. queen for Raful. Got yeah. it, I have, my friend. I, have I think he's going to have to call off here. He's Let's very short. Eight big blinds. 
It's, an, it's also another short stack, and this is another winkle of ICM. You, you're better off calling it off against a short stack than a big stack, because it's more of a benefit to you when you win. You cripple the other guy or, or eliminate him if you cover him slightly. I'm going to enjoy seeing the second card. Raful says the first one is bad for you. Must have squeezed the ace. That's incredible. He, he, he took 30 seconds to squeeze the first card and had to use his time card. That's and only got seven seconds out of that, sec out of that uh, <laughs> yeah, time card, right, by yeah. the way. Bears... No. Yeah. Good luck, man. And the chips do get in there, Ruffle, with a kiss of the ring, it would that appear. Mm. Oh, come on. It's a, a flip. Superstition being deployed. And it's a flip with a weighted coin. And advantage Jazar in terms of that weight. Ooh. And the ace jack six board. <laughs> Putting Ruffle in front. Jazar taking it in good spirit there. I'm a he won't be eliminated, but he will be down to 125k. We're all believers. Unless he can find a nine. Ooh, it's Close. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's black. <laughs> One point more. Come on. Hold on. Ooh. And the river. Allows the ace queen to hold as the two Lebanese players. Uh, no, no, I don't cover you. I don't cover you. I don't cover you. I'm still playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have 10 bigs, my friend. How much do you have? Yes, 1.6. I have 1.6. Realizing that uh, an elimination is not the fallout. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. The spirit there from the <laughs> unlucky Jazar. Good luck, Ron. Ah, it's uh, my uh, big blind soon. Anything for you. You're the boss. Meanwhile, back to the all important uh, quiz question. I think Patrick Winterbottom. Uh, a student of mine who's actually in the Bahamas at the moment has got the right answer. 7.5, I believe, is the right answer. <laughs> the right answer to what? <laughs> to the difference, uh, uh, the angle. Why are the we still talking <laughs> about that, Dara? <laughs> it's a slow news moment. <laughs> <As it, laughs> the news cycle today is yeah. light. As these uh, players get ready to play the next hand and they're all taking 30 seconds yeah. on every decision. Okay. We might need a bit of this more. Don't encourage yeah, okay. it, O'Kearney. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Oh, I mean, I spent three hours in the boot yeah, in the yeah, boot with, Dav with David Lappin just naming Colin Farron movies every chance he could get. So, you guys did kick off the work Western movie titles into the commentary <laughs> bit yesterday. Komarowski, after that double up, now is very comfortable. More than thirty big blinds. My dear friend, he's my dear friend. Raful enjoying his moment in the sun. Yeah, great moment for him. I mean, he was down to under 10 bigs there, and uh, now he's got time to chill. Uh, MM in the chat has picked up something there, which is that really Jazur <coughs> should have gone with any hand there under the gun because next hand he's going to have to post an ante and he w he'll only be able to win that ante back. It's ante first here rather than big blind first. An important distinction. Do you find that it's ante first in most tournaments? No, I, th I, I actually find it's big blind first ah, most, at least okay. in Europe. Um, I think psychologically players don't like the fact that if they have one big blind and they put it out, that's all they can win back. Yeah. Uh, you can obviously argue that it's unfair that they're allowed not to post an ante when everybody else at the table has has, has done so. But but the playing field is level in terms yeah, of it's the same for everyone. advantage. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, Raful stabs at the turn after a limp blind versus blind confrontation. I have, fire. I have big fire. hand, my friend. It's on fire. Big hand, I have. I limp. Okay. You only all like in. call. All, all in. in. I snap call. Only, only. All in. I call. It's gonna be this the hand. You all in. I call. From one You're my friend. Twenty-five. I will nice, be. Nice, Rami. Up. Thanks to you. Now Some sporting balderdash being exchanged there. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, he's only figured. Yesterday we had a player, a French player, Maxime Chiu, uh, who was in the same spot and was crippled, and he immediately asked the dealer to confirm yeah. whether it was big blind first or anti right. first. This is a sign of an experience here. He's now got the bad news that even if he wins this hand, he's just getting his money back. Up we go. Mata with the two jacks. What is it? Yeah. Strange to s describe it as such, given the strength of the jacks against this queen nine, but this raise does provide some insulation. Yeah. To Jazar. You'd hate to have to go up against multiple hands. Yeah, for sure. Kit. For sure. And yeah, we're see we're definitely seeing some use of the of the time factor now. Raful is not thinking of doing anything with the eight four off here other than folding, but using almost the full thirty seconds. And Jazar is going to get the good news that he does have an overcard. Mata, wishing his man good luck. Thanks. More incentivized to do so in the small pots. It's, it's so small. Suppose. Exactly. Risking very little here. Diamonds are working for Jazar. Still hunting a queen on the King King <laughs> 7 board. And there yeah. is a diamond as mm. suddenly a glimmer of light at the end of this tunnel. I didn't see the king. Diamonds are no good, only diamonds. Diamonds are forever. Can Maroon Jazar hit the flush? No. no. Instead, he hits the nine. Game, aye, aye. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Uh, and hard luck. That will spell the end of the road and perhaps... More importantly, for those that remain, an additional pay jump. As $22,040 will be collected by Maroon Jazar. But $27,600 is upon us as just 12 remain. Yeah, it's fairly raced along this early passage of play. Um, now we're getting there to the really interesting part where... Three quarters of the remaining players will final table, um, and that's the ICM is ratcheting up now. ICM comes to a peak just on the final table bubble, um, and then with each elimination on the final table, it gets lower. Although there's an unusual winkle in the payout structure here, the pay jump from third to second is greater than the pay jump from second to first. That is unusual. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever seen that before, and that uh, that makes the ICM actually more extreme. Okay, I move me. I move. I can't put right now, eh? For now. Three hundred and twenty-five thousand. The open from the ace track of Milky Setian. Yet another Lebanese player here. Three of them in total at the feature table. Truly just a stone's throw away from Cyprus is Lebanon, the island resting just off the coast. Deuce three offsuit. You have four more for me, eh? I don't know, I have like... Five, six. Five. Orthodox, so just trying to determine whether or not he's covered. Not that it would have mattered, I don't think. We have a question in the chat. Uh, what's the best way to practice satellites? I'm a winning mistakes player, but recently found that I'm probably donking money away in satellites. Yeah, satellite strategy is very, very different. Um, not to plug my book or anything, but it is, it is completely different. And I know some of the best tournament players in, in the world who are actually pretty bad at satellites. Um, it is a completely different skill set. In terms of practicing, um, 
Double or nothing tournaments online are good practice. They're tournaments where uh, typically they're, you know, it's a single table sit and go 10 players, but five players are paid double their money. Um, and that's essentially the same as the late stages of a satellite. Got something brewing over here at our outer table yet again. And on this occasion, we find aces for Vladislav Doroshkov up against Dominic Planka's ace queen. The flop, king six four. The turn, a three. The ace queen now drawing dead. And it looks like Doroshkov is going to double through Planka. Unclear just how big this pot was. They're going to count it down, but it didn't look like it'd be a flesh wound. Yeah, setback there for Panka, and he won't be happy to have doubled up Doroshkov, who he'll undoubtedly recognize as one of the most dangerous players left. Fall, my Doos. Doos. Eddie? Mata. Got to walk in the big there. <laughs> Dara, did you have a chance to grab lunch before today? I did indeed, yeah. Um, I, well, it's fair to say I got up late, so bre breakfast was no longer an option, but lunch was. I did not, and I'm indulging in... Uh, <laughs> Really gluttonous helping of Monty, which is Turkish ravioli. Delightful dish. Wow. Though I did dump it into some tomato soup in order to create my own Frankenstein bit of culinary offense. They like their soup here. It seems you can have soup for every meal. Soup yeah. for breakfast, soup for dinner, soup for lunch. I don't mind it. Yeah. It's I'll very allow it. It's really good soup. Well, the button can do a lot, but I don't think it can put enough lipstick on 9-3 offsuit <laughs> to make it a proper date. No. Yeah. Nice. You should be opening about 50% of hands there. 9-3 off figures to well be well in the bottom 50%. Mata, Mata did actually look like he was quite excited there as he was waiting for the button to decide. His seat bookended by utter napkins as the seven deuce. Puts it into the muck. Shows the sixes. Yeah. Second time he's done that. He had the ace king suited to start. Yeah. It's not necessarily a bad strategy. Sometimes people say you should never show cards, but if you want to send the message that you're opening legitimate hands and that increases your fold equity in the future, that can actually be a good thing at a point in the tournament where you actually want a lot of fold equity in a lot of spots. And like you're not really giving away any information. Everybody opens sixes in that spot. Everybody opens ace king in the previous spot. Be careful. If you're not going to leverage it, though, in order to show up light and, yeah. and try to take a pot away, then sure. really you're not doing yourself any favors. Yeah. yeah. If you are in it and you're just showing that you're in it, then certainly there's no advantage to that. Interesting spot here. I think King Sick. Oh no, sorry, he's under the gun. I thought he was the button. This is not an interesting spot. This is I'm using my full 30 second spot. He's doing a convincing uh, impression of somebody <laughs> who might put chips <laughs> into the pot. <laughs> Strangely, though, when he folded, he continued to kind of look at his chips yeah. as though he thought he had a dirty stack or something was amiss. He saw me a complete dummy there. I, I, I genuinely thought he was he had a decision, so I assumed he must be on the button, but he was actually under the gun. Now we see the big stack flexing a touch as Chernikov, wow. with four deuce suited, raises it up. Yeah, this is definitely on the light side. But again, he gets to do this because he has 13.5 million in chips. Pass. Look at this. Orthodoxu off of 4.1 million wants to take a peek at a flop in position. Mm. Remember, he did defend 
I believe, with the Queen Jack against Ooh, yeah. a prior open from Chernikov. Ended up turning a double gutter and just check folded on the ace. Yeah. Yeah, the Queen Jack defend was fine. The the fold on the turn there was was uh, he was an awful pun on orthodox too. Um, and this is definitely unorthodox as well here. That was low-hanging fruit, O'Kearney, <laughs> but I'll allow it. <laughs> Kamarowski Brings along for the ride with the Queen-8 suited to a 10-high board, which is a beautiful one yeah. for Orthodoxo. Chernikov is going to bet his deuce here. Um, backdoor spades, backdoor straight draw as well. Um, Might be assuming there's not a lot of 10x in the ranges of the guys who have flatted him pre-flop, so one can't necessarily blame him. 6x obviously no. doesn't rate to be there as well, so feels I like, like a very natural continue for him, and he gets jammed on by Orthodoxu. Yeah. Uh, this feels slightly reckless to me, Dara. I mean, the risk of ruin yeah, I when think you're wrong. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it, it's certainly extremely risky, but I don't think he, there's much else he can do because if he just called... Um, Chernikov would probably keep firing, and the bo and the, there are not too many good turn cards for his particular hand. So he decided, I'm just going to shove now, fold out all the hands that have equity against me. I don't know, backdoor diamonds and s and straight backdoors, draw type yeah, but cards. The backdoors don't help you too much when you're when you're sh playing against a big stack because, as we saw in, uh, in the earlier hand where he actually turned the double gutter, he still didn't feel good about calling yeah. a bet. Sure. You don't you don't like calling off in those spots. So I think he just decided, look, my hand is nearly always the best now. I'm going to shut it down. I'm not going to give myself a difficult decision on later streets. And yeah, you're right. It, do, it, it does seem rash, but actually when you look at uh, solver output in ICM situations, solvers often do that. They often just want to shut the pot down now when they have 70% plus equity rather than face um, further action on, for, on later streets. Those later streets, obviously things do get murkier as well from yeah. time to time. So. Removing the need to make added decisions is, is yeah, worth the investment. Absolutely, yeah. With the with the risk premium there, it's quite likely that on an all in bet he would need sixty to seventy percent equity. And ten nine suit had definitely had it on the flop, but on a lot of turn cards he would not be sure whether he had uh seventy percent anymore. Well the Russian Federation doing a little bit better for itself on this occasion as it's two sevens that Chernikov has put to work. Komarovsky is a very pretty hand, but there's no reason to get involved here. Yeah, good ICM fold there. 10-9 suited. This is a tempter in the yeah. big, as David Lappin likes to put it. Yeah, closing the action here. Um, this is a fairly routine call, even though you don't love it against the chip leader. He's already burned a few of his time cards as well. Um, maybe he's using the full 30 seconds here. <laughs> I love the notion of the way he just flicks out the chip. Almost yeah. Like Keeping an eye on Chernikov, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Not lost on him, the fact that Chernikov does have the big stack. Ooh, this is trouble, though. He's flopped top pair, and Chernikov has a set. Oh, boy. He might go all in here, similar to the previous. No, it's actually gone check, oh check. Oh, my God. Oh, it's no. over for Raful now. It went check, check, as Chernikov flopped too good to follow through. Yeah. Now Raful thinks he's the one trapping, but yeah. he is the trappy as... That burning smell in your living room is the remainder of Raful's hopes going up in smoke. What does Chernikov do now? Will he just call here and let him bet the river and then, s and then put the rest in? Worthy of note, though, Raful isn't drawing dead. A deuce or a 10 on the yeah. end yeah. would give him the W, but <laughs> Chernikov with sevens full, Sorry. content to just flat, and Raful is done. 1.45 in the middle. Yeah. What if he comes with something like half pot to full pot? Instead, he's just checked. checks it. I think he's gone into check call mode here. 
Uh, I mean, maybe he'll check shove, but it's possible he's just decided to check call here. It's a small bet as well. Pretty Chernikov. doubtful that the six brought in a straight for Chernikov, but yeah. as played, uh, Raful, this would be incredibly astute, and what a bit of self-preservationism this would be. Yeah, if, he's, if he can save himself here. No, he has put in the raise. Now when he gets shoved on, though, he might be able to get away. Um, he doesn't even have the nut nine here. I mean, he's losing to almost any nine that Chernikov would open from early position. Maybe not nine eight suited, but um, he's losing to all ace nine, king nine, queen nine suited, all those hands. But he hasn't left himself with a lot behind either. Chernikov's giving it some Hollywood now before he shoves. And he has effectively shoved. And he hates it now. Yeah. The veil of dread yeah. lowered upon Raful's head. I backed into an Edgar Allan Poe moment there, didn't I? I, I didn't <laughs> even realize that that was... Is he going to be able to somehow find the fold here? That would be amazing. You've got top trips. Doesn't it feel like 6-6 six, six at a minimum? Yeah, it's just you can't feel good about your um, trips now. The only real value you're beating now is 9-8 suited. Because uh, an overpair doesn't even raise on this board on the end. I don't even think 9-8 jams, though. Yeah. He's in the horrors here. Yeah. This is liquefy on the blender settings. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, he's lucky he's not already all in because had Chernikov played his hand uh, normally, he would have bet the flop. Raful would have called, and they might have very well got it in on the turn. Yeah, he does call. <laughs> Russian bear. He does his trademark celebration. Uh, that's a sick one for Raful. Showing a spot of sympathy. For his victim. Yeah. And truly yeah, difficult if, situation. Very difficult situation. I think if he had thought it through, he could have thought, really, like, what bluffs can he have? And Chernikov, while he's not afraid to gamble, hasn't really shown too many all in high wire bluffs. Well, getting some condolences and perhaps some kind words from his countrymen is Edgard Raful, who ends up being our latest victim. 27,000 plus going home with him. But the title here in the Merritt Western Poker Series main event will not be going home with him. As the blinds creep forward to 100,000, 200,000, Alexander Chernikov still sitting on the chip lead and the gap between he and second place is wide, a chasm. Five and a half million for Orthodox, Orthodox Zoo. Milky Setian, Komorowski, and Mata in that order. As just 11 remain now. And some uh, some dodgy punning going on in the chat. Aiden Quinn, another student of mine, says, Raphael's come up foul there. Yeah. Aiden, Aiden really? Listen, don't you go critiquing him, Mr. Unorthodox. <laughs> I, I remember that one. Unorthodox play. too. Yeah. That wasn't uh, your most complex synapse that got fired. No. I see where the student gets it. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the Lebanese delegation still has representatives here at this featured table. Milky Setian. The lone remaining delegate. King Jack off suit. Four and a quarter. Take it down, sir.
I remember when I had a black beard like that. A lot of salt has been added to my pepper. <laughs> it's all right, though. They say women are into it. They say that it creates a sense of uh, being an established gentleman. Yeah. I'm neither established nor a gentleman, so I'm not sure how that works <laughs> out. But. but you're in disguise. <laughs> Well, that, that hand must have been toxic. Mata was all too eager to get it off Very. his He was like, get this skin. away from me. Yeah. Okay, Komarovsky has legitimate hand here. He's, he's got the hand that, that spelled the end for yeah. more than one player here today. But Jack's on the button. Always going to go with it. 40, 42, 4.2, yeah. Just north of 20 bigs, 425, inserted. Five, six offsuit in the big. Surely we won't be burning a time bank. Yeah. No. Next pay jump, by the way, Dara, no. won't occur until the 10 to 9 transition. We're about $10,000 in added money mm. between 27.6 and 37.3 will be available to the players. Five-handed, we continue from here at the main event of the Merritt Western Poker Series. Our thanks to all of you out there, wherever you may be, whatever time zone or spot on the blue marble you're streaming us from, whatever platform. Glad to have you with us. Alina Jad alongside Dara O'Kearney. David Lappin waiting in the wings to tag in. Chernikov goes to work from the puck. Let's see if we've got 30 seconds to spare here. <laughs> I, su I suspect we do. This is, I guess, where the trivia comes in handy, huh? This yeah, yeah. These the fact that you're if, to? if they're all taking 30 seconds, it's uh, it does slow the game down considerably. Worth noting here, Chernikov went for a bigger sizing this time on the button and uh, 2.5x to discourage action. No takers. Queen seven now. Komarowski. Declines. Not sure what Chernikov folded, but out of the cutoff, into the muck it went. Visions of blackjack for Orthodoxu here. We know the eight deuce not quite serviceable from the button. Yeah. Not off of 5.1 million at least. No. And it looks like a walk is going to be promptly issued to Melki Seti. And now we do have the Cypriot Orthodoxu here at this feature table. Clearly, we're on the island of Cyprus 
Dara, so I turn to you with a bit of Cypriot trivia. Cyprus is the third largest island in the Mediterranean. Name the two largest. Um, Sicily and Corsica? Final answer? I'm, I'm, I'm worried now that it might be Sardinia. I, I'll give that my final answer, yeah. Wow. You did hedge with Sardinia, and indeed it was Sicily and Sardinia, the two okay, islands yeah. off the coast of Italy that yeah. are the only two larger than Cyprus. People in the chat getting it wrong too. Somebody said Corsica and Sardinia. So it wasn't a mile off thinking. I'm, I'm Cor it must be pretty close. Corsica is pretty big as well. Uh, a lot of love for Panka in the chat asking where he is. He's still on, on the other table. Um, we have 11 players left, so <coughs> Panka is on the other table. Bit of a handsome devil. It's unclear whether or not we're dealing with fan boys or fan girls in the chat. Uh, indeed, indeed. Well, Kisetian, a fan of Queen 5 off, apparently, as he targets Komorowski, perhaps sensing that our man is on the tighter side. Yeah. Komorowski is definitely on the tighter side, but he's on the tighter side correctly because of ICM. And Melchizedian, while he didn't cover him by too much, did cover him by enough that he could put the pressure on there, um, open a very, very wide range of hands. If Komorowski comes over the top, he can release his hand very quickly. So that's a, that's a play which will definitely show a profit long term. As far as we are aware, um, Doroshkov is also on the outer table. Continuing with Cypriot trivia of the 1,950 species of flowering plants worldwide, 140 are located in Cyprus, which is home to around 20 rare species of which flower? Wow. <laughs> you really don't have the trappings of a horticulturist. I absolutely so. don't. Um, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm really bad on flowers. I know about five different flowers. So there's zero chance I'm getting this. What are the five flowers you know then? Uh, buttercup, daisy, daffodil, rose. Might not even know five. It might be four. <laughs> I feel like you know a fifth that you're not mentioning if you just rack your brain a little Lily. bit. Lily. Lily, yeah. You've overlooked perhaps the most exotic of all flowers. The most exotic. The most ornate. The orchid. Orchid. Orchid it is. Yeah. 20 oh, is species. Oh, is it orchid? Orchid, yeah. Wow. I had to lead you there. Yeah, you did, yeah. That's all right. Team effort. Team effort. Well met. Um, How many days of sunshine a year does the island of Cyprus enjoy? Oh, wow. It must be almost 365, <laughs> I imagine. Uh, probably the same number of days we get rain in Ireland, which is 340. <laughs> is, that's not <laughs> true. Stop <laughs> it. Over or under 280? Over, I assume. It is indeed over 300 total days. 300, okay. On average of yeah. sunshine a year. I packed like a real arse because <laughs> I looked <laughs> and I saw some low evening temperatures. Right. You looked at the wrong time of the day. And Lord knows I've got a wholly inadequate number of T-shirts and no pairs of shorts in my suitcase. Yeah. It really yeah, is just Well, if it makes temperate. you feel any better, myself and David went to Vegas in December, and it was the first time we'd ever been to Vegas in winter, and we just brought our normal summer Vegas clothes. Thinking well, that, that was sharp. Yeah, we, go, we went outside the first day, and we were shivering. We were like, it's actually colder than Ireland. Oh, yeah. Real cold. Not at all cold. Is this Ace 3 suited on the button? Nice and toasty for Kamarowski, who yeah. opens to 
four and a quarter. Yeah, Kamarowski has imp has really impressed me as well. I have to say he's he's uh, he hasn't really set a foot wrong at all. Um, there might be a perception that he's just playing tight, but he's actually, in my opinion, he's very ICM aware, and he plays really well post up as well. During their annual southerly migration, 10,000 of what species of bird? My father was answering this question because he, he, he was a genuine bird lover, which I'm not. Um, I th was it David Lappin that told me his father was a bird watcher? Was it? Yeah, it might have been. Both of you come from bird watching beginnings. Yeah, yeah. My father was a. My father was actually in charge of a bird sanctuary um, for a while in Southern Wexford, so he would definitely be able to answer this. But uh, now, I when I you say know. bird sanctuary, you're not using that in a colloquial sense, like he wasn't a brothel keeper no, or something. No, he definitely like was okay. a brothel keeper. Just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he was in charge of a small society. That, uh, I can't remember. <laughs> Audubon, I believe, is the yeah, name of it. No, definitely not. Well, it was the flamingo oh, that we were looking oh. for. Oh, I, I would never have got that. I was drawing dead there from the start. All in here from yet another ace three, which is in the small blind, commanded yeah. by Orthodoxo. Yeah. Again. That's a, just a pure ICM play. You don't want to raise call that hand, um, but it has enough equity to just shove. Uh, somebody in chat asking about uh, payout list. If you go to Poker News, this event is being covered on live reporting, and uh, the p all the payouts are there. Yeah, but they're asking us, Dara. Is there any list with payouts? Oh, okay. <laughs> there is a list. There There's is a your list, and, and it's in Poker News. Yeah. Currently, $27,600 is looking for a home. The next jump from 10 to 9, 37300 So a whole lot of very bad rag hands being folded. The four deuce will eventually be folded on the button, I think. Not before the standard 30 seconds <laughs> is gobbled up by Orthodoxo. His first name, by the way, is Orthodoxos. Yeah. Orthodoxo, which can't imagine was an easy one to navigate growing up. As we go back to the outer table, and it looks like we've got yet another confrontation here. On this occasion, it is Bakos Joma's King 7 up against Dominic Panka's King Jack. 9 4 10 on the flop a pair of nines on the turn and on the river the jack secures panka as the winner and bakos joma as our 11th place finisher yeah and just like that we are now on the final table bubble which is a money bubble yep in terms of pay jump i should say we've got another all in this one Coming from Mata, playing under the Saudi Arabian flag, KSA. Uh, oh, this is very wide. This is a uh, 15 big blind shove at 7-4 into a stack that covers him as well. No defense. This, no is, this is super wide. And it's very close decision for the King-10. Off of 5.3 million. Yeah, I think if he had 15 million, he'd call in here for sure. But with 5.3, it's over half a stack. It's uh, a tricky, tricky spot. It's been counted down. 
and he does let it go. Can't blame him there for, for ICM reasons. Um, Matt will be very relieved to get the fall there with the 7-4. I think that's the story, though, is a very unexpected behavior from Mata, who I'd be willing to guess wasn't saying I had 7-4 off suit there. No, I think I heard words which sounded like belle ma, which would be French for good hand, so whatever language he's speaking, maybe that's what... I think he's saying I had a good hand, but he did not. It's weird in those post-mortems with unshown hands. It's infrequent that we hear someone say, I had a bad hand. I had a real bad hand there. That's true, yeah. yeah. Unless you're trying to wind the guy up. Right. Yeah. General principle I always follow is I believe what I see at the table. I don't believe what I hear. That's a philosophy that it is difficult to apply to flatulence, <laughs> for what it's worth. It would, <laughs> it would require some real, yeah, a real bad bout of it to, to be able to see it. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I suspect though that neither the auditory or the visual senses are the are the crucial ones there. <laughs> <laughs> well met, a six here for Mata. Well ahead of the 7-4 offsuit that he jammed from the small blind with. And here he is opening. Even this one open is a little bit unorthodox. Um, this hand isn't, certainly isn't strong enough to raise call. Um, but you really don't like raise folding it either. So the default play would be to just jam this one. Komorowski with the with the with the four three in the big blind. Can't imagine he's going to get involved here, but he's giving it some reflection before he folds. <laughs> it looks like there's no hand for hand. That's been commented on at the table. Often TDs like not to go hand for hand unless their, force, their hand is forced, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, because it, hand for hand does slow things down significantly. Um, and if both tables are playing at reasonably the same pace, there's actually no need for hand for hand. I think he's confirming no hand for hand. No. I'd like to go on record as saying that moving forward, anyone looking to enhance their appearance in a delightful way should reach for feathers. Can't go wrong with feathers, you reckon? Irresistible. <laughs> Lovely accessory. That said, if Lappin walks into the booth with feathers in his hair yeah. later today, I, I will have to retract my statement. <laughs> Ace-10 now for Mata, who has... Certainly come alive a bit in this orbit. And you do see, especially kind of shorthanded, a lot of ebb and flow in terms of play and momentum. Guys will find a gear and, and kind yep. of really begin to accelerate. Then maybe they, they take a beat, they slow down, get yeah. back into their shell a bit. Yeah. You're also just in a later position. Like even when you're under the gun, you're, you're basically the hijack. So... Uh, that forces you to play a lot more hands. Yeah. And the impact of the big band ante is quite large as well because uh, it does mean that they're posting half a million every five hands, effectively 100,000 per hand, which is a small blind. So w when you're in a situation where you're posting a small blind every hand, that f um, you can get whittled down pretty quickly if you um, sit, sit on your hands, so to speak. Yeah. King, queen, three, rainbow is Chernikov defended from the big with two fours. 
Good shot draw from Mata, who promptly checks back. And Chernikov, you can feel the sense that maybe a little sprinkle on the turn would earn him the pot, but he does come with a check. Mata does the same. And Ooh. binks Jin on the river for Broadway. Yeah, I mean, Chernikov won't put too much money into this pot with his pair of fours, but definitely a nice outcome there for Mata. Well, he's not going to put any money at all into the pot. 550. Never say never with Chernikov. We saw him make some very light calls yesterday. Well, yeah. he wasn't going to lead at it. Is yeah, he definitely wasn't a better way to. Yeah, he definitely wasn't right. leading for sure. Although no. he seemed to consider it. His 550 does have uh, an odor to it, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, you're beating absolutely nothing with fours, so. But every now and again, absolutely nothing might be exactly what plays the hand this way. Sure. Sure. Though, for Mata. I think it's more likely absolutely nothing bets the flop, though. Uh, yeah, and, and on that board texture, it doesn't seem like Monta can show up with a whole lot of nothings yeah. combos, you know. But remember, this is the man that ripped it in there from the small with 7-4 seven, four seven, four, which started this re recent rush now. He's won, he's won a succession of hands. Um, none of them very big hands, but they, as you said, they're all big pots at the moment. There's half a million out there every single hand. Uh, Patrick Winterbottom makes a good point about the need for hand for hand. He said, given that they have 30 seconds in time bank chips, there's really no need for hand for hand. Yeah, that's true. Like, nobody can really uh, tank too much um, without using their time bank chips. So, that's going to uh, mean that the two tables should play at roughly the same pace. Obviously, if, every, if everybody on one table is using their full 30 seconds every decision and the other table is playing faster, it can be a bit of a discrepancy. But. More than likely, they're playing about the same rate. Well, Cassation definitely getting after it. This is a loose open, um, but justifiable. The suited king in the cutoff. He's another one that's been real sound here at this feature table. Yeah, he has been impressive, for sure. And you know what's funny? Because a lot of times I think the presumption is when we say impressive that there needs to be some sort of glitzy, uh, you know, conduct yeah. out there. But really just adhering to what ICM dictates. Good fundamentals, you know, yeah. Just, yeah, being fundamentally yeah. sound is yeah. impressive. It reminds me of like a, a Tim Duncan of the San Antonio Spurs and in, in the NBA was, you know, perennially a, a, a terrific player. Never did anything that, you know, wouldn't dunk yeah. the ball on your face and come up yeah. with some big you know, war cry or anything like that, but just consistently went out, performed, did his thing, made all-star team after all-star team, and yeah, that's uh, another path to being really heralded is just being fundamentally sound day yeah. in and day out, hand after hand here in terms of poker. Yeah, I sometimes hear people talking about top-class players and, and expressing surprise that they don't seem to do anything out of the ordinary, but to be honest, that's a lot of what top class poker is. It's not really about the, the, the high wire plays. Um, it's just about consistently making good, solid decisions and not making big mistakes. six off into the muck. It should have company in short order here. Now Chernikov with ace nine on the button goes to work. Yep. Over under 25 seconds for this eight deuce here in the small. Um, that's a that's a good line. <laughs> it is the final table bubble and a payout bubble, though, Dara. So yeah, you know, you oh, can no. be aggrieved, but it is 
inbounds and optimal for Orthodox Suda. Do what he's Ooh. doing. And for Over Mata, here. did he jam here? Yeah, he sure he has did. Jammed. Yeah, this is this is the standard play with his stack, just over 20 big blinds. And this is a tricky spot for Chernikov. It is. He has called. Yeah, didn't take too long to do yeah. so. And he is in rough shape. So might this be the first chink in the armor for it's a cord? the overwhelming oh. chip leader who what? is... What a turnaround for Mata. Not, not long ago we saw him uh, jamming the 7-4 from the small blind for 3 million. And if he holds here, he's going to be up to over 9 million. Well, the Russian bear is currently a cub with ace-nine against ace-queen, and that fact remains on a king-high two-diamond flop where the diamonds are covered, and really, lonely nines are the only path to profit for Chernikov in this pot. Looks like he's ready to count down. Ace on the turn doesn't change anything, although some paths to a chop now. If the board pairs, a seven or a three specifically. Instead, it's a four on the river. And Serge Matas, northbound surge continues. That's the first major setback we've seen for that man, Chernikov. He's been chip leader effectively for two days now. Still plenty deep, Dara, but for me, it's going to be more interesting to see just emotionally how he reacts to it, right? A lot of times yeah. when you are the chip leader, you've grown accustomed to just being on the profitable end of every exchange, everything's smooth, and now all of a sudden you're a bit bruised. Yeah. How do you get up off the mat? Yeah. I think he'll be fine. He did actually take some setbacks yesterday when he was chip leader. I think he briefly lost the chip lead uh, before the big aces mm -hmm. against Queens versus Queens hand, which uh, reasserted his chip lead. And in that passage, uh, he didn't seem too perturbed. Hey, you listen. So over 9 million is it now for Mata? Yeah, and this really does change the dynamic in this table. Chernikov has been massive chip leader uh, since the start. Now he doesn't have too much more chips than the man he just doubled up. Right. And Mata has already shown that he's not, not afraid to get involved. Chernikov has not really pushed on with his chip lead. Now we saw him open stuff like 4-2 suited and playing reasonably wide, but he hasn't applied too much pressure. Um, Mata might be a different proposition with the big stack. Yeah, obviously he's got more options at his disposal at this depth than he did en route to it. Let's see what kind of adjustments await us out of that seat. Pocket fives, the follow-up for Chernikov. Opens to five and a quarter. Deuce for Orthodox Zoom. <laughs> no telephone, sir. <laughs> After you have penalty.
customers. Tense moments here in the main event of the Merritt Western Poker Series where 10 players remain, nine will punch their ticket to the final table. $10,000 pay jump, also a part of that process. Yeah, after the money bubble, this is probably the tensest point in the tournament. All 10 of these players know that nine of them will make the final table. Um, and in addition to being a money bubble, this is a huge emotional bubble. Going out in tent always feels really bad. Well, we're used to the delays out of this seat, but not so used to the opens as Ace three suited makes it 450 to go. Mata does not hesitate to put Ace nine into the muck from the button, by the way, off of that new big stack. Yeah. Yeah, I speculated he might start applying pressure. It actually looks like the opposite might have happened. He might just f be happy with his stack now, and he's thinking, um, I can just um, play very comfortably, play snug, um, and the final table should be formed fairly soon. Clutch in, put it in neutral. Yeah. Coast just your way chill. to the final table. Yeah, interesting contrast the shoved the 7-4 from the small blind for 15 bigs and then just snap pulled the ace-9. So Orthodox who picks up blinds and annies. And remember, the 7-4, he only had 3 million at that point. Yeah. Yeah, it's been quite the spin-up for him. So he's obviously feeling very good. Sometimes you get that. People sit on their recent gains. They don't want to put them at risk. It's like Orthodox who is waiting every time for the dealer to tell him five seconds before he folds. And we have a legitimate hand here on the button from one of the more aggressive players, more ca willing to go after it. Um, but he does have a legitimate hand here. Melka sitting bring it in for the mini plus open 425. I always wonder with that extra 25,000, there's no hand that's going to fold for the extra quarter that we put out there. What are we really looking to accomplish? Yeah, I had this debate for years with a close friend of uh, myself and Davis called Dara Davy, and he was a big uh, proponent of the Mini Plus. He felt that, the, that it genuinely made a difference. It was more of a psychological difference yeah, than anything else. Yeah, I could else, see that. That people were quite happy to put in one big blind, but once you went any amount over that, they yeah. would actually start to fold some hands. Tough to quantify, but... yeah tend to agree as it comes king jack three after the defense from chernikov both players with gut shot straight draws chernikov checks it over yeah no reason to lead on this board it's a very interesting spot from acquisition because he has the not no pair here and that is a hand you can certainly consider checking back but <laughs> this is a very good board for him so uh, irrespective of his hand there's a Strong case for just range betting this board, betting whatever hand you have. But Chernikov is going to hang. Yeah, the 450k. Is that a raise? No, it's getting called. Oh, that's a call, Green yeah. Green chips, yeah. Yeah, so he's hanging on with his gut shot, backdoor flush draw. A complete brick, the yeah. ultimate brick on the turn. But when you get check called with ace queen on this board, despite the fact that it's draw heavy, you do get a little wary of being up against a pair. Yeah, and the car and the card the turn card matters as well. Like it's not a card that you've ever improved on, um, so checking back is definitely prudent. That's exactly what Melky Setian felt as he does check back and. 
Jerry kind of firing out a bluff here. Uh, wooden Molly Five in. on the river. Yeah, snap firing too. Mm, the fast bet on the river is often a bit suspicious. Um, because if the player really has hit the ha has hit the river, at the very least they might have to consider their sizing. This <coughs> might work though because Malcusian doesn't have a pair. Got to ask himself now what are the bluffs? Clubs. Queen ten. Is uh, yeah. He's using his time bank card as he tries to work out this. Where where are the bluffs coming from? Do I block them? Do I block value? It's very draw-heavy texture on the flop, obviously. Very draw the clubs, the straights. Yeah, there's a lot of available bluffs there. And he's unblocking clubs. He's completely unblocking them, yeah. He's blocking some of the straight draws, uh, yeah. queen-10. But apart from that, his hand makes a very good bluff catcher. Ace-10 being blocked as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, credit to him because clearly the gears are turning. Yeah. We can take a three, a deuce, or a five out of the range. And it really becomes a matter of jacks or kings, realistically. Yeah. Yeah, the both turn and river were effective blanks. So he's weighing up the amount of kings and jacks on the flop against the amount of missed draws. He's really consuming the time on this one. Well, he'd be wise not to consume too much time. Yeah, they do get replenished on the final table, so... Uh, it is a genuinely tricky spot. Oh, and it and gets through. Goes, so, yeah. Chernikov with bated breath. Yeah, very relieved there. He stole that one, the Russian bear. Efficiently hauling in. The spoils. Looking at his end and mob, by the way, Alexander Chernikov does have 375,000 plus in career live earnings. His best cash was for 105,000. Spending most of his time playing in his native Russia. Makes his way out to Cyprus as well for stops here and there, sprinkled in between. Limps the small with a 10-6. Orthodoxu <laughs> wraps the rail. Several times. Jack 8. Ahead of the 10 high, and there's an interesting flop. Top pair for Chernikov, open ender for Orthodox. Check to him. Little 200K sprinkle, gets flatted, another 400 into the middle. Pot up to 1 million. Passive line being taken here by Chernikov. Yeah. Very hard for either player to have an ace here.
think Chernikov does like to play a slightly trappy slash uh, bluff catch style when he has a hand. We saw him do that with the sevens earlier when he flopped um, middle set against top pair. Here With the Doxu's check back, by the way, Dara, not to interrupt, does yield a brick on the river. And again, as you were mentioning, Chernikov taking a passive, potentially not trappy, but clearly just looking to induce type mm. of line yeah. at this point. Yeah, these are two bricks, so Orthodoxy decided not to bluff there. Chernikov was going to snap him off. I think he'll be happy with how he approached that jack eight, despite the outcome. Yeah. Yeah, he got to realize his equity. He just didn't hit. Didn't have to put in too much money to get there as well. Been a fairly swift recovery, by the way, for Chernikov after yeah. losing to Mata. Yeah, he's definitely an uh, experienced campaigner. He'll be used to... And he, and he does have a very uh, loose gambling style, so those types of players, they're, they're more accustomed to seeing wild chip swings anyway in their stacks. Largely a spectator is Komarowski over the better part of the last half hour, let's call it. Yeah, he's been pretty carded, and he's also been ICM handcuffed by his stack as well. He's been in that awkward middle zone for most of this passage of play. Chernikov, Jack-5 off suit. Leaning on the blinds. Lovely spot for Mata, should he choose to get involved, which he does not. And another data point here that suggests maybe he is looking to coast to the final table off of that depth. And you had you mentioned just how quiet he had been, but now he's got a hand he's gonna have to play. Three point seven million. About 18 bigs. Off of that depth, certainly could open. Yeah. Doesn't need to rip it. But it's a close one because you don't feel great about Ray's calling this, and you certainly shouldn't be Ray's folding it. It's kind of in that zone where you might be better off just ripping it, even though it is 18 and a half bigs, as you said. So that's why the time card is being used here. Even very experienced players, they will have their ranges wired in for different stack sizes early on in turns when ICM is missing a factor, but ICM changes so much that that's the one point where tournaments, you will see players having to use quite a considerable amount of time pre-flop. Missteps at that stage are very expensive. He's never calling here, no, for sure. No real decision. I think this is a little bit of Hollywood. Matter quickly folds, and this will be folded as well. So the show would have got through. Yeah. It's interesting to note how some of the players don't exercise the full 30 seconds, and I'm reminded of your friend who in the World Series of Poker main event 
on the absolute money bubble. Just couldn't bring himself. Yeah. Yeah, and ended up bubbling as well. To do it, yeah. Did he get a free seat to the following year then? No, he wasn't even he wasn't he wasn't the actual bubble. He was like oh, okay. seven from the bunny oh, or something. Oh yeah, that's foul. Yeah. The, yeah, the real bubble there is the is, is the not bubble, but the spot before that. That's got to be the most heartbreaking ex experience in all of tournament poker, I want to yeah, say. Yeah, like that's just a sick bubble. You might not recover from that one. <laughs> that's, that's, you know. Yeah, Alan doesn't play anymore. Find a guy curled up with a yeah. rotten blanket at a bus stop somewhere. You go, what happened to him? Oh, he bubbled the, the main. Limp from the small out of Milky Setian. Sharing a 10 with Komorowski, dominant addition. Check back from the big. King Jack 9 flop. Both players with straight draws advantage Milky Setian in terms of being two way. 10-8 actually plays right now for the best hand. Two hundred and fifty K lead. <coughs> and Komorowski's going to peel here. The ten of hearts interacting nicely. Could have something to do with it. Yeah, this is an interesting peel for sure, but he does have the backdrop flush and position as well. Position as well. And actually the ten gives him a, a smidgen of showdown as well. He's beating all the eight highs and lowers. Three hundred and fifty K. A second barrel here from Melky Setian Dara, who is really leaning despite being covered by Komarowski. <laughs> yeah, he has the backup equity of the open ender, which is emboldening him there to keep betting. When in Komarowski's seat, I'm always wondering how many of these combos that connect with this board are being limped. Do you want idea? Yeah. Pre-flop. Yeah, that's Bam a good point. <laughs> so a nice pick up there. Banna is for Tanna, eh? Good idea. Damon. You are 27,000. If dinner, you pay. Five off suit. Orthodox are taking slightly Orthodox. less time with each successive yeah. opportunity to kind of act, it would seem, trending in the more brisk direction. Now an ace-10 suited on the button. We know what's happening. Four should be 
making much of this. No, he's just taking his time, but he will be folding this. Small flesh wound last hand with the 10-3. Chernikov. He's, he's flicking it in with the 4-3. Yeah. He likes to play hands. He's not a man who enjoys folding pre-flop. Well, he's got the chips to do it with, but not the flop. Ace, eight, seven. All Mel Melky Setian. Yeah, this is his board. No real reason to check here, I don't think. No, there's some draws out there that you could be charging. Yeah. Small bet here will get the job done a lot. I want a hand versus you. A quick fold. <laughs> no, oh. it says I finally want a hand oh, versus wow. you. <laughs> oh, I think everything changed. I'm going to stack you up now. <laughs> Seven fold. No? Why do you have that hand? You bluff that hand? King Jack hand. You bluff? No. You bluff? No. Bluff? Bluff? Yeah. What do you have, but Which bluff? Uh, eight, ten. Ace, ten? N nine, ten. Nine, ten? Wow, nice bluff. I think with ace high. He was, nine, yeah, ten. asking about the previous ten. hand there where he did bluff with the ten, nine. Five. And uh, Jernikov, very honest, telling him that it was a bluff and the exact hand that he had. Setting is just using his time here <coughs> rather than Sorry? considering oh, putting chips in with the five deuce. Those glasses look expensive. They do, yeah, they look very stylish. Like he's going to have to finish ninth or better to break even on that purchase. Yeah. <laughs> no, maybe yeah. not. Maybe not that expensive. Komorowski. Oh, yeah, this is a hand. Again, the, the only decision here is raise or shove. Folding is not an option. <laughs> Off of 3.5 million. We'll see if he agrees. Yeah, he has decided to take the shove option, with it being the final table bubble. And really, only. <laughs> really all in. Orthodox who won't be giving him any action with the 9-7 suited, but he might be taking his time. Yeah. If raise, I call. All in, no call. 9-7 suited. That's why you shove, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Would have taken a flop, but instead... Yeah. He will head to the break along with the others, both here at this feature table and the outer table. As we are... Still looking for our final nine. Blinds will move up to 100 and 250,000. Chernikov diluted to 53 bigs, but same story for the rest of the field as you get a look at their chip counts headed to the break. 16 bigs apiece for Orthodoxu and Komorowski. And we welcome you back into our commentary booth here at the Merritt Crystal Cove Resort and Casino. Alina Jad alongside Dara O'Kearney. And as we summarize that frame, I think the real story for me, perhaps you would agree, Dara, it was the Serge Mata Surge. Yeah, it was. Uh, Serge was really short, and we saw him shove the 7-4 from the small blind. Uh, was quite fortunate that he did get looked up by the King-10. And from that point, he he went on a run. He won a pile of hands in a row, and then he got the double up through the chip leader. A player he would have actually uh, liked to double up through because it brought him back to the pack as well. It brought those two stacks together. Mata then did sort of uh, batten down the hatches, didn't r risk his re recent gains. They're still the two big stacks on the table, but nobody's super short. Yeah, we know that Chernikov obviously hasn't decided to batten down the hatches. No. He is a bit friskier in terms of willingness to partake in some pots, and we'll see whether or not that trend continues as the two of us step aside for the break. About 15 minutes, and we'll return with more coverage of Day 4 as we seek to crown a champion here at the Merritt Western Poker Series main event. Stay close.
Orthodoxy has a hand now which he would normally go with, um, but again, because of ICM, he might be... Uh, I think he might have already decided he's going with this, but he wants to use the maximum amount of time. That would seem prudent. Ace-8, obviously uncomfortable insofar as we know that a lot of ace X is in Jazar's <coughs> opening range here, but late position in the cutoff. Yeah, Unclear it, whether or not he's capable of stepping out. Yeah, if it, it, ace-8 is actually kind of a borderline hand because oh, yeah. if you think uh, your opponent is opening any ace, then ace-8 is the, ha is the one which beats more than it loses to. Good point. As the all-in is delivered to the middle. <coughs> so 16 players left. He is on a money jump here. I mean, I don't think Jazar can fold getting the price. And one would hope that this was something that he had taken into consideration before he chose to make this open. Yeah. Is the prospect of having Orthodoxu's button on the short stack jam on him. And it certainly appears that he knew exactly how he would respond as we see him call with the ace five and he'll be disappointed yeah, you can see those numbers don't add up to 100 because there are actually quite a few chops uh, given the proximity of their kickers orthodox who giving his rail a little update taking the best of it to the king 10 deuce board and he does hold the ace of spades which is working Azar looking for a five here 2.35 million chip pot. <coughs> Turn is clean. And Orthodox who just wonder. needs to fade the five in order to, at minimum, chop. And the jack allows him to play both the ace <coughs> and the eight. I don't think a chop was available <coughs> as of the turn. <coughs> so. Discipline to Perfect, perfect. Yeah. He's my friend. Another day. <sighs> Two queens for Orthodox. What a lovely start this would be yeah. for him as he has already enjoyed one double up, Dara. And at this depth of 2.4 million, is it simply all in? It, I don't think it has to be. Um, he's got 14 big blinds. Once you go above 12, you can start having some raise calls and raise folds. I think this certainly qualifies as strong enough to raise call. Um, if you shove this, you're not going to induce uh, a lower pair uh, to give you action. But if you raise this, somebody might look down at sixes and decide to shove it. Or ace x, uh, where the x is lower than a queen that you're in great shape against. Not sure if it's with intent, but he's giving off some real reverse tells here. Yeah, he does move all in, so. Interesting he, ch he chose to use one of his time cards on that, too. I mean, he, he always knew the decision he was making. And those time cards could prove very important as we get further down yeah. toward the final table. This decision far simpler than the ones that he might be facing later on. Yeah, we actually saw that in the warm-up event. Paul Brown came back as the shortest stack, and he used all his time cards. But okay. he actually ended up as a big stack on the bubble. Okay, so King-Queen is giving action here. and Some protection as well in the event. That yeah. yeah, there's no way Komorowski is getting involved now. He just wants um, Orthodoxu to bust here and secure the pay jump. Normally, you would think Sandra Gal has the stronger range here, um, and, he do, and he does, but on this occasion, Orthodox has a stronger hand. <coughs> and the two queens will be thrilled <laughs> to be in this spot. <laughs> Worthy of note, Raful already folded a king of spades out of the big blind, so oh, yeah. just a couple of kings are actually available to Sandra Gal here, who has sort of stepped in it, but of course has Orthodox who covered. That's the good news. The bad news is a six high two club flop. Although the two clubs are working for the time being in conjunction with the queen of clubs. Now a chop available on the turn. Two actual kings and a five, what he's looking for. Instead he finds a 
Hart and Orthodoxu. Doubles once more, and the long face at the onset has now begun to produce. Mongolian pair Sanjagal, and this gentleman on screen, Luke Bandel, who appears to be all in. As we take you to the outer table, we do have something developing. It is Vakos Joma against Luke Bindel. Two jacks against ace nine. Flop was three ace deuce. And obviously the two jacks were climbing uphill from that point forward. A four on the turn, a deuce on the river, I'm being told. And yeah, Joma will double through the Frenchman. Yeah, big hit for Bendel there. He, he he played superb yesterday as well. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. You get it in 70-30 favorite, and if you don't hold, it's probably not going to be your day. <coughs> Meanwhile, up front with the ace-nine suited, <coughs> Sanjagal made it 325k to go. Melky Setien, ace-queen, an understandable jam over the top. And the ducklings really looking quite vulnerable and undesirable for... Yeah, Tomorowski. I think he's just take, he's just using his full time here. I don't <coughs> think he was ever calling off there with twos. And that does show good awareness too from Komarowski, an older gentleman. He's aware of the of the time dynamic, the fact that they're on a pay jump. Yeah, the ICM not lost on him, and that was displayed in in the very first hand, I believe it was, after he folded the ten jack suited. Yeah, could have opened it from middle position. Yeah. And this is also an example of the time just yeah, Orthodox. being utilized there. Orthodox is never playing 7-6. Again, we're seeing the same phenomenon because they now have the uh, the time cards. That's kind of legitimized taking 20 to 30 seconds uh, on a decision that isn't really a decision. Do you feel like when we're down to two tables that each time we're at a pay jump, we should go to hand for hand in order to prevent this sort of... No, I think that would, that would be over the top. It would slow the game too much. We saw the bubble really slowed yesterday. Yeah. Um, but th th there's really not much you can do about this. And you can, you can get lucky or unlucky as well. Um, you know, you can be on a table where everybody's playing really fast and the other table, everybody's playing really slow. And that gives the other table a, an equity advantage. Um, that's a situation where David Lappin always tries to educate his table that they should be taking their time. We buried the lead a touch, which is that Sandragal is willing to spin here with wow. the ace nine in really bad shape. Made the added investment. Flop is of no assistance to him. Does have some back doors available, and Ooh, that is one what a hell card. of a card. What a card. Flush draw and open ender obtained as ace queen is really sweating this river. Which is Oof. a black five. And such a girl. You, you can see there, he has so many outs. Very disappointed that he didn't hit one of them. And he's going to be uh, in the right price. Um, but they're in the, there is a risk premium due to ICM. Yeah. Um, so I suspect if we ran it, it might be a close fold. Nothing close about this one. As I expect, we will see the first participation from Komarowski. He did open the button, I believe, with and, the king and queen, take it yeah. down. Yeah, with king queen, but here up front. And using a time bank, the pay jump has already been secured. So really, these banks are just designed to sort of uh, reduce the range that these players' opponents are, are, are placing them on. Yeah, it's possible he, this is, th there's a little bit of Hollywood here. It's also possible he, he he's actually does have a decision between normal raise and shove, and he's trying to decide between which of those two options is better. Um, goes with the all-in. He does go with the all-in. He was relatively early. I think in late position, you would be more likely to raise, but in early position, when you have the whole field to get through, um, maybe the shove is the better option. No takers. Ace eight suited now for Sandragal on the heels of having had ace nine suited. He is covered. Boy, this would be particularly ruthless, Dara. 
Oh my goodness. He's got a rush of cards. Yeah, he stuck it in. <laughs> yeah, and he's going to get shown the two black queens, which will be a very disappointing sight. Yeah, have you said how impressed I was by him yesterday? I'm not convinced by this call off here. Um, it was Komorowski from relatively early position. Now obviously, Sandragal didn't know just how tight his play has been, but this is a beautiful flop. Maybe no reason to stand up, sir. Open ender. Five or ten will work, and ace would as well. Instead, it's a jack of clubs on the turn, and now we pull outs off the board. As Komorowski has the clubs covered, but still 18% is Sandragal. Can he get there? No. It is a flush on the end for Komorowski, and back-to-back -back suited diamond aces spell the end for the Mongolian. Yeah. Yeah, he enlivened the second last uh, session yesterday where he got away from those queens and then subsequently spun up. He's had a... And it looks like we're going to bounce back to our outer table once more. What have we here? It is just as held with the ace jack, and it is ace nine for Luke Bindel. Lost with the two jacks earlier, covered here, and not a great flop, but he's right. It could be worse. Chops are available on the paired board. A nine would be a clean winner. Can he get there? No, it's the jack, and that is it for Luke Bindel, who really just was kind of top class through and through. Yeah. A very warm welcome back to the Mirror Crystal Cove Hotel Casino All Inclusive Resort. I'm David Lapp and I'm sitting beside Dara O'Carney. Ali has just stepped out as we rejoin the action here on day four, final day, approaching final table of the 3.3k main event. Dara, Get me up to speed. What's been going on the last couple of hours? Um, Chernikov uh, took a big hit when he doubled up Mata. Mata was really the story of the last session. He he was so short, he shoved 7-4 off from the small blind and was lucky to get it through. Um, but then he won the next few hands, and then he got an actual double up, ace-queen against ace-nine um, through the chip leader. At the time, I speculated he might kick on and put a bit more pressure, but he actually didn't play another hand, and he, fo he actually folded some hands he could have played. Can you take everything? I was very sad to see watching the Poker News updates. Shout out to Poker News if you want to do get some outer table updates or just general hand history updates uh, from what's been going on today. Check that out. Uh, Luke Bindel gone. Yeah, he's he, he, uh, that happened on the outer table, but we got the we got the cliffs. He got unlucky with uh, jacks against Ace Nine, that left him relatively short, and then he got coolered um, by held uh, Ace Seven, I think it was against Ace Jack, um, button versus blind. So yeah, two two spots, but I mean that's how quickly it can change. We've seen that on the feature table, as I mentioned, with Mata really doing the spin up. Uh, Jernikov. Chipped up again after his um, his setback, more or less back to where he was, 13 million. And but nobody else is super short, so we could be in for a s um, k some KG play at least on the feature table. All of the pairs that seem to be, whether it's ICM aware or they just want to m really make the final table playing tight. Yeah, it's interesting what would be considered by some to be a recreational tendency or maybe inexperienced tendency to knit up a little bit in this phase because you really want to make the final table. You really want you know, your friends and family at home to, to see you under the spotlight of the big one later on this evening. But actually, that is the right way to play uh, if you are one of the middling to lower stacks. You do have to play quite casually here. Yeah, absolutely. That That's the um, strategically optimal way to play. The one player who has been capable or willing to get after it from that kind of stack is the man on screen there, Mel Cassation. Um, he hasn't been afraid to get involved. Well, he has flopped best in this three-way affair. Ace, four, three. Favourable to the ace, six open. He probably would have got three bet by a good deal of ace, x behind. 
Sofield's pretty happy firing out a small continuation bet. Gets the job done. So 10 players left, final table is nine. We haven't gone hand for hand because the, the presence of the time cards and the time box is enough to make sure that the two tables are playing roughly the same rate. Chernikov on screen there. The Russian bear, I believe, he's been dubbed. Yeah, well, I, I think it's self-dubbed. Uh, we saw when he eliminated a player, he did the celebration, the, the muscle flex, and he, and he said Russian bear, so I guess that's his thing. Well, a little bit of uh, background info on Chernikov. This is his sixth cash in Merit Poker events, including a fifth place finish in the Merit Poker Retro Series back in 2019. He will be obviously looking to go not one, not two, not three, but four spots better today. Indeed, yeah. Not at all afraid to get involved. Um, not exactly particularly aggressive. We saw him make some, we saw him make one river bluff, but he just likes to play a lot of hands, basically. Um, that's kind of his style. Well, speaking of which, he is into the action here. 2.4x open. He did generally go for the 2.5 kind of sizing all day yesterday. Maybe a hint that that number is coming down slightly. Sort of optimal to be something around the min raise at this point in the tournament, but he's clearly a player who likes to sort of define ranges out of the big blind if he's going to play against that player. Yeah, I think this is very much a table where there's going to be a lot less three betting. Um, Players will flat more, and if and obviously the if you go for the pure min raise, they'll flat even more. So I guess you could say it might be an adjustment to that, just a recognition that if you raise a bit more than the minimum, you'll get more folds, and at the same time, you're not risking more against the three backs because the three bets are not that frequent. And do you think players will sort of be inelastic in the way that they approach that open? They'll just consider it a bit like his normal opening range is always this size, so come over the top with the normal range. Yeah, yeah. Shows the single ace there. An interesting phase of play, obviously, as we approach the end game here. Final table bubble, nine handed, eight handed, pretty much the peak of ICM considerations for these guys. Busting out now in 10th, in 9th. Pretty yeah. disappointing when they are looking at those top three numbers. Yeah, and particularly the, uh, the, the three shorter stacks here. They, they have massive ICM considerations. They really want to, for there to be one more bust that they make the final table. Poker tournaments sort of play into the hands of the chip leaders during these phases. Obviously, they have the benefit of being able to open a little bit wider because of ICM. Their opponents open that little bit tighter. There's natural exploitation in that. But also, shorthanded should favor them as well. Yeah, and there's more out there. I mean, they're, they're now posting 600k every five hands, so um, more than a small blind per hand. Well, we see here one of the short stacks, Orthodox, Orthodoxu, 6-5 off, considering, and I don't think he's giving it real consideration, might be just letting the 30 seconds pass here. Would seem like a pretty terrible spot to get involved. He doesn't. Quick fold from Mada and Battle of the Blinds now. Melchizedian with a baby off suit ace. Could proceed in a number of different ways. Probably good to keep a few ASEX in the limping range, and this is sort of a good one to use in that manner. Yeah. <laughs> Given this a lot of thought, he has moved, decided to just move all in. So 24 big blinds, a big shove, yeah, putting Komarowski well, to the test. Komarowski has less, so effective it's um, 14 bigs. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think the shove is the standard player, and Komarovsky won't make a bad call. So, in these spots, you're much better off shoving into a good player than a, than a, than a weaker player, because a weaker player might actually make a bad call. Um, Komarovsky will not call off here with the King-6. I think he's just using up the full time. Yeah. Given the effective stack there, love the shove with the ace.
We mentioned Komarovsky there in the big blind. He is one of the shorter stacks looking to ladder his way to this final table in 2018. He came fourth in the Party Poker Grand Prix in Germany. So a sprinkling of results to his live poker resume I noticed earlier on. Yeah, I have been impressed by his play overall. Um, really haven't seen him put, put a foot wrong. Noticeably, this does seem like a jump up in buy-in for him. Most of his results seem to be in the 200 to $500 buy-in range. So maybe a satellite qualifier, maybe someone who just yeah. recognized this tournament as a great opportunity to take a shot. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and the Django's for Orthodoxo. Well, he may take his 20 seconds again, but he will be getting involved this time. Would feel like a little bit of a waste to hand this strong, not to just open Dara off this stack. Yeah, we saw some time cards consumed for Hollywood purposes with Queens uh, by various players in the early phase, but the, um, the time cards won't be replenished until the final table, so the guys who are running short now have to be a bit more economical with them. Interestingly, Orthodox who is going for that larger open size as well, the 2.4x, clearly contagious here. Yeah, and, and what's also contagious is the full consumption of the time. <laughs> Matt, Matt is not considering doing anything other than folding here with the 9.5 off but he's going to be almost counted down. Is consumption contagious? Is that one of the contagious uh, diseases? Uh, it was It was contagious, I believe, yeah. Even better wordsmithery from you there, didn't yeah. there? Melka Sedian looks like he's eyeing up his yeah, box there as well. Yeah, yeah, they're all doing... Ooh, this is an interesting spot. This could be trouble, Dara. This would definitely form part of a reasonable light three-bet shove yeah. range. And he does cover, not by much, but he does cover... Well, actually, no, he doesn't cover because I guess that 3.2 is what Orthodox who has behind. Stacks are very close. He does let it go. You mentioned that he was playing on the snugger yeah. side. Yeah. That would be a sort of a, a looser player's three bet opportunity yeah, there probably yeah. consistent with what we've yeah. seen before yeah orthodox is definitely it that's a different proposition from say the man in picture chernikov opening yeah, and chernikov happy to peel one off here and wow oh, we are going to have flop. a conflict what a flop this it's, is it's a flip from here orthodox is looking down at that board gun that's all you oh my god this could be it yeah and he's only got a 2x pot bet remaining He's probably got to decide now whether he wants to check and hopefully see a safe one peel off or if he goes for a bet here and then clearly willing to commit. Yeah. Yeah, I think you probably want to bet big here. This is a board where your strategy should be check or bet big. Um, and Kings is a hand you definitely want to bet big with. Well, he's gone very big, Derry. He's gone two million oh, well he's, over he's, betting the pot here. He's effectively shoved. They're getting it all in here and it's going to be a flip. Wow, nice. Orthodox will be absolutely sick to see this holding, hoping maybe for pocket nines, maybe yeah. an A6, something of that nature. This is a far different proposition. You can see Komorowski standing up. This is just huge for all the players here. Even the chip leader uh, losing 3.2 million here would be significant. Are we about to... Say goodbye to Orthodoxu, our final table <coughs> bubble boy, or will he fight to live another day? You'll be shot then. That's live to fight another day. That's a safe turn card. So now he's a very significant favourite. Seventy-eight percent. Ten outs for Chernikov. Oh, um, that is not one of them. <laughs> and some understandable celebration. Yeah, an explosion of emotion there from Orthodoxu, who did yeah. a very, very difficult hold to stay in the tournament. He's very much in the mix now, Dara. Over six million, close to what an average stack will be on the final table. Yeah. What a difference a river card makes. Yeah. I think the unhappiest player at the table there is uh, Komorowski, because now he's clearly the shortest stack. 
um, before there were actually three of them around the same and then like Cishan, uh kind of pulled clear and now with the double for orthodox who everybody's really comfortable now except Komorowski well, there he is, Orthodoxus, Orthodoxu, 7.9 million now, 32 big blinds, very much an average man now in this main event, yeah. a big chunk taken off the stack of Chernikov there, he's been pulled right back down yeah. to 9 million. He was pulled back when he doubled up Mata to a similar stack and he, he uh, bulldozed his way back up to 30 million. Uh, he's yeah. definitely well capable of taking these hits. Yeah, and you can't blame him there. Obviously, the Jack Six suited. Maybe the defend was borderline given the size of the open. That's the questionable part of that hand. But once that flop comes down, well, he just has to get it in. Yeah. We see there Serge Mata hijack here with the unplayable 8-4. Mata has 11 caches and seven final tables here in Carinia. He is also the man who won the WPT VIP event back in 2013. Wow. So he's, he, he's yeah, a 10, year, 10 years of experience. And a very important man to boot. Yeah, I've played quite a few VIP events. I'm not sure that's necessarily the case. <laughs> You're a very important person, Dara. Yeah, to you maybe. I've seen you in many roped-off environments <laughs> down the years. Well, what a tournament this has been. 757 entrants smashing the 1.5 million guarantee in fact generating a prize pool well in excess of 2 million 370k up top that is the number that will be spinning in the minds of these 10 remaining players dare any of them be spending that money already in their minds dara <laughs> That might be a little premature at this stage, <laughs> uh, even if you have a big stack. Things can change very quickly, as we just saw. Hmm. Oh, this is uh, a limp from the small blind. Yeah, recognizing that Orthodoxy now has a much bigger stack, 30 big blinds. Expect to check back here. Can't imagine he's going to want to go to war with the Russian bear. <laughs> Yeah. Rubbing in the fact that it's a lot less than it was a few minutes ago there by asking for a count. As we oh. quickly zoom over to the outer table. Looks like we have a showdown, Dara. Looks like pocket aces are in the middle against ace nine. That's not a fair fight. No. And that will already be it. Oh, no, wait. Ten ball river, maybe. Uh, the aces belong to Justice Held, the ace nine to Vladislav Doroshkov. So. Held is the pair who's all in. The man in the uh, rather flamboyant tracksuit there. Justice KGB. Yeah, looks like he might be uh, auditioning for the Irish cricket team. Maybe the Pakistan cricket team. Or the Pakistan cricket team. Cricket is more your area. So Held gets a double <laughs> up there. Um, and we go on with 10 players. Helt, a player we gave special note to last night on commentary, Dara. Obviously, you have a little bit of knowledge about his background online. Clearly, a yeah. bit of a beast. Yeah, he's one of these secret online beasts, One, a guy who crushes online. Um, has a fair amount of live pedigree too, but um, like a lot of Germans, doesn't appear to have a hand in mob. Um, so... Um, I would characterize him as technically a beast and live very much a value hunter. I'm not surprised to see him here um, because this is obviously a very high value tournament when you have the kind of skills that he has.
always create a special and particular brand of trickiness when a player is a get it quietly merchant always feels as though you're on a disadvantage there if you yeah. are more in the public eye yeah yeah i think a lot of people who have played with him down the years live probably have greatly underestimated him as just some random <laughs> german kid in a tracksuit <laughs> Even if it is a particularly snazzy tracksuit. <coughs> <laughs> tracksuit's getting a lot of love. The strong tracksuit game. Yeah, very strong. There's a very strong tracksuit game in Irish poker, Dara. We've noticed that down the years. Well, Jason Tompkins was the king of the tracksuit game for uh, almost for a decade. But yeah, he's been joined recently by some other uh, pretenders to the tracksuit throne. If you can have a tracksuit throne. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. We have a raise here on the button. This is uh, loose, obviously. A throne that's, I suppose, upholstered in some sort of velour, shiny material, maybe. Yeah. But now I'm getting flashbacks to the funniest uh, piece I've ever seen on Jason, where they actually made him wear dress like a king. <laughs> and he had, like, royal robes sitting on a throne. It just didn't look right. I have, I have never seen this. Oh, you have to find this. It was something like Jason Tompkins, a king without a queen, or something like that. That was the name. It was a local newspaper in Ireland. And he's sitting on a throne. Yes, wow. indeed. <coughs> oh, i got, I got to check this one out. He might have had it removed under data protection. <laughs> he was something of over there. a king. Oh, he was, um, for sure, yeah. There was a period where it seemed like Jason couldn't stop final tabling every tournament he entered EPTs WSOPs WPTs as we take a look at the action here Chernikov still going with that 2.4 sizing a loose open here with the 8.6 sort of signaling some intent there maybe going to open up a wide range from the button it does feel like they're not fighting back Dara feels like an opportunity for a player such as him to accumulate yeah I have found that piece unfortunately the picture does appear to have been removed your theory perhaps sound but it was called Jason Tompkins a poker prince without king or queen um, in the Kildare Nationalist. I, I have to say, I enjoyed that meandering segue from the tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> to Jason on a throw. Of, of health. Some solid sunglasses game here from these two players. Komorowski, oh, this is not what you want to see when you, you're the shortest player. I think you got to go with this, Dara. Hijack. Oh. 14 bigs, or not even 14 mm, bigs. 30, 13 bigs and the big blind about to get you. Yeah, no, I think it's Did actually it go? a good fold. Do you think it's a good fold? I think you have to stay away from the small pairs in those spots. They're very tempting, but I think you're better off going with the... An ace three suited there than a pocket threes. Well, I would have preferred an ace three suited there, but yeah. I think I might have been tempted to. At this table in particular, where it does feel like the ranges are a little tighter. Yeah, the just tried yeah, that's certainly true. I, th I think um, in theory it's a fold, but it might be a shove in this t at this table. What's a shove then? Fives maybe. Mm. You'd be surprised how many pairs you have to fold in that spot. I'm going to get out my GTO wizard now. 13.5 big blinds. Some RTA being deployed here in the commentary yeah. booth. Some of my students are in chat. If you guys can, can load up your uh, GTO wizards, you might get there faster than me. As we see yet more passive play here, Mel Cassedian getting a walk. And now, as foretold, the commitment of a big blind and a big blind ante It's getting rather expensive. 
And as Dara pointed out, short-handed posting these blinds and antis every five hands. The short stack's desperate to go to nine players, get a little bit of respite from the relentlessness of those blinds and antis. Interesting if Chernikov will view a 10-8 offsuit here as a loose open. We've seen him switch gear a little bit. Not quite into fifth gear yet. So, likely to fold round to the blinds once again. Um, sixes is the line there, David. Sixes. So, we can confirm it was a good fold with the threes. Melchisedian now, Queen Six suited, likely to shove into the short stack. Who's playing just 12 bigs now. Feels pretty standard. Oh, he goes for a limp. Komarowski, well, happy to There's see no a free flop, yeah, one would think. Absolutely no reason to raise this hand. Unless he decides, because he appears to be playing so tight and because his hand is so junky, maybe he wants to put this into the raise fold category. Yeah, I think he's using his time back here. He's considering this. This is interesting. We haven't seen this before. There is 750k out there as well, so... Is there only one move, Dara? I don't think he could construct a, a raising range this shallow. Maybe he could just about. I think he can. I think he can make it 700, 750, mm -hmm. uh, and then fold to, to a shove. But, yeah, his hand is just a little bit too good. I think if it was like 6-2 off, it would it would be a better move to maybe bump it up to 750 and then fold if you get shoved on. But with 6-4, you're kind of connected. Um, you'd be very sad to get shoved on and have to fold. Well, the effect of that use of time card tank will be probably the perception that Komarowski is a little stronger than 6-4 here, but obviously queen-6 on the queen-high board. Yeah. Milka Sadian willing to... Don't think he's going to go mad here. He has been just super, super disciplined. We haven't really seen him um, succumb to the frustration of being card dead. Back to fold. Yeah, there's the fold. <coughs> but it will be a fr source of frustration to Komarovsky that the final table bubble could have gone a few times, and uh, he finds himself by far the shortest now on this table. We, of course, don't know about the outer table. A reminder of what these guys are playing for. At the moment, everybody has at least 27,600. But a nice little jump to 37,300 when we go final table. Smoothly up the ladders till fourth place. Takes home the first six-figure payday, 124,600. Third gets 168,400. Second will take away 274,500 but first place a whopping 372,800 US dollars <coughs> 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 
Mr. Vara and Koray. Koray. Mata. Considering his options with the pocket six is a little awkward, it must be said. Yeah. Probably going to come with a call. That would be consistent with the way he's been playing since his big double up. Yeah. Interesting. Now, will that bring in some players from the blinds? Komarowski with a tempter, but maybe a uh, sort of get you in troubler as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't make Aiden lecture you again on on the on the W in uh, Polish names. Komarowski. Apologies, Komarowski. Um, I mean, it's it's a spot you could certainly consider squeezing, but if you do look at ICM ranges. Uh, you know, in a, in a tool like GTO Wizard, for example, you'll, I think most players would be surprised by just how tight they are. Um, you're really not supposed to step out of line very much. Well, Chernikov joins the party here with the jack nine off. Orthodox, who flops best. He's also got the betting lead. Do you fire a, l a small bet here, Dara, on the ace five five, or do you check it? given the cutoff flat, which does represent some amount of strength and possibly has a couple of ace X hands in the mix yeah, as well. I don't see much point betting here. Um, there are there are stronger ace X in the range. There's not If he has a five, you're obviously in trouble, but that's uh, kind of unlikely. Yeah, Chernikov definitely has more five X yeah, but to I don't play with. You have a three street hand here anyway, so <coughs> starting off with a check seems advisable but he has overruled me and he's the man who gets to decide because he's the one sitting at the table <coughs> I think part of the problem with this bet too is it just makes it very easy for sixes and the jack nine to play shows the ace yeah yeah the, but there's been a lot of cards showing at, at this table they've been quite friendly they've been uh, more than willing to tell each other what they have had after hands as well. When this final table bubble eventually pops, we will be going on a 60-minute dinner break. Okay. Well, I don't know if they'll take dinner. Maybe a lunch break, as these guys. I think we're kind of in the nether region now, where it's it's a little bit too late for lunch, but it's too early for dinner. Um, we have brunch as but a concept. But what is there a liner or a dunch? Dunch. Afternoon tea. Yeah, but that's by definition kind of like a very small meal. I must admit, Dara, um, this all-you-can-eat resort, um, <laughs> it, 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 there's food available almost all the time. Almost all the time, yeah. There I got a little bit panicky this morning when we happened to stumble into the dinner room. Into the one hour. That into the no one food. hour gap where there was yeah. no food. I didn't know what to do. I actually got a little bit concerned. It was, yeah. Yeah, you get used to just being able to eat any time you feel like it and therefore not necessarily prioritizing or planning <laughs> your day around your eating. It, it was a little bit shocking to think, well, we're going to have to hang around now for 45 minutes before they'll put the food out again. Um, spoilt we are. Absolutely spoilt, yeah. I think uh, if you stayed here for too long, you would need, uh, in addition to everything else, you'd need a clothes budget because you would need new pants. <laughs> Create some new holes in the belt. Yeah. Battle of the blinds here. This one could get spicy. Orthodox, who mm. probably has a raising candidate here, and uh, yeah, he has just gone for the call here. Um, KG play again, very, being very KG, deployed. Yeah. I understand that actually in this context, he will be very high up on his range here now. A very deceptively strong hand. Yeah. Great flop Great for flop, the ace yeah. jack here. Yeah. Turnikov. 
Raising the white flag for now, not getting after it with the King 10. Obviously here, Derek, Kings and Queens are the bad cards if you were to be a little deceptive and check back. Yeah. He does decide to keep things simple with a small bet. Chernikov no gives bluff, it up no quickly. Chernikov hasn't really proven... Sort of spidey senses from Chernikov to put no more chips into that particular pot, Dara. Yeah, I, 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 I was going to go a different way. I, I was going to say Chernikov just tends to play very straightforward on flops and turns. He bets when he has it. He checks when he doesn't. Um, with the one exception that when he flopped an absolute monster of sevens on 9-7x, he did check his pocket sevens. Uh, he does go for river bluff sometimes, but we haven't seen too much uh, unusual play from him, let's say, on flops and turns. Angela Roach in the chat says, any time is good for pizza. There's pretty much pizza available all day here. And desserts. And, and desserts. Cake. Oh, and soup as well. There's, and soup. There's, a, there's a wide variety of foods that are just all day foods. Komarovsky finally getting a gift from the poker gods here. 11 big blinds. The threes were subpar. This one well above par. He's going to ship this in and hope to get called by worse or get it through. Yep, moves all in here. Ooh. Definitely some worse hands can call. Chernikov. So can some flips. Not a man who fool... Who Likely to full pocket Around. eights here. Cool. Russian bear calling Ball. with the snowmen. Well, Komarovsky is going to be at risk to be our final table bubble Top boy. Top point eight. Yes. Orthodoxu just getting clarification on the cost of admittance. And here we go, Dara. Huge moment in the tournament. Komarovsky very much in a similar spot that we show, saw Orthodoxu in moments ago. If he gets this double up right back in yep. it, but he could also be going home. Yeah, a few of the players standing up now. This is a big moment, obviously. This could be the final table bubble. Komarovsky has he's just drifted back as he's been car dead, and he now finds himself at risk. He's going to have to win a flip, or he will be missing out on the final table. And no help there. He's now a 70-30 dog, roughly. Needs an acer jack immediately. Does have some running cards to go with that, but and now That's he's down to just card. an acer jack, or we will lose the valiant pole, who has impressed us over the last few days. And no help. Yes. The we get the Good Russian yeah. the Russian bear celebration. Yeah, we've seen that celebration on quite a few occasions now over the last couple of days. This man wearing his heart on his beautifully cardigan sleeves. <laughs> Guys, we're going to take a one hour break now. We, we would ask you to join us in, um, in 60 minutes time when Dara and I We'll be back in the booth. We're going to have a final table announcement from Ali Najad before that. He's going to bring on the players. And then we will be taking you through. Quick reminder of how they stand here on this feature table. Chernikov obviously won that last one. He finished with 12 million. Orthodoxu, 9.5 million. Melchizedian, 7.25 million. And Mada, still very much in the mix here. 24 big blinds, 6 million Dara this is going to be a fascinating fascinating final table fair to say some of the big guns some of the big players on that outer table they'll be joining the four we've just seen there yeah. who's the danger uh, the two players to watch for me are going to be uh, Justice Helt and Dominic Punk Dominic Panka uh, two very very good technical players Panka probably has more live experience Helt more of an online player um, Chernikov 
we saw there with the chip lead, he has a different style. He plays a lot of hands. He's not particularly aggressive. He's quite passive, um, but he's not afraid to gamble. It depends on how he runs. He's the kind of guy you could see go out in eight, even though he has a lot of chips. He's also the kind of guy who could run over the table if he won a lot of flips. Yeah, a fearless Russian bear. Uh, we are very, very excited about the prospects. It's got all the ingredients for a fun final table. Do join us in 60 minutes time when we will be bringing you coverage. Cards up, of course, from Merit Poker at the Western Series main event. See you shortly. <laughs> Maroon Jazar, the ace five offsuit from the cutoff. Third in chips, so slightly precarious for him to be taking some chances with two bigger stacks out there. Yeah. Orthodoxo has a hand now which he would normally go with, um, but again, because of ICM, he might be. Uh, I think he might have already decided he's going with this, but he wants to use the maximum amount of time. That would seem prudent. Ace eight, obviously uncomfortable insofar as we know that a lot of ace X is in Jazar's <coughs> opening range here, but late position in the cutoff. Yeah, Unclear it, whether or not he's capable of stepping out. Yeah, if it, ace-8 is actually kind of a borderline hand because oh, yeah. if you think uh, your opponent is opening any ace, then ace-8 is the ha is the one which beats more than it loses to. Good point. As the all-in is delivered to the middle. <coughs> so 16 players left. He is on a money jump here. I mean, I don't think... Jazar can fold getting the price. And one would hope that this was something that he had taken into consideration before he chose to make this open. Yeah. Is the prospect of having Orthodoxu's button on the short stack jam on him. And it certainly appears that he knew exactly how he would respond as we see him call with the ace five and he'll be disappointed. Yeah. You can see those numbers don't add up to 100 because there are actually quite a few chops. Uh, <coughs> given the proximity of their kickers. Orthodoxu giving his rail a little update. Taking the best of it to the King-10 deuce board. And he does hold the ace of spades, which is working. Nazar looking for a five here. 2.35 million chip pot. Turn is clean. And Orthodoxu just needs to fade the five in order to, at minimum, chop. And the jack allows him to play both the ace <laughs> and the eight. <laughs> I don't think a chop was available <laughs> as of the turn. <laughs> so. Discipline to Perfect, perfect. Yeah. He's my friend. Another day. Two queens for Orthodox. What a lovely start this would be yeah. for him as he has already enjoyed one double up, Dara. And at this depth of 2.4 million, is it simply all in? It, I don't think it has to be. Um, he's got 14 big blinds. Once you go above 12, you can start having some raise calls and raise folds. I think this certainly qualifies as strong enough to raise call. Um, if you shove this, you're not going to induce uh, a lower pair uh, to give you action. But if you raise this, somebody might look down at sixes and decide to shove it, or ace x, uh, where the x is lower than a queen that you're in great shape against. Not sure if it's with intent, but he's giving off some real reverse tells here. Yeah, he does move all in, so. <coughs> Interesting he, he chose to use one of his time cards on that too. I mean, he, he always knew the decision he was making. And those time cards could prove very important 
as we get further down yep. toward the final table, this decision far simpler than the ones that he might be facing later on. Yeah, we actually saw that in the warm-up event. Paul Brown came back as the shortest stack, and he used all his time cards. But okay. he actually ended up as a big stack on the bubble. Okay, so King-Queen is giving action here. and Some protection as well in the event. That yeah. yeah, there's no way Komorowski is getting involved now. He just wants um, Orthodoxu to bust here and secure the pay jump. Normally, you would think Sandra Gall has the stronger range here, um, and, he do, and he does, but on this occasion, Orthodox has the stronger hand. <coughs> and the two queens will be thrilled <laughs> to be in this spot. <laughs> Worthy of note, Raful already folded a king of spades out of the big blind, so oh, yeah. just a couple of kings are actually available to Sandra Gall here, who... Has sort of stepped in it, but of course has Orthodox who covered. That's the good news. The bad news is a six high two club flop. Although the two clubs are working for the time being in conjunction with the queen of clubs. Now a chop available on the turn. Two actual kings and a five, what he's looking for. Instead he finds a heart and Orthodox who. Doubles once more, and the long face at the onset has now begun to produce. Sanjagal, part of a modest but certainly active Mongolian contingent that has made their way here to the island for this particular series. really the standout nation for me in terms of the unexpected you know in the middle east we know there's a lot of uh, yeah a lot of gamble but not a lot of opportunity so clearly coming out this way makes sense europe obviously tons of poker players from all across eastern and western parts of the continent but mongolia really struck me as a, a big surprise uh, i would presume this is a product of online poker kind of making its way into the territory and then those looking for additional fixes in the live arena. Yeah. yeah. Hopping a plane. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They really draw from all over the globe here. Little trivia for you. What's the capital of Mongolia? Ulaanbaatar. Wow, I should have known. That's, all, that's the kind of thing I can only <laughs> ask a fellow American and hope that they won't know. <laughs> you Europeans are too good with your geography. Tough booth. He's <laughs> too suited. <laughs> Not a tough spot, though, for Chernikov, who no. opens to 350,000, and now Orthodox, who weighing things with Queen Jack off suit. Obviously, the one guy you don't want to do yeah. a lot of horn locking with is Chernikov, the Reaper, as it were, boss stack. Yeah, yeah, you can call here, but you really don't like it. Uh, this would be a snap call earlier on in the tournament where there's no ICM considerations, but uh, this, is, this is actually towards the bottom of the calling range. He probably folds Queen 10. 10-8-7 does produce two overs and a gut shot for the Queen Jack. Ace Deuce still in front, working backdoor hearts and the best hand. Even when you do hit kind of the dynamite sort of flop when you're orthodox, yeah. so you're just going to take such <coughs> passive lines. Yeah. That is the issue. You can end up just leaking chips because you can't play a lot of hands that you would normally play aggressively. Yeah. Aggressively, you end up having to play them very passively. Mm -hmm. So you're going to leak chips when you when you when you miss, and you're going to not necessarily get paid when you hit as well. Check check in the turn now producing a double gutter for Orthodoxu, but Chernikov improving to top pair. Of a curious spot here. You're tempted to maybe try to represent the ace, recognizing that Chernikov can open so wide from the button. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a, it's an unusual spot because Orth uh, Chernikov should be opening almost anything on the button. Orthodox who will have actually have a much tighter defending range than normal, and therefore Ace X composes a larger part of his range than normal. But even with the range advantage here, he can't be too aggressive. He's now got a double gutter, so he's. He wants to continue, he has to continue, but there's only one card to come. Half a million is the price. Just about a ninth of his 
remaining stack, and he's wow. just gonna let it That's go. That's a big fold. That's a big Double fold. Uh, he knew. I mean, he was drawing to the nuts essentially. Uh, a king of clubs would have been a club would have been slightly problem Mongolian player Sandrigal and this gentleman on screen, Luke Bandel, who appears to be all in. As we take you to the outer table, we do have something developing. It is Vakos Joma against Luke Bandel. Two jacks against Ace Nine. Flop was three. Ace Deuce. I'll hurry up. And obviously, the two jacks were climbing uphill from that point forward. A four on the turn, a deuce on the river, I'm being told. And yeah, Roma will double through the Frenchman. Yeah, big hit for Bendel there. He, he, he played superbly yesterday as well. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. You get it in 70 30 favorite. And if you don't hold, it's probably not going to be your day. <coughs> Meanwhile, up front with the ace nine suited, <coughs> Sandragal made it 325k to go. Melky Setien, ace queen, an understandable jam over the top, and the ducklings really looking quite vulnerable and undesirable for yeah. Komarowski. I think he's just take, he's just using his full time here. I don't <coughs> think he was ever calling off there with twos. And that does show good awareness too from Komarowski, an older gentleman. He's aware of the of the time dynamic, the fact that they're on a pay jump. Yeah, the ICM not lost on him, and that was displayed in in the very first hand, I believe it was, after he folded the ten jack suited. Yeah. Could have opened it from middle position. Yeah. And this is also an example of the time just yeah, being utilized there. Orthodox is never playing 7-6. Again, we're seeing the same phenomenon because they now have the uh, the time cards. That's kind of legitimized taking 20 to 30 seconds uh, on a decision that isn't really a decision. Do you feel like when we're down to two tables that each time we're at a pay jump, we should go to hand for hand in order to prevent this sort of... No, I think that would that would be over the top. It would slow the game too much. We saw the bubble really slowed yesterday. Yeah. Um, but there, there's really not much you can do about this, and you can you can get lucky or unlucky as well. Um, you know, you can be on a table where everybody's playing really fast, and the other table everybody's playing really slow, and that gives the other table a, an equity advantage. Um, that's a situation where David Lappin always tries to educate his table that they should be taking their time. We buried the lead a touch, which is that Sandra Gall is willing to spin here with wow. the ace nine in really bad shape. Made the added investment. Flop is of no assistance to him. Does have some back doors available, and Ooh, that is one what a hell card. of a card. What a card. Flush draw and open ender obtained as ace queen is really sweating this river. Which is Oof. a black five. <laughs> and Sancho Gal, you can see there, he has so many outs, very disappointed that he didn't hit one of them. And he's going to be uh, in the right price. Um, but they're in the, there is a risk premium due to ICM. Yeah. Um, so I suspect if we ran it, it might be a close fold. Nothing close about this one, as I expect we will see the first participation from Komarowski. He did open the button, I believe, with and, the king and queen, take yeah. it down. Yeah, with king queen, but here up front. And using a time bank, the pay jump has already been secured. So really, these banks are just designed to sort of uh, reduce the range that these players' opponents are, are, are placing them on. Yeah, it's possible he, this is, th there's a little bit of Hollywood here. It's also possible he, he he's actually does have a decision between normal raise and shove, and he's trying to decide between which of those two options is better. Um, goes with the all-in. He does go with the all-in. He was relatively early. I think in late position, you would be more likely to raise, but in early position, when you have the whole field to get through, um, maybe the shove is the better option. No takers. Ace eight suited now for Sandragal on the heels of having had ace nine suited. He is covered. 
Boy, this would be particularly ruthless, Dara. Oh my goodness. He's got a rush of cards. Yeah, he stuck it in. <laughs> yeah, and he's going to get shown the two black queens, which will be a very disappointing sight. Yeah, have you said how impressed I was by him yesterday? I'm not convinced by this call off here. Um, it was Komorowski from relatively early position. Now obviously, Sandragal didn't know just how tight his play has been, but this is a beautiful flop. Maybe no reason to stand up, sir. Open ender. Five or ten will work, and ace would as well. Instead, it's a jack of clubs on the turn, and now we pull outs off the board. As Komorowski has the clubs covered, but still 18% is Sandragal. Can he get there? No. It is a flush on the end for Komorowski, and back-to-back -back suited diamond aces spell the end for the Mongolian. Yeah. Yeah, he enlivened the second last uh, session yesterday where he got away from those queens and then subsequently spun up. He's had a... And it looks like we're going to bounce back to our outer table once more. What have we here? It is just as held with the ace jack, and it is ace nine for Luke Bindel. Lost with the two jacks earlier, covered here, and not a great flop, but he's right. It could be worse. Chops are available on the paired board. A nine would be a clean winner. Can he get there? No, it's the jack, and that is it for Luke Bindel, who really just was kind of top class through and through. Yeah, he the was. the time yeah. that we witnessed him. Yeah. Yeah, just a cooler there, um, blind versus button. They're just making sure that he is covered, uh, counting the stacks. The stacks were obviously very close. Yeah, by our accounting, it's going to be au revoir, monsieur. Meanwhile, we got one brewing here with Arun Jazar. Ace 10. Opens to 400. <laughs> Perhaps notable that he's going with 400 as opposed to three? Yeah. It's, I mean, he only has... Um, 2.3 to start. 2.3 to start. So just under 20. No, sorry. I'm not even doing it maths properly anymore. 14. This is an unusual. I mean, I guess he's raised folding this. Um, but El then Kisetian. using the bigger size is weird. Helki Setian is a customer here. 8-4 deuce board, not in either player's domain. Two quick checks. <coughs> Feels like a possible opportunity as played for Melky Setian to try to assert that he was just calling a wide variety of hands. Instead, it goes check, check, and he binks the jack for a winner on the river. Hmm. Yeah, Jazar's unlucky here. Obviously, he's been outdrawn, but I would have preferred to have seen a shove preflop, which would have got the fold from the Queen Jack. <coughs> Instead, <coughs> the Ace 10 is being milked for 250,000. Oh, looks like a call might be forthcoming, although as he, call, as he breaks the chips down, he shoots a glance over to Melky Setien to see whether or not he can pick anything up and uh, this will be disappointing Yeah, for Jazar. Yeah, you can see there. That's the look of a man that's been rivered. Worthy. <laughs> I will tell you after that. Transgression, but... Hey, my Russian bet. That's a nice choice. Pocket nines here for Jazar, ten big, just over ten big blinds. Yeah, this is all going in. That's a bad choice. <laughs> and we're down to thirteen. So. Maybe it's red, but it's mine. My choice. Immediately being admonished, by the way, by his compatriots. Yeah, it's interesting. We got a bit of this yesterday too. Uh, the, the the hand post mortems. It seems like players are not. Uh, shy about expressing their opinion on other players' play. <coughs> yeah. 
Not exactly the most endearing practice at the table. No. No, indeed not. I don't mind when recreational players do it. It's, it's, it's part of the fun, but uh, it, sure. it, it does annoy me when, when professional players start indulging in it. Especially when they're on a bad end of an outcome, but certainly yeah. printing money in terms of the choice that was made. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Never want to do anything to discourage bad play as a professional. You only want to encourage it. Bears noting, by the way, Dara, that we are oh, on another pay jump. Got there pretty quickly, too. <laughs> mm. yeah, Ace piss. queen for Raful. Got yeah. it, I have, my friend. I, have I think he's going to have to call off here. He's Let's very short. Eight big blinds. It's, an, it's also another short stack, and this is another winkle of ICM. You, you're better off calling it off against a short stack than a big stack because it's more of a benefit to you when you win. You cripple the other guy or, or eliminate him if you cover him slightly. I'm going to enjoy seeing the second card. Raful says the first one is bad for you. Must have squeezed the ace. That's incredible. He, he, he took 30 seconds He's to squeeze the yours. first card wow. and had to use his time card. That's and only got ball. seven seconds out of that, sec out of that uh, <laughs> yeah, time that's card, right, by the yeah. way. Bears, no. Yeah. Good luck, man. And the chips do get in there. Ruffle with a kiss of the ring, it would yeah, appear. Nice. Mm. Oh, come on. It's a, a flip. Superstition being deployed. And it's a flip with a weighted coin. And advantage Jazar in terms of that weight Ooh. and the ace jack six board. <laughs> Putting Raful in front. Jazar taking it in good spirit there. I'm a he won't be eliminated, but he will be down to 125k. Well, all believers. Unless he can find a nine. Ooh, Close. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's black. <laughs> One point more. Come on. And the river allows the ace queen to hold as the two Lebanese players. No, no, I don't cover you. I don't cover you. I don't cover you. I'm still playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have 10 bigs, my friend. How much do you have? Yes, 1.6. I have 1.6. But the bad news that even if he wins this hand, he's just getting his money back. Up we go. Mata with the two jacks. What is it? Yeah. Strange to s describe it as such, given the strength of the jacks against this queen nine, but this raise does provide some insulation yeah. to Jazar. You'd hate to have to go up against multiple hands. Yeah, for sure. Kit. Sure. And yeah, we're see we're definitely seeing some use of the of the time factor now. Raful is not thinking of doing anything with the eight four off here other than folding, but using almost the full thirty seconds. And Jazar is going to get the good news that he does have an overcard. I have one over. Yeah, good luck. Uh, uh, uh. Mata, wishing his man good luck. Thanks. More incentivized to do so in the small pots. It's, it's so small. Most. Exactly. Risking very little here. Diamonds are working for Jazar. Still hunting a queen on the King King <laughs> 7 board. And there yeah. is a diamond as mm. suddenly a glimmer of light at the end of this tunnel. <laughs> Diamonds is no good, only diamonds. Diamonds are forever. Can Maroon Jazar hit the flush? No. no. Instead, he hits the nine. Aye, aye. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Uh, and hard luck. That will spell the end of the road. And perhaps more importantly for those that remain, an additional pay jump. As rather than face um, further action on, for on later streets. Those later streets, obviously, things do get murkier as well from yeah. time to time. So removing the need to make added decisions is, is yeah. worth the investment. Absolutely, yeah. With the, with the risk premium there, it's quite likely that on an all-in bet, he would need 60 to 70% equity. And 
ten nine suit had definitely had it on the flop, but on a lot of turn cards he would not be sure whether he had uh, seventy percent anymore. Well, the Russian Federation doing a little bit better for itself on this occasion, as it's two sevens that Chernikov has put to work. Komarovsky is a very pretty hand, but there's no reason to get involved here. Yeah, good ICM fold there. 10 9 suited. This is a tempter in the yeah. big, as David Lappin likes to put it. Yeah, closing the action here. Um, this is a fairly routine call, even though you don't love it against the chip leader. He's already burned a few of his time cards as well. Um, maybe he's using the full 30 seconds here. <laughs> I love the notion the way he just flicks out the chip. Almost yeah. like Keeping an eye on Chernikov, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Not lost on him, the fact that Chernikov does have the big stack. Ooh, this is trouble, though. He's flopped top pair, and Chernikov has a set. Oh, boy. He might go all in here similar to the previous. No, it's actually gone check-check. Oh, check. my God. Oh, it's no. over for Raful now. It went check-check as Chernikov flopped too good to follow through. Yeah. Now Raful thinks he's the one trapping, but yeah. he is the trappy as that burning smell in your living room is the remainder of Raful's hopes going up in smoke. What does Chernikov do now? Will he just call here and let him bet the river and then, s and then put the rest in? Worthy of note, though, Raful isn't drawing dead. A deuce or a 10 on the yeah. end yeah. would give him the W, but <laughs> Chernikov with sevens full, okay. content to just flat, and Raful is done. 1.45 in the middle. Yeah. What if he comes with something like half pot to full pot? Instead, he's just check. checks it. I think he's gone into check call mode here. Uh, I mean, maybe he'll check shove, but it's possible he's just decided to check call here. It's a small bet as well. Pretty Chernikov. doubtful that the six brought in a straight for Chernikov, but yeah. as played, uh, Raful, this would be incredibly astute, and what a bit of self-preservationism this would be. Yeah, if, he's, if he can save himself here. No, he has put in the raise. Now when he gets shoved on, though, he might be able to get away. Um, he doesn't even have the nut nine here. I mean, he's losing to almost any nine that Chernikov would open from early position. Maybe not nine eight suited, but um, he's losing to all ace nine, king nine, queen nine suited, all those hands. But he hasn't left himself put a lot behind either. Chernikov's giving it some Hollywood now before he shoves. And he has effectively shoved. And he hates it now. Yeah. The veil of dread yeah. lowered upon Raful's head. I backed into an Edgar Allan Poe moment there, didn't I? I, I didn't <laughs> even realize that yeah. that was... Is he going to be able to somehow find the fold here? That would be amazing. You've got top trips. Doesn't it feel like 6-6 six, six at a minimum? Yeah, it's just you can't feel good about your um, trips now. The only real value you're beating now is 9-8 suited. Because uh, an overpair doesn't even raise on this board on the end. I don't even think 9-8 jams, though. Yeah. He's in the horrors here. Yeah. This is liquefy on the blender settings. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, he's lucky he's not already all in because had Chernikov played his hand uh, normally, he would have bet the flop. Raful would have called, and they might have very well got it in on the turn. Oh, 
Yeah. He does call Russian, <laughs> Russian bear. He does his trademark celebration. Uh, that's a sick one for Raful. Showing a spot of sympathy <laughs> for his victim. There's a list. There There's is your list answer. And it's in poker news. <laughs> yeah. Currently, $27,600 is looking for a home. The next jump from 10 to 9, 37,300. So a whole lot of very bad rag hands being folded. The four deuce will eventually be folded on the button, I think. Not before the standard 30 seconds <laughs> is gobbled up by Orthodox. Though. His first name, by the way, is Orthodoxos. Yeah. Orthodoxu, which can't imagine was an easy one to navigate growing up. As we go back to the outer table, and it looks like we've got yet another confrontation here. On this occasion, it is Bakos Joma's King 7 up against Dominic Panka's King Jack. 9 4 10 on the flop, a pair of nines on the turn and on the river. The Jack secures Panka as the winner. And Bakos Joma as our 11th place finisher. Yeah, and just like that, we are now on the final table bubble. Which is a money bubble. Yep. In terms of pay jump, I should say. We've got another all in this one. Coming from Mata, playing under the Saudi Arabian flag, wow. KSA. Wow, this is very wide. This is a uh, 15 big blind shove at 7-4 into a stack that covers him as well. No even three. This, no is, even three. this is super wide. And it's very close decision for the King-10. Off of 5.3 million. Yeah, I think if he had 15 million, he'd call in here for sure. But with 5.3, it's over half his stack. It's uh, a tricky, tricky spot. It's been counted down. And he does let it go. Can't blame him there for, for ICM reasons. Um, Mata will be very relieved to get the fall there with the 7-4. I think that's the story, though, is a very unexpected behavior from Mata, who I'd be willing to guess wasn't saying I had 7-4 off suit there. No, I think I heard words which sounded like Bell Mata. Moving forward, anyone looking to enhance their appearance in a delightful way should reach for feathers. Can't go wrong with feathers, you reckon? Irresistible. <laughs> Lovely accessory. That said, if Lappin walks into the booth with feathers in his hair yeah. later today, I, I will have to retract my statement. <laughs> Ace 10 now for Mata, who has... Certainly come alive a bit in this orbit. And you do see, especially kind of shorthanded, a lot of ebb and flow in terms of play and momentum. Guys will find a gear and, and kind yep. of really begin to accelerate. Then maybe they, they take a beat, they slow down, get yeah. back into their shell a bit. Yeah. You're also just in a later position. Like even when you're under the gun, you're, you're basically the hijack. So... Uh, that forces you to play a lot more hands. Yeah. And the impact of the big blind ante is quite large as well because uh, it does mean that they're posting half a million every five hands, effectively 100,000 per hand, which is a small blind. So w when you're in a situation where you're posting a small blind every hand, that f um, you can get whittled down pretty quickly if you um, sit, sit on your hands, so to speak. Yeah. King, queen, three, rainbow as Chernikov defended from the big with... Two fours. 
Good shot draw from Mata, who promptly checks back. At Chernikov, you can feel the sense that maybe a little sprinkle on the turn would earn him the pot, but he does come with a check. Mata does the same. And Ooh. Bink's gin on the river for Broadway. Yeah, I mean, Chernikov won't put too much money into this pot with his pair of fours, but definitely a nice outcome there for Mata. He's not going to put any money at all into the pot. 550. Never say never with Chernikov. We saw him make some very light calls yesterday. Well, yeah. he wasn't going to lead at it. Is yeah, he definitely wasn't the better way to. Yeah, he definitely wasn't grinding. leading for sure. Although he, he seemed to consider it. His 550 does have uh, an odor to it, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, you're beating absolutely nothing with fours, so. But every now and again, absolutely nothing might be exactly what plays the hand this way. Sure, sure. Though, for Mata. I think it's more likely absolutely nothing bets the flop, though. Uh, yeah, and, and on that board texture, it doesn't seem like Mata can show up with a whole lot of nothings. Yeah, Calm. making good, solid decisions and not making big mistakes. Six off into the muck. It should have company in short order here. Now Chernikov with ace nine on the button goes to work. Yep. Over under 25 seconds for this eight deuce here in the small. Um, that's a that's a good line. <laughs> it is the final table bubble and a payout bubble, though, Dara. So yeah, you know, you oh, can no. be aggrieved, but it is in bounds and optimal for Orthodox to do what he's Ooh. doing, and for Remember Mata. Here. Did he jam here? Yeah, he sure he has did. Jammed. Yeah, this is this is the standard play with his stack, just over twenty big blinds. And this is a tricky spot for Chernikov. It is. Cool. He has called. Yeah, didn't take too long to do yeah. so. And he is in rough shape. So might this be the first chink in the armor for is it cold? the overwhelming whoa, chip whoa. leader who what? is what a turnaround for Mata. Not, not long ago, we saw him uh, jamming the 7-4 from the small blind for 3 million. And if he holds here, he's going to be up to over 9 million. Well, the Russian bear is currently a cub with ace-nine against ace-queen. And that fact remains on a king-high two-diamond flop where the diamonds are covered. And really, lonely nines are the only path to profit for Chernikov in this pot. Looks like he's ready to count down. Ace on the turn. Doesn't change anything. Although some paths to a chop now. If the board pairs, a seven or a three specifically. Instead, it's a four on the river. Surge Matas. Northbound surge continues.
It's like orthodox who is waiting every time for the dealer to tell him five seconds before he folds. And we have a legitimate hand here on the button from one of the more aggressive players, more willing to go after it. Um, but he does have a legitimate hand here. Malka City and bring it in for the mini plus open 425. I always wonder with that extra 25,000, there's no hand that's going to fold for the extra quarter that we put out there. What are we really looking to accomplish? Yeah, I had this debate for years with a close friend of uh, myself and David called Dara Davy, and he was a big uh, proponent of the Mini Plus. He felt that, th that it genuinely made a difference. It was more of a psychological difference. Yeah, I could else, see that. That people were quite happy to put in one big blind, but once you went any amount over that, they yeah. would actually start to fold some hands. Tough to quantify, but... yeah tend to agree as it comes king jack three after the defense from chernikov both players with gut shot straight draws chernikov checks it over yeah no reason to lead on this board it's a very interesting spot for malkasician because he has the not no pair here and that is a hand you can certainly consider checking back but <laughs> this is a very good board for him so uh, irrespective of his hand there's a Strong case for just range betting this board, betting whatever hand you have. But Chernikov is going to hang. Yeah, the 450k. Is that a raise? No, it's getting called. Oh, that's a call, Green yeah. chips, yeah. Yeah, so he's hanging on with his gut shot, backdoor flush draw. A complete brick, the yeah. ultimate brick on the turn. But when you get check called with ace queen on this board, despite the fact that it's draw heavy, you do get a little wary of being up against a pair. Yeah, and the card, and the card, the turn card matters as well. Like it's not a card that you've ever improved on, um, so checking back is definitely prudent. That's exactly what Melky Setian felt as he does check back and. Turn come firing out a bluff here. Uh, one million. Five on the river. Yes, yeah, snap firing too. Mm, the fast bet on the river is often a bit suspicious um, because if the player really has hit the, ha has hit the river, at the very least, they might have to consider their sizing. This <coughs> might work, though, because Malkasian doesn't have a pair. Got to ask himself now, what are the bluffs? Clubs, queen 10, is, uh, yeah. He's using his time bank card as he tries to work out this. Where, where are the bluffs coming from? Do I block them? Do I block value? It's very draw-heavy texture on the flop, obviously. Very draw the clubs, this, the straights. Yeah, there's a lot of available bluffs there. And he's unblocking clubs. He's completely unblocking them, yeah. He's blocking some of the straight draws, uh, yeah. queen-10. But apart from that, his hand makes a very good bluff catcher. Ace-10 being blocked as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, credit to him because clearly the gears are turning. Yeah. <laughs> we can take a three, a deuce, or a five out of the range. And it really becomes a matter of jacks or kings, realistically. Yeah. Yeah. The both turn and river were effective blanks. So he's weighing up the amount of kings and jacks on the flop against the amount of missed draws. He's really consuming the time on this one. Well, he'd be wise not to consume too much time. Yeah, they do get replenished on the final table, so... Uh, it is a genuinely tricky spot. Oh, and it gets through. Good. So, yeah. Chernikov with bated breath. Yeah, <laughs> very relieved there.
somebody busts on an outer table, which would allow him to open up his ranges. You do see the time box there, 30 second shot clock in yeah. play. Yeah, we saw this in the in, in, in the warm up as well. When they introduced the time box, um, it didn't actually speed up the, p the pace of play. All that happened was that everybody was taking the 20 to 30 seconds pre-flop. Suddenly they became cognizant of the luxury. Yeah, it's like, no, well, I, they allow me to use 30 seconds, so I guess I might as well use it. I remember once upon a time the, the days of Chris Ferguson. He really was one of those players who methodically, well before the advent <coughs> of the shot clock, would take exactly the same amount, amount of time, whether he was calling, raising, or folding in an effort to yeah. not give anything away. Yeah. But I think in today's game, people largely understand that it isn't necessarily emblematic of a, a sort of a, a time tell for you to... No, no. I, I think you could, you could definitely take it too far. Um, you know, if you if you dealt mine too off under the gun, you don't need to take 20 Correct. seconds. <laughs> Maroon Jazar, the ace-5 offsuit from the cutoff. Third in chips, so slightly precarious for him to be taking some chances with two bigger stacks out there. Yeah. Or Orthodox who has a hand now, which he would normally go with, um, but again, because of ICM, he might be... Uh, I think he might have already decided he's going with this, but he wants to use the maximum amount of time. That would seem prudent. Ace eight, obviously uncomfortable insofar as we know that a lot of ace is in Jazar's <coughs> opening range here, but late position in the cutoff. Yeah, unclear whether or not he's capable of stepping out. Yeah, if it, it, ace eight is actually kind of a borderline hand because oh, yeah. if you think uh, your opponent is opening any ace, then ace eight is the ha is the one which beats more than it loses to. Good point. As the all in is delivered to the middle. <coughs> so 16 players left. He is on a money jump here. I mean, I don't think Jazar can fold getting the price. And one would hope that this was something that he had taken into consideration before he chose to make this open, Yeah, is the prospect of having Orthodox's button on the short stack jam on him. And it certainly appears that he knew exactly how he would respond as we see him call with the ace five and he'll be disappointed. Yeah, you can see those numbers don't add up to 100 because there are actually quite a few chops uh, given the proximity of their kickers. Orthodox who giving his rail a little update. Taking the best of it to the King 10 deuce board. And he does hold the ace of spades, which is working. Azar looking for a five here. 2.35 million chip pot. <coughs> Turn is clean. And Orthodox who just needs to fade the five in order to at minimum chop. And the jack allows him to play both the ace and the eight. I don't think a chop was available as of the turn. So... Discipline to perfect, perfect. Yeah. He's my friend. Another day. <sighs> Two queens for Orthodoxy. What a lovely start this would be. Yeah. for him as he has already enjoyed one double up Dara and at this depth of 2.4 million is it simply all in it, I don't think it has to be um, he's got 14 big blinds once you go above 12 you can start having some raise calls and raise folds I think this certainly qualifies as strong enough to raise call um, mm. if you shove this you're not going to induce uh, a lower pair uh, to give you action but if you raise this somebody might look down at sixes and decide to shove it or ace x, uh, where the x is lower than a queen that you're in great shape against. Not sure if it's with intent, but he's giving off some real reverse tells here. Yeah, he does move all in, so. <sighs> Interesting he, he chose to use one of his time cards on that too. I mean, he, he always knew the decision he was making. And those time cards could prove very important as we get further down yeah. toward the final table. 
this decision far simpler than the ones that he might be facing later on. Yeah, we actually saw that in the warm-up event. Paul Brown came back as the shortest stack, and he used all his time cards. But okay. he actually ended up as a big stack on the bubble. Okay, so King-Queen is giving action here. and Some protection as well in the event that... Yeah, yeah, there's no way Komorowski is getting involved now. He just wants um, Orthodoxu to bust here and secure the pay jump. Normally, you would think Sandra Gall has the stronger range here, um, and, he do and he does, but on this occasion, Orthodoxo has the stronger hand. <coughs> and the two queens will be thrilled <laughs> to be in this spot. <laughs> Worthy of note, Raful already folded a king of spades out of the big blind, so oh, yeah. just a couple of kings are actually available to Sandra Gall here, who... Has sort of stepped in it, but of course has Orthodox who covered. That's the good news. The bad news is a six high, two club flop. Although the two clubs are working for the time being in conjunction with the queen of clubs. Now a chop available on the turn. Two actual kings and a five, what he's looking for. Instead he finds a heart and Orthodox Doubles once more, and the long face at the onset has now begun to produce. Sanja Gal, part of a modest but certainly active Mongolian contingent that has made their way here to the island for this particular series. really the standout nation for me in terms of the unexpected you know in the middle east we know there's a lot of uh, yeah a lot of gamble but not a lot of opportunity so clearly coming out this way makes sense europe obviously tons of poker players from all across eastern and western parts of the continent but mongolia really struck me as a, a big surprise uh, i would presume this is a product of online poker kind of making its way into the territory and then those looking for additional fixes in the live arena. Yeah. yeah. Hopping a plane. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They really draw from all over the globe here. Little trivia for you. What's the capital of Mongolia? Ulaanbaatar. Wow, I should have known. That's, all, that's the kind of thing I can only <laughs> ask a fellow American and hope that they won't know. <laughs> you Europeans are too good with your geography. Tough booth. Ace <laughs> deuce suited. <laughs> Not a tough spot, though, for Chernikov, no. who opens to 350,000, and now Orthodoxu weighing things with Queen Jack off suit. Obviously, the one guy you don't want to do yeah. a lot of horn locking with is Chernikov, the Reaper, as it were, boss stack. Yeah, yeah, you can call here, but you really don't like it. Uh, this would be a snap call earlier on in the tournament where there's no ICM considerations, but uh, this, is, this is actually towards the bottom of the calling range. He probably folds Queen 10. 10-8-7 does produce two overs and a gut shot for the Queen Jack. Ace Deuce still in front, working backdoor hearts and the best hand. Even when you do hit kind of the dynamite sort of flop when you're orthodox, yeah. so you're just going to take such passive lines. Yeah. That is the issue. You can end up just leaking chips because you can't play a lot of hands that you would normally play aggressively. Yeah. Aggressively, you end up having to play them very passively. Mm -hmm. So you're going to leak chips when you, when, you, when you miss, and you're going to not necessarily get paid when you hit as well. Check, check, and the turn now producing a double gutter for Orthodoxu, but Chernikov improving to top pair. Kind of a curious spot here. You're tempted to maybe try to represent the ace, recognizing that Chernikov can open so wide from the button. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's an unusual spot because Orth uh, Chernikov should be opening almost anything on the button. Orthodoxu will have actually have a much tighter defending range than normal, and therefore ace composes a larger part of his range than normal. But even with the range advantage here, he can't be too aggressive. He's now got a double gutter, so he's... He wants to continue, he has to continue, but there's only one card to come. Half a million is the price. <coughs> just about a ninth of his remaining stack, and he's wow. just going to let it That's go. That's a big fold. That's a big fold. 
Uh, he knew, I mean, he was drawn to the nuts essentially. Uh, a king of clubs would have been, a club would have been slightly problem Mongolian player Sandrigal. And this gentleman on screen, Luke Bandel, who appears to be all in. As we take you to the outer table, we do have something developing. It is Vakos Joma against Luke Bindel. Two jacks against ace nine. Flop was three ace deuce. And obviously the two jacks were climbing uphill from that point forward. A four on the turn, a deuce on the river, I'm being told. And yeah, Joma will double through the Frenchman. Yeah, big hit for Bendel there. He, he he played superbly yesterday as well. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. You get it in 70-30 favorite, and if you don't hold, it's probably not going to be your day. <coughs> Meanwhile, up front with the ace-nine suited, <coughs> Sanjagal made it 325k to go. Melky Setien, ace-queen, an understandable jam over the top. And the Ducklings really looking quite vulnerable and undesirable for... Yeah, Tomorowski. I think he's just taking. He's just using his full time here. I don't <coughs> think he was ever calling off there with twos. And that does show good awareness too from Komarowski, an older gentleman. He's aware of the of the time dynamic, the fact that they're on a paid jump. Yeah, the ICM not lost on him, and that was displayed in in the very first hand, I believe it was, after he folded the ten jack suited. Yeah, could have opened it from middle position. Yeah. And this is also an example of the time just yeah, orthodox. being utilized there. Orthodox is never playing 7-6. Again, we're seeing the same phenomenon because they now have the uh, the time cards. That's kind of legitimized taking 20 to 30 seconds uh, on a decision that isn't really a decision. Do you feel like when we're down to two tables that each time we're at a pay jump, we should go to hand for hand in order to prevent this sort of... No, I think that would that would be over the top. It would slow the game too much. We saw the bubble really slowed yesterday. Yeah. Um, but th th there's really not much you can do about this, and you can you can get lucky or unlucky as well. Um, you know, you can be on a table where everybody's playing really fast, and the other table everybody's playing really slow, and that gives the other table a, an equity advantage. Um, that's the situation where David Lappin always tries to educate his table that they should be taking their time. We buried the lead a touch, which is that Sandragal is willing to spin here with wow. the ace nine in really bad shape. Made the added investment. Flop is of no assistance to him. Does have some back doors available, and Ooh, that is one what a hell of a card. What a card. Flush draw and open ender obtained as ace queen is really sweating this river. Which is Oof. a black five. And Sancho Gal, you can see there, he has so many outs, very disappointed that he didn't hit one of them. And he's going to be uh, in the right price. Um, but they're in the, there is a risk premium due to ICM. Yeah. Um, so I suspect if we ran it, it might be a close fold. Nothing close about this one, as I expect we will see the first participation from Komarowski. He did open the button, I believe, with and, the king and queen, take yeah. it down. Yeah, with king queen, but here up front. And using a time bank, the pay jump has already been secured. So really, these banks are just designed to sort of uh, reduce the range that these players' opponents are, are, are placing them on. Yeah, it's possible he, this is, th there's a little bit of Hollywood here. It's also possible he, he he's actually does have a decision between normal raise and shove, and he's trying to decide between which of those two options is better. Um, goes with the all-in. He does go with the all-in. He was relatively early. I think in late position, you would be more likely to raise, but in early position, when you have the whole field to get through, um, maybe the shove is the better option. No takers. Ace eight suited now for Sandragal on the heels of having had ace nine suited. He is covered. Boy, this would be particularly ruthless, Dara. 
Oh my goodness. He's got a rush of cards. Yeah, he stuck it in. <laughs> yeah, and he's going to get shown the two black queens, which will be a very disappointing sight. Yeah, have you said how impressed I was by him yesterday? I'm not convinced by this call off here. Um, it was Komorowski from relatively early position. Now obviously, Sandragal didn't know just how tight his play has been, but this is a beautiful flop. Maybe no reason to stand up, sir. Open ender. Five or ten will work, and ace would as well. Instead, it's a jack of clubs on the turn, and now we pull outs off the board. As Komorowski has the clubs covered, but still 18% is Sandragal. Can he get there? No. It is a flush on the end for Komorowski, and back-to-back -back suited diamond aces spell the end for the Mongolian. Yeah. Yeah, he enlivened the second last uh, session yesterday where he got away from those queens and then subsequently spun up. He's had a... And it looks like we're going to bounce back to our outer table once more. What have we here? It is just as held with the ace jack, and it is ace nine for Luke Bindel. Lost with the two jacks earlier, covered here, and not a great flop, but he's right. It could be worse. Chops are available on the paired board. A nine would be a clean winner. Can he get there? No, it's the jack, and that is it for Luke Pindell, who really just was kind of top class through and through. Yeah, he the was. The time yeah. that we witnessed him. Yeah, yeah, just a cooler there. Um, blind versus button. They're just making sure that he is covered. Uh, counting the stacks. Stacks were obviously very close. Yeah, by but our accounting, it's going to be au revoir, monsieur. Meanwhile, we got one brewing here with Arun Jazar, Ace ten. Opens to four hundred. <laughs> Perhaps notable that he's going with 400 as opposed to three? Yeah. It's, I mean, he only has... Um, 2.3 to start. 2.3 to start, so just under 20. No, sorry, I'm not even doing it for maths properly anymore. 14. This is an unusual... I mean, I guess he's raised folding this. Um, but Milky then using Setian. the bigger size is weird. Milky Setian is a customer here. 8-4 deuce board, not in either player's domain. Two quick checks. <coughs> Feels like a possible opportunity as played for Melky Setien to try to assert that he was just calling a wide variety of hands. Instead, it goes check, check, and he binks the jack for a winner on the river. Mm. Yeah, Jazar's unlucky here. Obviously, he's been outdrawn, but I would have preferred to have seen a shove preflop, which would have got the fold from the Queen Jack. Instead, <coughs> the Ace 10 is being milked for 250,000. Oh, it looks like a call might be forthcoming, although as he, call, as he breaks the chips down, he shoots a glance over to Milky Setian to see whether or not he can pick anything up and uh, this will be disappointing Yeah, for Jazar. Yeah, you can see there. That's the look of a man who's been rivered. Worthy. <laughs> I will tell you after that. Transgression, but... Hey, my Russian bet. That's a nice choice. Pocket nines here for Jazar, ten big, just over ten big blinds. Yeah, this is all going in. That's a bad choice. <laughs> and we're down to thirteen. So. Maybe it's red, but it's mine. My choice. Immediately being admonished, by the way, by his compatriots. Yeah, it's interesting. We got a bit of this yesterday too. Uh, the, the the hand post mortems. It seems like players are not. Uh, shy about expressing their opinion on other players' play. <coughs> Mel
Not exactly the most endearing practice at the table. No. No, indeed not. I don't mind what recreational players do. It is, it's, it's part of the fun, but uh, it, sure. it, it does annoy me when, when professional players start indulging in it. Especially when they're on a bad end of an outcome, but certainly yeah. printing money in terms of the choice that was made. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Never want to do anything to discourage bad play as a professional. You only want to encourage it. Bears noting, by the way, Dara, that we are oh, on another pay jump. Got there pretty quickly, too. Mm. Yeah, the Ace piss. queen for Raful. Got yeah. it, I have, my friend. I, have I enough think he's going to have to call off here. He's Let's very short. Eight big blinds. It's, an, it's also another short stack, and this is another winkle of ICM. You, you're better off calling it off against First a short stack than a big stack because it's more of a benefit to you when you win. You, you yes. cripple the other guy or, or eliminate him if you cover him slightly. I'm going to enjoy seeing the second card. Raful says the first one is bad for you. Must have squeezed the ace. That's incredible. He, he, he took 30 seconds to squeeze the first card wow. and had to use his time card. He has and only got well. seven seconds out of that, sec out of that <laughs> yeah, uh, time card, right, by yeah. the way. Bears... No. Yeah. Good luck, man. And the chips do get in there, Ruffle, with a kiss of the ring, it would that appear. Mm. Oh, come on. It's a, a flip. Superstition being deployed. And it's a flip with a weighted coin. And advantage Jazar in terms of that weight. Ooh. And the ace jack six board. <laughs> Putting Ruffle in front. Is our taking it in good spirit there? I'm a he won't be eliminated, but he will be down to 125k. We're all believers. Unless he can find a nine. Ooh, nearly. Close. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's black. <laughs> One point more. Come on. Hold on. Ooh. And the river. Allows the ace queen to hold as the two Lebanese players. No, no, I don't cover you. I don't cover you. I don't cover you. I'm still playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have 10 bigs, my friend. How much do you have? Yes, 1.6. I have 1.6. But the bad news is that even if he wins this hand, he's just getting his money back. Up we go. Mata with the two jacks. What is it? Yeah. Strange to s describe it as such, given the strength of the jacks against this queen nine, but this raise does provide some insulation yeah. to Jazar. You'd hate to have to go up against multiple hands with yeah, this for sort sure. of kit. Sure. And yeah, we're see we're definitely seeing some use of the of the time factor now. Raful is not thinking of doing anything with the eight four off here other than folding, but using almost the full thirty seconds. And Jazar is going to get the good news that he does have an overcard. Oh, I have one over. Yeah, good luck. I will survive. Ah, ah, ah. Mata. Mushing his man, good luck. Thanks. More incentivized to do so in the small pots. It's, it's so small. Most. Exactly. Risking very little here. Diamonds are working for Jazar. Still hunting a queen on the King King <laughs> 7 board. And there yeah. is a diamond as mm. suddenly no. a glimmer of light at diamond. the end of this tunnel. <laughs> Diamonds are no good, only diamonds. Diamonds are forever. Can Maroon Jazar hit the flush? No. no. Instead, he hits the nine. Good game, bye, bye. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Uh, and hard luck. That will spell the end of the road. And perhaps more importantly for those that remain, an additional pay jump. As rather than face um, further action on, for on later streets. Those later streets, obviously, things do get murkier as well from yeah. time to time. So removing the need to make added decisions is, is yeah. worth the investment. Absolutely, yeah. With the, with the risk premium there, it's quite likely that on and all in bet, he would need 60 to 70% equity. And 
10-9 suit had definitely had it on the flop, but on a lot of turn cards, he would not be sure whether he had 70% uh, anymore. Well, the Russian Federation doing a little bit better for itself on this occasion, as it's two sevens that Chernikov has put to work. Komarovsky is a very pretty hand, but there's no reason to get involved here. Yeah, good ICM fold there. 10-9 suited. This is a tempter in the yeah. big, as David Lappin likes to put it. Yeah, closing the action here. Um, this is a fairly routine call, even though you don't love it against the chip leader. He's already burned a few of his time cards as well. Um, maybe he's using the full 30 seconds here. <laughs> I love the nonchalant way he just flicks out the chip. Almost yeah. like Keeping an eye on Chernikov, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Not lost on him the fact that Chernikov does have the big stack. Ooh, this is trouble, though. He's flop top pair, and Chernikov has a set. Oh, boy. He might go all in here similar to the previous. No, it's actually gone check, Oh, check. my God. Oh, it's no. over for Raful now. It went check, check as Chernikov flopped too good to follow through. Yeah. Now Raful thinks he's the one trapping, but yeah. he is the trappee as that burning smell in your living room is the remainder of Raful's hopes going up in smoke. What does Chernikov do now? Will he just call here and let him bet the river and then s and then put the rest in? Worthy of note, though, Raful isn't drawing dead. A deuce or a ten on the yeah. end yeah. would give him the W, but Chernikov with sevens full, content to just flat, and Raful is done. 1.45 in the middle. Yeah. What if he comes with something like half pot to full pot? Instead, he's just checked. checks it. I think he's gone into check call mode here. Uh, I mean, maybe he'll check shove, but it's possible he's just decided to check call here. It's a small bet as well. Pretty Chernikov. doubtful that the six brought in a straight for Chernikov, but yeah. as played, uh, Raful, this would be incredibly astute, and what a bit of self-preservationism this would be. Yeah, if, he's, if he can save himself here. No, he has put in the raise. Now when he gets shoved on, though, he might be able to get away. Um, he doesn't even have the nut nine here. I mean, he's losing to almost any nine that Chernikov would open from early position. Maybe not nine eight suited, but um, he's losing to all ace nine, king nine, queen nine suited, all those hands. But he ho hasn't left himself with a lot behind either. Chernikov's giving it some Hollywood now before he shoves. And he has effectively shoved. And he hates it now. Yeah. The veil of dread yeah. lowered upon Raful's head. I backed into an Edgar Allan Poe moment there, didn't I? I, I didn't even realize <laughs> it. That was... Is he going to be able to somehow find the fold here? That would be amazing. You've got top trips. Doesn't it feel like 6-6 six, six at a minimum? Yeah, it's just you can't feel good about your um, trips now. The only real value you're beating now is 9-8 suited. Because uh, an overpair doesn't even raise on this board on the end. I don't even think 9-8 jams, though. Yeah. He's in the horrors here. Yeah. This is... Liquify on the blender settings. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, he's lucky he's not already all in because had Chernikov played his hand uh, normally, he would have bet the flop. Raful would have called and they might have very well got it in on the turn. 
Yeah. He does call <laughs> Russian bear. He does his trademark celebration. Uh, that's a sick one for Raful. Showing a spot of sympathy <laughs> for his victim. There's a list. There is a list, and, and it's in poker news. <laughs> yeah. Currently, $27,600 is looking for a home. The next jump from 10 to 9, 37,300. So a whole lot of very bad rag hands being folded. The four deuce will eventually be folded on the button, I think. Not before the standard 30 seconds <laughs> is gobbled up by Orthodox. Though. His first name, by the way, is Orthodoxos. Yeah. Orthodoxu, which can't imagine was an easy one to navigate growing up as we go back to the outer table and it looks like we've got yet another confrontation here on this occasion it is Bakos Joma's king seven up against Dominic Panka's king jack nine four ten on the flop a pair of nines on the turn and on the river the jack secures Panka as the winner and Bakos Joma as our 11th place finisher yeah, and just like that, we are now on the final table bubble. Which is a money bubble. Yep. In terms of pay jump, I should say. We've got another all in, this one. Coming from Mata. Playing under the Saudi Arabian flag. Wow. KSA. Wow, this is very wide. This is a 15 big blind shove at 7-4 into a stack that covers him as well. No defense. This, no this is super wide. And it's very close decision for the King 10. Off of 5.3 million. Yeah, I think if he had 15 million, he'd call in here for sure. But with 5.3, it's over half his stack. Uh, a tricky, tricky spot. It's been counted down. And he does let it go. Can't blame him there for, for ICM reasons. Um, Mata will be very relieved to get the fall there with the 7-4. I think that's the story, though, is a very unexpected behavior from Mata, who... I'd be willing to guess wasn't saying I had 7-4 off suit there. No, I think I heard words which sounded like Bell the Man. Moving forward, anyone looking to enhance their appearance in a delightful way should reach for feathers. <laughs> Can't go wrong with feathers, you reckon? Irresistible. <laughs> Lovely accessory. That said, if Lappin walks into the booth with feathers in his hair yeah. later today, I... I will have to retract my statement. <laughs> He's 10 now for Mata, who has certainly come alive a bit in this orbit. And you do see, especially kind of shorthanded a lot of ebb and flow in terms of play and momentum. Guys will find a gear and, and kind yeah. of really begin to accelerate. Then maybe they, they take a beat, they slow down, get yeah. back into their shell a bit. Yeah. You're also just in a later position. Like even when you're under the gun, you're, you're basically the hijack. So uh, that forces you to play a lot more hands. Yeah. And the impact of the big band ante is quite large as well because uh, it does mean that they're posting half a million every five hands, effectively 100,000 per hand, which is a small blind. So w when you're in a situation where you're posting a small blind every hand, that f um, you can get whittled down pretty quickly if you um, sit, sit on your hand, so to speak. Yeah. King, queen, three, rainbow as Chernikov defended from the big with two fours. 
Good shot draw from Mata, who promptly checks back. And Chernikov, you can feel the sense that maybe a little sprinkle on the turn would earn him the pot, but he does come with a check. Mata does the same. And Ooh. Binks Jin on the river for Broadway. Yeah, I mean, Chernikov won't put too much money into this pot with his pair of fours, but definitely a nice outcome there for Mata. Well, he's not going to put any money at all into the pot. 550. Never say never with Chernikov. We saw him make some very light calls yesterday. Well, yeah. he wasn't going to lead at it. Yeah, he definitely wasn't a better way to. Yeah, he definitely wasn't right. leading for sure. Although no. he seemed to consider it. His 550 does have uh, an odor to it, doesn't it? Mm. I mean, you're beating absolutely nothing with fours, so. But every now and again, absolutely nothing might be exactly what plays the hand this way. Sure, sure. Though, for Mata. I think it's more likely absolutely nothing bets the flop, though. Uh, yeah, and, and on that board texture, it doesn't seem like Monta can show up with a whole lot of nothings. Yeah, Com making good, solid decisions and not making big mistakes. Six off into the muck. It should have company in short order here. Now Chernikov with ace nine on the button goes to work. Yep. Over under 25 seconds for this eight deuce here in the small. Um, that's a that's a good line. <laughs> it is the final table bubble and a payout bubble, though, Dara. So yeah, you know, you oh can no, be aggrieved, but it is inbounds and optimal for Orthodox to do what he's Ooh. doing, and for Over Mata. Here. Did he jam here? Yeah, he sure he has did. Jammed. Yeah, this is this is the standard play with his stack, just over twenty big blinds. And this is a tricky spot for Chernikov. It is. He has called. Yeah, didn't take too long to do yeah. so. And he is in rough shape. So might this be the first chink in the armor for it's a call? the overwhelming whoa, chip whoa. leader who what? is what a turnaround for Mata. Not, not long ago, we saw him uh, jamming the 7-4 from the small blind for 3 million. And if he holds here, he's going to be up to over 9 million. Well, the Russian bear is currently a cub with ace-nine against ace-queen. And that fact remains on a king-high two-diamond flop where the diamonds are covered. And really, lonely nines are the only path to profit for Chernikov in this pot. Looks like he's ready to count down. Ace on the turn. Doesn't change anything. Although some paths to a chop now. If the board pairs, a seven or a three specifically. Instead, it's a four on the river. Surge Matas. Northbound surge continues.
looks like Orthodox who is waiting every time for the dealer to tell him five seconds before he folds. And we have a legitimate hand here on the button from one of the more aggressive players, more willing to go after it. Welcome, welcome, guys. We are back for final table coverage of this Merit Poker Western Series main event live from the Merit Crystal Cove Hotel and Resort. I'm David Lappin. Dara O'Carney is joining me for the remainder of this block. We expect 80 minutes or so of play, maybe 90 minutes left on this sort of level we we ended things obviously All been waiting for oh. the final table of the 2023 merit poker western series main event an event that guaranteed 1.5 million dollars and managed to amass courtesy of 757 entries a prize pool of 2 million 89,320 dollars the winner of this event will be taking home $372,800, and each of our nine final tableists have already secured $37,300. Before we get underway, I want to take a moment to acknowledge and appreciate the efforts of people without whom this event would not be possible. President of Merit Poker, Ms. Songul Bekem. Director Angela Kozachuk. Media Manager Ashkan Bahai. And last but not least, Marketing Manager Hakan Chumlibel. Now it's time to welcome our gladiators to the arena. In seat number one, with 11 caches and seven final tables right here in Kerenia, this man won the World Poker Tour VIP event back in 2013 right here. From Lebanon, with 6,025,000 in chips, please welcome Serge Mata. In seat two, with almost $1 million in live tournament earnings, this man won the Mediterranean Poker Party 1K event right here back in August of 2022. He has eight wins on his live poker resume and is looking to make it nine today. From Russia, the chip leader with 16725000 It is Edward Barsigian. up in C3. This is this gentleman's sixth cash in Merit events, including a fifth place finish in the Merit Poker Retro Series in 2019. From Russia, with 12.175 million in chips, please welcome Alexander Chernikov. in seat four is what I can only describe as a hometown hero. Hailing from right here in Cyprus and sure to keep things interesting at this final table with 9.5 million in chips, give it up for Orthodox Orthodoxos. In C5, 
seat five primarily plays spin and go events. He has amassed a million dollars in earnings in that discipline, but believe it or not, this is his very first ever live tournament event. With just over four million in chips from Lithuania, give it up for Ernestas Dektiriovas. familiar to those of you who battle online. Under the name Taxi Driver, he strikes fear into the hearts of his competition, having recently won a World Series of Poker circuit ring from Germany with 8.35 million in chips. It's justice hell. in seat eight has a whopping $3.3 million in career live tournament earnings. You may recognize the name from his victory back in 2014 at the Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure. He also took down the Merit Poker Western Series High Roller back in 2017 from Poland with 8.9 million in chips. Please welcome Dominic. is sure to be the youngest at the final table. He's only been playing for two short years and has already secured the biggest cash of his short career. This is his first ever live tournament event. Make some noise for Russia's with 2.675 million in chips as the short stack, Vladislav Doroshkov. to be overlooked with 25 caches here at Merit Poker, including 22 final tables from Lebanon with 7.25 million in chips. It is Ara Melkisetian. We didn't think we forgot about you, Ara. We just wanted the nicest sunglasses in the room to be the last player to come in. <laughs> Gentlemen, the blinds will be 100, 250,000 with a 250K big blind ante. We're ready to draw for the button. We wish each of you good luck. Dealers, shuffle up and deal. Shuffle up and deal indeed. Well, now that we have the pleasantries out of the way, it's time for war, Dara. Indeed, yeah, and there's the stacks. Um, chip leader with 67 big blinds, Barsegian, and the short stack is Vazlav Doroshkov. The ones are to watch are mid-pack, Dominic Panka and Justice Halt. 36 big blinds and 33 big blinds. Stacks are quite compressed. You can see that once you get up past the first two and the bottom two, everybody else is compressed between less than 40 and more than 20. Yeah, in our preview and in our morning chat over coffee, Dara, about this prospective final table, we 
isolated four people, three of whom have actually made it. We did have high hopes for Luke Bindel, unlucky obviously in the runouts earlier today to bust in, I think it was 14th. But there we see Helt, Panka and Barsegian very much in the mix. Three players who have a lot of um, history with the game, a lot of previous results and certainly maybe the three most likely to use that experience to good effect here. Yeah. That is not to say that the other players are playing for the minor places. Chernikov, the Russian bear, has been quite the bohemoth over the course of our coverage. Orthodoxus Orthodoxu, also very much in the picture here. We're we'll keeping our eyes on Doroshkov and Deg Tiriavos. Those guys, as you mentioned there, Dara, on the short stacks. A lot of ICM about those guys really, really looking to ladder a couple of places if possible. That's a pretty good outcome from them. You ladder two spots, you pretty much double your money. Yeah, yeah, exactly, as we see the payouts there. Another unusual feature of this is that the it's uh, the jump from third to second is greater than the jump from second to first, which actually increases the ICM. It moves it closer to being a satellite as we get shorter handed. So normally the ICM starts out fairly extreme on the final table and then lessens with each elimination, but there'll be a second sort of factor that the nearer we get to three, the more like a satellite it will appear again. Yeah, it is a quirky feature of the events here at Maris. We noticed that one in, actually we didn't notice that one. Our rail noticed that one in the warm-up, alerted it to us. We thought it might have been an aberration, but clearly yeah, it is no, input it, into the system. It's, it's, it's a feature of these tournaments, yeah. I mean, there's no reason why the it shouldn't be that way, but um, it's certainly the first time I've ever seen it. Yeah, non-standard, but throws a little curveball to those guys when it's maybe four left. Yeah. Could get very interesting. Well, look. I am salivating, Dara, at the prospect of yeah, I wasn't going this to final mention, table. I wasn't going to mention that, but uh, now that you brought it up. Yeah, the, <laughs> you the, the, the spittle, the, the drool. The, the commentary booth is quite, is quite moist at the moment. <laughs> well, we are Western teamed here, so we do have these spittoons lying around the room, fortunately for the salivators like myself. The time box and time cards are in play. They've been in play All since we away from Doroshkov, he picks up Queens under the gun. Um, he would have been going pretty wide there, given that he was under the gun, but or actually under the gun plus one. But um, oh, and we're going to have action straight away. Chernikov wow. is not a man who would ever fold this king suited. Certainly not, Dara. And yeah, really getting no opportunity to sit back, relax, ease into this one. We're straight into a showdown. Yeah. Try to erase the memory of you bringing up spittoons. <laughs> well, look, when these cards end up on their backs, as they indubitably will, Doroshkov, he won't love to see Ace King, but should he win this very big flip, he will be right back in the mix. On the other hand, we might be immediately down to eight. Yeah, so the two Russians are tangling here. <laughs> Doroshkov, even though I know absolutely nothing about him, has really impressed me uh, the whole way through. So, while I'm not rooting against Chernikov, I would like to see a bit more of Doroshkov. It would be interesting to see what he can do if he gets a double up. I agree, Dara. We don't want anyone to leave the party quite yet. Yeah, it always feels a bit weird if you, uh, if you last only one hand on a final table. It's almost like you were never there. So he is favourite. People call this a flip, but the the pair is a decent enough favourite. Oh, 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 oh. well, and still a flip. He's <laughs> yeah, he's got to fade the flush now. He's it's, a, it's actually flipped the uh, percentages. Chernikov is now favourite. So many outs. So many outs indeed. At least Doroshkov has a queen of hearts, which is one less heart. But that's a good turn card for Doroshkov. He's taking it in good humor, but this is a sweaty moment. And, and he does a hold. Very much a case or whatever it will be. Yeah. 
Rice smile from Duroshka before that river was dealt. Little yeah. bit of relief there. Yeah, well, there's nothing you can do really in that spot. You just have to wait. The deck is going to decide. Well, his engines have started now from 11 pigs, our short stack, now very much in the middle of the pack. He's probably up to seventh place with that double up. We don't have a very short player anymore. I think no. our short stack is now 16 big. So you talked about the stacks being compressed even more so now, Dara. Yeah, he's moved back into the into the 22 40 zone where most of them are living. And even the chip leader, like it's not like we have a 150 big blind stack that's likely to crush. They can all do damage even to the chip leader. Shout out to everybody joining us in the chat on this Wednesday evening. 6.45 local time. We're coming to you 4.45 in the UK and Ireland, 5.45 in Central Europe. A nice time to begin a final table. People may be coming home from work, wanting to fire up the live stream. Also, maybe the grinders sort of around about the start time. Dara, you're usually about a 5 p.m. grinder. Yeah, I usually start around 5.30 p.m., except on a Sunday I start earlier. Um, and I like to have a Twitch stream or something in the background. So I think this does facilitate that. As we see, interestingly, Chernikov obviously came off the wrong end of that big flip a moment ago. Going with the larger size, I expect this to continue. We, we haven't seen him alter from this... 2.4x all day. He was 2.5ing yesterday, so playing a slightly bigger ball variety of poker. For anybody out there watching the stream, we are aware there are a few streams out there, and welcome we are to have an audience from anywhere, but we would encourage you to switch over to the Merit Poker official stream if you can, mainly because we are engaging with that chat and we would love to hear some questions, some backseat driving, some analysis. Commentary always welcome. We had some chat MVPs during the warm-up, Dara. We had indeed, yeah. No, the chat's been very, very good, very high quality. Sometimes notices stuff that we've missed. Gonna take one down here. Yeah, Opening from the button. Yeah. Queen eight reasonably standard. Probably towards the bottom of the range though. I think he might not open Queen Seven. Edward Barsegian there on screen. With this result, he has crossed the $1 million mark, regardless of where he finishes in live tournament winnings. As Ali mentioned in his intro, he won the Mediterranean Poker Party 1K event here last August. So, plenty of experience. Speaking of poker parties, Orthodoxu gets the party started here with the big slick. 
in early position. Yeah, Ace King suited again. Same suit actually. Hearts. Queen ten. Hand you would normally defend. Yeah, e matter one of those shorter stacks, twenty four bigs, probably hovering around the sixth, sixth or seventh place. Dara definitely some ICM considerations to every decision he makes. Yeah, again, this might actually be bottom of the range. And I don't mind this fold actually just out of position to Orthodox who decides to let that one go. It's, it might seem very nitty, but that is, a, that is a factor of the ICM. Your hand is not going to get to show down as often. He's going to put a lot of pressure on you post-flop. And if you flop a strong draw, you won't be as happy about playing it fast as you would be at the start of the tournament when there's no ICM or very little ICM. Yeah, excellent analysis there, Dara. Obviously, you are the man who literally wrote the book on Endgame. We are very much in the Endgame now. ICM, a huge factor for all of these guys, whether it's because they can take advantage of it or because they are under its cosh. Indeed, yeah. Yeah. We talked a little bit about how a feature of tournaments here are that we do come back with 19, 20 players for day two, as opposed to coming back for a final table, which is sometimes the way, sometimes what you will see in other festivals. One difference there is players can't prepare too much for the, per the particular stack setup and dynamic and yep. positions they're going to be in yeah, for true. a final table. They kind of have to work it out on the fly. Yeah, that's true. They can obviously prepare for the start day position, um, but they can't prepare specifically for the final table. They did have an hour break, but that's not really enough time to go off and run a bunch of sims. So <laughs> um, maybe a quick look at GTO Wizard just to get your ranges down in, in the seats you're most likely to open from. Uh, Angelo Roach in the uh, chat asking what is ICM. It, that's independent chip model. It, it, it's essentially a, a measure of the way there's a difference between how much your chips are worth in money and how much they're actually worth in chips. For example, when you double up, you don't double your the value of your stack. Um, but when you bust, you lose the full value. When you lose your stack, you lose the full value of that stack. So. That has strategic implications. As we see an interesting pot brewing here, Chernikov has opened from under the gun here with the Jack-10 suited, a hand we like to see open up here, particularly when you are one of the bigger stacks. Orthodox who flats um, the Queen-Jack suited, which is a little uh, tight ropish from yeah. plus one. Panka pouncing on what he perceives to be a wide opening range and maybe some dead-ish money from the flat. And I think this will get the job done, Dara. Yeah, Chernikov has been very wide from every position, so he's likely to be worried. The fact that Orthodox is just flat also means he genuinely, he genuinely has this kind of hand. So this is a great spot for Panka um, to potentially pick up a lot of money. Oh, wow, wow. Ch Chernikov Ch is going to gamble. Yeah, yeah he does. Um, this, is Ch this is the way Chernikov plays. As I said uh, before the final table of form, he's not particularly aggressive. He's just very, very loose. He does a lot of calling. Um. Well, 5.4 in the middle, in the middle, 6.2 million is the effective stack. And uh, wow, we've got an interesting board, Dara. That, that is an interesting board, yeah. Panka, gut shot, backdoor flush draw. Very likely to bet something in the 1 million down bet area here yeah in a three bet pot you generally use smaller sizings so um the ranges are more defined although against Chernikov, that's not necessarily the case jack 10 <laughs> suited shouldn't be in there uh, in most ranges 1.3 yeah that's quite big by the standards oh wow jernikov's just gone for it dara that's incredible he's just saying i don't think you have the king <laughs> That's very dark tunnelly, I must say. Yeah, that's shove and hope, I think, that play is called. <laughs> <laughs> Big smile there from... Wow, if he got called there, he was, he was in bad shape. I mean, he had back doors, but... Yeah, that was... Uh, straight out of the gate, we have a huge move. Statement of intent from Chernikov. 
we talk about ICM catastrophes, yeah. that hand will fade into the, will fade away from the memory as time goes on, and nobody will really consider it hugely significant. But that was actually a pretty wild moment that, that was, could have been an ICM catastrophe. That was a wild moment, yeah. I mean, Panka, <laughs> there's nothing to stop Panka from having aces or kings there. Um, or ace king is a very obvious hand as well. Um, but Chernikov just decided, no, I'm going to go for it. He, I'm going to put him on ace queen specifically. <laughs> um, and it's very hard to play against players like uh, Chernikov, who really, you know, they don't care about ICM. They're, he's playing exactly the same way as he did at the start of the tournament. Um, and you have to adjust against players like that as well. I'm dwelling on the parallel universe where indeed it was ace king or aces for Panka, and we are talking about one of the worst played hands we've seen in a while causing a very, very needless ICM catastrophe. Yeah, yeah, you often get a lot of results based thinking around hands like this. You know, there might be some people w at home thinking, wow, that was a great move, he, he, he took the pot down. And as you said, conversely, if Panka had kings, and he did that, everybody would say, oh my God, what was that? That was absolutely terrible. But from Chernikov's seat, it's exactly the same situation. He has no idea whether Panka has kings or ace-queen. Well, what it lacked in subtlety, it did make up for in bravery. Indeed. And sometimes fortune does favor the brave. As we see Chernikov back in the saddle to defend with the queen ten of diamonds here. Deg Tiriavos. <coughs> Opened up the king queen, so he's dominated. And wow, it's Chernikov's world right now, Dara. Yeah. This looks like a reasonably decent board for the Lithuanian as well, with his two overs and gut shot. Backdoor flush draw. He might take a stab here and he might get a uh, check raised as well. Let's see what. Chernikov does on this occasion. He's so nutted now, Dara, and you did isolate for me the one hand, I wasn't in the box, you were here with Ali, yeah. that when he was nutted previously, he did actually get a bit trappy. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, I, I would be very suspicious when, uh, now I that he's taken this line. I guess in this instance, a very different sort of board, a wet board, one that he feels maybe has connected. Maybe also feeling emboldened because his opponent has bet in to him on this wet board. Yeah. Maybe he must have something. Yeah, and the other players must be wondering, uh, like, what has Chernikov taken at the break? <laughs> he's, just, he's just come out farting. Yeah, he, and he does actually show the hand. So, uh, control. <laughs> Panka might feel a bit better about his fold now, yeah, thinking that the <laughs> the previous hand was more knotted than it was. Yeah, you I think he's uh, uh, taking his Weedabix the there. So, yeah, he's know. taking his Weedabix. Yeah. <laughs> you know you can get out ICM now. <laughs> <laughs> Melchizedian, one of our mid-pack. Looks like he's going to open things up in early position here with the red sevens. Definitely bottom of the range open here. Very reasonable to fold hands like threes, fours, fives, Dara, in this situation when you're dealing with a high ICM environment and you are also dealing with some big stacks behind. These early position opens with the smaller pairs don't always function particularly well. Sevens feels very cuspy. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure from early position it's a fold. Doroshkov. Well, he's happy to flat the ace jack suited here off roughly 20 big blinds. And Barsegian. Potentially plotting larceny here. Yeah, you might see this is a squeeze spot. This is not a hand you want to call. Uh, you're going to be dominated too much, but you could potentially. But 
turn it into a light three bet. But you're betting using you, you're better off using something like Ace Four suited, Ace Five suited, so you have a uh, more playability when called. Well, we found a hand that Chernikov doesn't want to play, but Orthodox who will take interest in these suited connectors. He has both players covered. They are playing an effective stack of 20 bigs against one another. He and Melchisedi in the original Razor playing a slightly deeper brand of poker here. Oh, what a flop for the 10-9 suitors. Open-ended and flush draw. Wow, and Doroshkov does have a little piece here. Melchisedi, and it's hard to fire a continuation bet here against two players, isn't it, Dara? Yeah. Uh, particularly in this board, it's very hard. It's almost impossible for both players to have missed. And therein lies the weakness of the sevens open, in a way. Yeah, you're just not going to get enough board, so your hand is actually going to under-realise both slop as well. Well said, Doroshkov. Could go either way here, obviously. Taking the betting lead in position, never a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. I like this. I think this is better than just checking behind. Check behind, there's just too many ways your hand can be outdrawn if you're behind. By taking the betting lead, you might also buy yourself a check on the turn. Does Orthodox who ever consider a drop the hammer shove in this spot against these two guys, Dara, or do you go a little bit more subtly? He's got the kind of hand that's always going to be good on this street for around 50%, would and he could just pick up everything yeah, that's out it there. It would be a very big shove, though. I mean, what would you balance with? Um... <laughs> he's gone for a smaller raise and that puts Doroshkov in a tricky spot now he's getting an amazing price but yeah no really good discipline there from Doroshkov um, this boy definitely knows what he's doing I like the bet I like the fold Never easy. yeah very well played by everyone Never there easy. Of question from Dark Games in the chat who's been the most entertaining on this final table Chernikov I was about to say Chernikov yeah. he's just a, he's a big wrecking ball of a man Never. Big fan of the fashion as well, Dara. A uh, professorial cardigan. Yeah, you're giving the cardigan a lot of love, David. Are, are, are you reaching that stage of your life now where you're starting to look at cardigans? I, I reached that stage a long time ago. I have an yeah. extensive cardigan wardrobe. Yeah. Have you never borne witness to my cardigan game? Maybe you always see me in warmer climates. That might be the issue. Might be the issue, yeah. Too long out of Ireland. Yeah. <coughs> the more perceptive of you out there. We'll notice an all-Irish crew in the box right now. Are you Irish really, though? Oh, I knew this was really? coming. I knew this was coming. Irish and... Quasi-Irish slash I'm West Brit. How about I'm Irish? You're going to have to explain that joke to me. Like Irish. Oh, Irish-ish. That was actually a, a very advanced George Santos reference for any of the more politically engaged. Yeah, yeah. you've just lost 99% of our audience. Yeah, I may have lost them all, actually. Yeah. I've lost the box. I'm going to bring this back I've lost the YouTube audience. Barsegian has opened up the... Oh, look at this open. Wow, this is so loose. Yeah, Barsegian getting think. after it here. And yeah, he's going he's gonna to call here, getting obviously a great price. Deg Tiriavos, just 10 bigs behind now, looking to flop some equity. Well, he's, mm, he's flopped, flopped exactly that, Dara. Two yeah. overs and a gooder. This feels like a possible check raise all in spot. Yeah, backdoor diamonds as well do add a few percent, don't they? Yeah. Barsegian likely to fire here. He does have the 789 working in some fashion. Yeah, as I think Dick Tiravas is the shortest stack now as well, so his ICM is not as extreme as the others. This is a tricky flop. <coughs> He's going to fire at the bed anyway. And there's enough out there now for Deg Tiriavos to feel like the risk reward is about right. Yeah. He's also going to go probably with a, an eight or a nine in this situation. He's going to go with diamond draw. Yeah, he has And this is sort of in. the weakest yeah. one. He'll go with the gooder and overs. Yeah. Quick fold. 
Nicely um, executed by Dick Tiravos. Yeah. Yeah, what, it wasn't a fan of that open there, and I don't think the C-bet was great either on that board. Very hard to miss that board. Indeed. Well, we watched there at the very beginning Thank you. veteran broadcaster Ali Najad read out the intros for all of these players, Dara. You mentioned off the mic to me how that brought you back to a, a special moment. How oh, what? Which one was... Did indeed, yeah, the sight of, well, first of all, let's do the chip counts. Alexander is uh, top of the pile now after that big move. Barsegian has moved back a little bit. Um, no real movement from Justice. Panka took a hit in that early pot. He um, sure did. And he's now down towards the shorter stacks. But yeah, seeing Ali uh, talking to Mike there, I was getting flashbacks to him uh, opening an envelope a few years ago um, at the GPI Awards and saying the, the magical words and the winner is the chip race. Um, much to my surprise, uh, and you were so surprised you were actually asleep at the time. Indeed. A moment that, in a very substantial way, kick started the chip race engines as we look down at two of our more experienced players. Potentially willing to do battle here. Helt with the King Jack suited. Love that open from early. Barsegian. Barsegian can put a lot of pressure on Helt. Helt is mid-pack. Barsegian is one of the two leading stacks. So um, he calls in position. And Jack Sinclair once described the call in position of the big stack when the medium stack opens as the big stack's secret weapon. Um, it's uh, Often people think that the way you put pressure on is, is purely by three betting, but this is a bad spot now for Halt out of position to a guy who covers him by a lot. On a board like this, against somebody he covers, he could very easily fire out a C bet, take the pot down, but... He has to proceed much more cautiously against Barsegian. Yeah, Barsegian. Attempting to that's why be a nuisance to health. Yeah, that's why he's checked. Now, it's this is basically this like three baseball cards flop. It doesn't interact with either range. So whoever was ahead pre-flop is probably still ahead. But Bar So Barsegian might think... He can't, he can't necessarily bet here because he does have the weaker range. Yeah, that's why he's checked behind. He still has the weaker range. He can possibly represent something that comes later. Um. Well, you mentioned what might come later. The five of diamonds brings him a flush draw, gives him every reason to fire a delayed C bet. Should this go, check again. Well, it wouldn't actually be a C bet because he's not the razor, but he could certainly fire now. This is no longer uh, a completely blank board. He can have pocket fours. He, he can have the sets as well. He can have probably have pocket fives, which a player as ICM aware as hell wouldn't be opening from early position. And now it does make sense to bet. And, and what can Hell do here? He just sort of not the right texture for him. Yeah. Frustrating, irksome, pesky from Barsegian. Yeah, and this is the power of the flat preflop. Uh, you just get to do this so much. His hand, well, his hand really can't improve to anything he's going to feel great about. So. You mentioned a secret weapon. And he does have to let it go. And this is a great way to sh that the big stack can exert pressure. You don't have to be tree, tree batting and going crazy post flop. That was a nothing pot. He just called pre-flop. He didn't even bet the flop. He bet fairly small on the turn, but there was absolutely nothing uh, Hell could do against it. He just had to wait for a better spot. But uh, good discipline from Hell too. He didn't. Uh, he didn't get stubborn there. Didn't waste spots. Waste chips in a dark tunnel spot.
Well, we opened with a bang, a big showdown, Ace King, Ace King versus Queens. It's been a little more tippy tappy, a little bit more consistent with early final table play since. And as David mentioned earlier, the stream is going out on different places on YouTube, but the one we're keeping an eye on is the official stream. That's where uh, we'll be interacting with chat. We've already got over 700 in there. Wow. Um, so if you have any questions or comments uh, for us, just fire them in into that chat. We will keep an eye on it. So health defending. Has it, was this a limp pot, David? Yeah, looks like a limp pot given the size. Yeah, we're blind versus blind here. Mm. Um, health in position with top very pair good. and the only diamond. Yeah, very good flop for him. He'll far out a bet here. He almost certainly has the best hand and he has a draw as well. No reason for Mer Milk City to continue with his absolutely nothing. We mentioned there the GPI Awards, Dara. One of those GPI Awards every year is for best final table performance. Doesn't necessarily go to the man who wins the main event, often does, but it is also often the case that you do see in many other tournaments around the globe final table performances worthy of mention. Yeah. I wonder if we're going to see one tonight. Yeah. Let's see. Well, Barsegian likes these suited broadways for a flat versus an opener. Mm. You could be pretty sure then he likes opening them himself. Yeah. Yeah, he's moved up again after that pot versus Helt. Oh, Ooh, yeah, and lurking is, behind yeah. with the Django's Degtiriavos. 14 big blinds. This There's only really one move here. Yeah, every reason to believe that this plus two range opening up will contain plenty of calls to a shove of his stack size. Mm -hmm. Looking to get to showdown against a smaller pair is obviously the dream. It's not even a terrible result if you just get the folds because you add one third to your stack with no risk. He tosses in one of those Hollywood-esque Time banks, just trying to convey a little bit of uncertainty to his opponents. Trying to sell the story of, I've got pocket nines and I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, we have seen this. Uh, 1.4. Oh, wow, he's, got, he's found a non-all in size here. I mean, this is more than one third of his stack, so it's just impossible to imagine this is ever a bluff. Yeah, I wonder about this. I think I'd prefer the shove. This just looks even stronger, in my opinion. does look very strong. Very hard to balance arrays of this nature. Obviously, uh, this feels more in the exploitative yeah, I, maybe it may, way. May, maybe this is just to allow the, his opponent the opportunity to flat. Um, maybe there's some exploitation there if you think an opponent might be seduced by the really good price he's getting now and flat with a hand like Queen Jack suited, but in the end it makes no difference. Barsegian was folding to the shove, he folded it to this bet as well. Yeah, and even if Barsegian had a stronger hand there, I do feel as though he's not the type of customer to be seduced in that manner. I think no. he's a very solid competitor who will right. probably read it for what it was, and it was strength. Yeah. Oh. 
A warm welcome to anyone joining us late. This is the Western Poker Series, sponsored by Merit. This is an over $2 million prize pool, 757 players, boiled down to these nine. And we have an inadvertent limp here. Oh. He didn't raise enough and he didn't say the word raise, so it's been ruled as a call. And that can sometimes lead to a car crash down the road. Well, Melchizedian, yeah. he had kings. Oh no, it wasn't him, I apologize. Melchizedian didn't have the kings, but he has the tens this time. So he has the tens against the range that wanted to open onto the gun, <laughs> yeah, I know, but right? ended it's up tricky limping. Now. now, Matta has less than 20 big blinds, so Melchizedian probably happy enough to commit against that stack size. A weird spot because if he had raised, he could just call in position. It's super weird. Um, but the problem is, if he calls in position now, that could that could set off a uh, a chain of calls behind both a small blind and a big blind likely to be in the hand as well. Does it make sense now just to sort of maybe define your hand a little bit, go for a, a small ish raise, and then if your opponent comes over the top, maybe actually find a fold sometimes, given that it's almost like it would be his range of. Hands yeah. that know that he's he's raising over a guy who wanted to raise, if no, you like. He's found another way. He's just moved all in. Okay. Uh, which, that basically takes all the decisions out of it. Um, so Matt has saved some chips here, because it could have gone this way anyway. Yeah. As you said, Dara, it can often lead to a bit of a car crash. Maybe in this instance, he's managed to, I don't know, take his car over to the grassy verge. Yeah. I'm not sure his car was ever on the road, actually. <laughs> I think he might have just started it in his driveway, but didn't get out of the driveway. As Very interesting. Huh? That, th that was a genuinely tricky spot for him, because if he just opened normally, the flat would be perfectly standard, and then you're not worried about the players behind coming in. But he couldn't fl just flat there and set off a chain of calls behind... Um, and then he thought about the raise, and he probably thought, well, if he shoves on me, that's a gross spot as well. So in the end, he decided to take that option away from Makassadian by just shoving himself. Or from Matarod of the opener. I haven't seen much of this man, I have to say, on my commentary um, stints, but young Lithuanian guy, you're just going to assume he's a crusher anyway. Certainly the most recognisable face on this final table, Dominic Panka. Yeah. He's going to... That's if you can recognise a face that's always covered in sunglasses. <laughs> well, he V-pips for the first time on this final table. Gets one through. Well, no, he uh, played the uh, ice queen hand earlier. Oh, he did. He squeezed. Yeah. He squeezed the ice queen. Apologies to... Yeah, that was a big No setback. opens yet. Just no opens yet. Only three His events. first RFI. <laughs> <laughs> something, something with uh, question from JB Well being in the chat. Would you say watching this and your analysis is as good as most forms of study for an average player? Citing from reading your books, of course. It'd be incredibly vain if I said that, but I am a very vain person. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. I'm not going to make that claim. <coughs> Darrow Kearney's books available to be purchased on Amazon. You can buy all four. I think you get a discount. There's a Yeah, the Poker Sol series it's called on Amazon now. And a question from Patrick Winterbottom. Um, I don't think I've heard Pocket Kings refer to as Django's before the stream. Where does it come from? David, you coined the term, so I'm going to toss it over to you. Well, basically, the 
Western movies of the, I don't know, 1960s, 70s, 80s, um, there was kind of a tendency to always have a character in them called Django, and he was a cowboy. And then, of course, in the more recent years, I guess people remember the movie Django Unchained, where Quentin Tarantino depicted a cowboy played by Jamie Foxx, yeah. who was called Django, of course, as well. Sort of a modern day take on the Western, I guess. It's obviously still set in that era, but a, a kind of a modern rendering. And uh, yeah, I guess the kings have often been dubbed the cowboys, so yeah. call them the Django's. It's quite a long walk to that uh, one, but but yeah, now that it's been I, I was asked to take the stroll, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, but, was, but you took that stroll initially when you came up with the name. Uh, Angelo Roach says Panka looks like a young Tom Cruise. Well, we have to get a closer look. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that one. I, I do like a look at likey game, but I'm not sure I'm going to agree with that one. And of course, there we have. Because uh, a young Tom Cruise looks like an old Tom Cruise. Let's be honest. He hasn't. Yeah, really, particularly, his face with hasn't sun, particularly with sunglasses. Yeah, I do feel like, is it is it a maverick? Is that what we're trying to yeah. summon? Yeah, I guess. I'm not sure I agree, but I, I do welcome any attempts to play the look-alike game with any of our players. Obviously, we've already dubbed Helt Teddy KGB, yeah. like a young Malkovich. So this is Teddy KGB against the Russian bear. Nothing flop for Chernikov. Helt It's going to range bet here. Probably going to use a small sizing. Yeah, sizing right down to just 20%. Yeah, Chernikov doesn't like falling to small bets. He has absolutely nothing here, but... This would be above the rim <laughs> to fight back in this spot. Yeah, no, he, <laughs> he shrugs. He's like, well, I've got nothing, so... Um, yeah, good execution of health there. Sometimes players get a little bit too scared against players like <laughs> Chernikov and they diverge too much from their normal game and they check too much in those spots. You have to keep firing away. It was tournament, bomb pot. Yeah. It was really funny. Um, Alex O'Brien says Chernikov looks like Paul Giamatti's older brother. A friend of mine chopped it, I think. <laughs> if you could see David's face now, Alex, <laughs> it's in convulsions. He's. I'm trying to. I'm trying to make that leap. Convulsed confusion, I think. Is his, his older brother is younger. Older brother. Pretty sure he's younger than Paul Giamatti. <laughs> Considerably, <laughs> Paul Giamatti's about sixty now. <laughs> Maybe Alex personally knows Paul Giamatti's older brother. Who would play you in the movie, Dara? Um, we, we used to say Tom Hanks. People always say Tom Hanks. Yeah. Mm. Um, Aiden, I used to get Aiden Quinn sometimes as well. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously you're Will, you're played by Will Wheaton <laughs> in the in the two scenes in my movie that you get. Ah, uh, wow! Which two scenes? <laughs> <laughs> is one of them? Is one of them the scene of your demise? <laughs> you turn up at my funeral. One is me putting the pillow over your head, and the other one is yeah. the funeral. Turned out Lappin was the bad guy all along. Plenty of people saw it coming. Yeah. It won't, oh it yeah. won't be a twist in the tail. Oh, it won't be a <laughs> twist in the tail. I've been warned about it many times. <laughs> As we look down here, Deg Tiavos, Ace King, offsuit this time under the gun. Mata coming with the call from the cutoff. We've seen these suited broadways coming in for the call i don't really like this one to be honest off his particular stack he's playing less than 15 bigs seems yeah. a little bit wonky yeah. mata has a very very flatty style even when he gets short stacked and i think uh okay does anybody have anything here apart from the ace not really no mata's obviously got the 910 jack of spades but slim pickings Dara. yeah very slim pickings yeah, the Lithuanian will fire out a C bet here, and that should get the job done. Mm -hmm. are really inviting trouble with this Jack Ten suited flat. I feel off this stack. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're joined by another writer in the chat, um, Barry Carter, 
of Men's Game of Poker fame. He said, I once shared a taxi with Dominic Paca and congratulated him on his PCA win. He smiled but didn't, even, didn't seem to understand English very well. Anyway, it turns out it wasn't actually Dominic Panka. <laughs> <laughs> Just some random guy. Cool story, bro. Yep. And I even have some implies. If you have a nine, you don't you don't re raise flop right. You just four. Yeah. If I get my eight, I get stacks then. I'm gonna go with uh, Melka Sadian being played by uh, young Irish actor Barry Keoghan. That's my next one. I'm throwing it out there. Oscar-nominated yeah. actor, Barry okay. Keoghan. No comment. He could play Doroshkov too, actually. Very versatile actor. He could play either of them. Oh, either oh, oh. Doroshkov is far too good looking to be played by Barry, I think. I mean, you were you were dueling over Jamie Nixon earlier uh, in the week, but Doroshkov looks like an actual model. To each their own, Dara. <laughs> You'd like the more rugged northern lads. Mata all in here with the much clearer Ace King suited. Gets the job done. Gets back those chips from the Ace, the Ten Jack hand. Nice question. Uh, uh, comment here from Speedy in the chat. Panky is 30 plus, but still probably has to show ID when buying alcohol. So true. Boy yeah. has not aged. Yeah. He looks exactly the same as the first time I saw him. He might look younger, in fact. Yeah. He, he might, maybe he sleeps in an oxygen chamber or something. Maybe there is a uh, grizzled portrait of him in an attic somewhere. Yeah. Oh, Chernikov, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe has. Oh, I can see that. Got a little bigger. I can definitely see that, yeah. At the risk of being offensive. He has got a little chunkier in the last few years and actually ha does sort of resemble the shape of a Chernikov. Yeah, yeah I definitely see that. Very good. Very good. Like that one a lot. Barsagian suited connector in the hijack. Going to try and take down these blinds and antis. Melka Sadian's going to offer some form of resistance here once the specs. Might even consider a shove all in here with just over 20 bigs. Dara, this is pretty close. I don't ever see a fold, but do we see a call or do we see a shove? That's the question. Melka Sadian's style is quite big, big ball poker. I wouldn't be surprised to see the shove. Yeah, yeah you can really go either way with this. It's um, it's super close. Does complete. Yeah, it's one of those hands that if you shove and you get snapped, you know you're toast. So after when you've handled that, you do want to call. Now Barsegui may find a way to win this. Yeah, battle of the gutters. One of the issues with calling more in these ICM situations is you have to give up more post-flop. Um, you could definitely check call this without ICM, but it gets a bit dicey with ICM. Yeah, Barsagian's definitely got a good candidate to take a stab here. Yeah, very impressed by Barsagian too, I have to say. He just seems very to, good. Very to, good. Yeah, to read situations and boards very well. Bet is just 425k here, a 25 percenter. Tempting, but not tempting enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem with flatting the hand like AS10. It just under-realizes post-flop with the ICM. Mm -hmm. But as I said, the problem with shoving it is if the guy snaps, you, you're just in very bad shape. 
I think the main message of ICM is that it sucks to be a, mid a, a medium stack when you're playing against big stacks. I'm going to throw a little spanner in the works here, Dara. Yeah. Emphasis is always on ICM in these situations, as it should be. It is a huge consideration. There's an even more modern theory around ICM, though, is that maybe it's not the perfect model to contrive these situations from, that actually there is a concept called future game equity, which is obviously that if you are to take the spot and then you're the one who can take advantage of maybe some ICM implications by doing so and, and create a more advantageous situation for yourself, you could find more reason to maybe shave a little bit off the ICM. Yeah, I mean, ICM is obviously not a perfect model. It's it's, uh, but then neither is neither is future game equity because you can't actually completely accurately assess it. To be honest, it makes very very little difference. There's a third model as well. I can't remember the name of, but uh, there. When you actually run sims with the different models, the produce range is very very similar to each other. So I think a lot of people, they kind of say future game equity and it's just their way of saying I don't want to think about ICM, I want to play for the win and I'm going to go for it and they use it in a, in a way that's not really meant to. What, what it does is it shaves stuff around the edges for sure um, but usually as the first player to get your chips in rather than uh, calling off. Um, question from QD2 o opinion on the miss bit at King's WSOPC yeah we were actually asked about this uh, for a piece in Vegas Slots Online and we both gave examples in the past of similar things we had witnessed I mean these things do happen uh, and it was kind of strange that nobody spotted it at the table but you know it does happen I've been at tables where that's happened uh, I was at a table in Irish Open one year where I wasn't really paying attention to the hand because I wasn't involved and I was looking at my phone, and when I looked up at the end and saw one player walking away and I looked at the board, I realized it was actually a chop, and I said it to the dealer, but nobody else at the table had noticed, and the dealer hadn't noticed, and none of the, neither of the two players involved had noticed. So um, these things will happen from time to time. They usually don't happen on a live stream, though, on a final table. Yeah, it was a, an unusual situation. Obviously, the way the board ran out lent itself to momentary confusion, but we've all been there in spots where <laughs> people had to take a second glance to realize <coughs> pots were chopped or what have you. Very strange to see it happen in such a significant situation, obviously with pay jumps about and the guy sort of lingering around as he fist bumped everyone on the way out. <laughs> Nobody took a second glance, very yeah. unlucky. Yeah, for sure. I would say for players going forward, like just just make sure it's not a chop pot uh, anytime you're being eliminated from a tournament. Um, there's some responsibility on the players as well, uh, since it's your equity. Um, and uh, Barry Carter has already been uh, popped up in the chat a few times, claiming that pots were chopped, which they when they weren't. So you could always just throw it out as a sort of a chop pot and see what anybody's if, if people go for it. <laughs> Ooh, tricky spot here for the young Lithuanian King 9 suited yeah this is ICM fold he's just a little bit too early now Hell's on the button with pocket 5's he's definitely playing this hand but he's staring at the two stacks behind just to make sure he makes the right play here if they were both relatively short he might shove this hand his sizing might depend on their exact stack sizes as well. So the uh, the internal computer of health all is, in. he's moved all in, yeah, so I guess it's too short. Yeah, it's Panka who's very short now and uh, the other Pushing Russian who's also short. So that was the Pushing only move piece. there. This hand doesn't want to see a flop. And he says his nice hand didn't pressure. want to see a flop, and he's exactly right with that. When you have pocket fives, you're going to be looking at three over cards, and if your opponent shows interest, you're going to have to yeah. assess whether he actually has one of those cards or not. Uh, 
Alex O'Brien is being um, pretty persistent here. She's now sending me photographs <laughs> of Paul Giamatti making expressions <laughs> and matching them up with pictures of Chernikov making the same expression. She, she really wants to make her case here. Okay. Yep. Maybe if um, Giamatti and Russell Crowe had a love child together. Kind of that's a that's wonderful thought. <laughs> Moving swiftly along. Panka now one of the shorter stacks. He is playing 14 big blinds only. Looks like he is getting a, a count on the stacks behind before he looks at his cards. Just so. Or maybe not. Maybe he did take a peek already. He must have and uh, does release the 10-9. I would have been surprised to see him get involved with the 10-9. They're going to be staying. <laughs> yeah. Now, seven big blinds, small blinds. These, these are all going in, I'm imagining. Absolutely, Doroshkov. Happy to find a spot. And uh, looks like he will <coughs> take a few yeah. seconds extra, but all in. Yeah, he does move all in. He used almost the 30 seconds there, and Mata won't be calling with the 5 3. And good news for Doroshkov, adds almost a third to his stack. Yeah, up to 2.9 million now, back <coughs> to 10 bigs. More fold equity on his next shove. Yeah, we're talking, uh, he said to the Russian about Panka. No, the two Russians on the table are Doroshkov and uh, the man in center there, Chernikov. Panka is obviously Polish. Average stack getting rather short now, Dara, as we fail to bust anybody. Yeah. Approaching now the end of this level. Nine left. Average stack somewhere around the 8 million mark. 25, 26 bigs. Next blind jump goes up to 400k. It's going to bring average stack below 20 bigs. Yeah. We have a situation brewing here. Orthodoxo has opened this 9 suited under the gun this morning, ninth. Which obviously a fine open and look at this the Lithuania has gone for the sneaky tr sneaky call wow he's trying to induce a squeeze behind here under representing his hand health has a hand you could sometimes squeeze king four suited is the kind of rubbish hand that you would sometimes <laughs> see being squeezed but more usually on the button um and barsegian will probably be tempted in now at the A6. Well, good news for Degtiarabos is that there is another ace out there, making the likelihood of an ace coming on this board a little less likely. That will obviously be the major scare card in his mind, um, having taken this rather deceptive line. Did oh, is Barsegian plotting, Dara? Mm, I think he's very suspicious about the flat um, I mean he can obviously put ICM pressure on but he's go going up against two strong ranges here this might even be just him deciding whether it's a good idea to, to even call or not uh, hand like a 6 offsuit is actually a much worse call 3 way than heads up even getting a significant discount yeah, and he has folded. That's what he was considering there. He was considering between the call and the fold, I think. And eventually decided, you know what, I'm just going to stay out of trouble here. A6 is a hand with very little upside. Yeah, very hard to realize those baby aces out of the big blind multi-way. And, ooh, could be trouble here for Orthodoxu. He's flopped second pair top kicker. Backdoor diamonds to go with. Certainly could fire out a bet here, get himself into some trouble. Yeah, now the question is, does Dektiarovas bring down the hammer and try and get a 9 or a 10 in, 
or does he just call and let him keep the betting lead? Well, the first relevant aspect of this flat was Degtiaravos hoping there would be a squeezer behind who would go lighter yeah. than he. The second part is having a very underrepresented hand down the streets now, Dara, and Orthodox, who obviously the seeing the 10 come off on the turn, yeah. the likelihood of a 10 in Degtiaravos' hand, both coming from plus two and combinatorically less likely now. Um, he's deciding he has to try and extract some more value from draws and maybe hands like six, sevens, eights. Yeah. Dave Tiaravos, very happy to just flat it once again. King of Diamonds. Can't be too worried about that. It's not like Ace King is going to fire off twice on this board. Jack um, Queen, I suppose, the one pesky hand he may have been considering. Yeah, yeah which he have very heavily blocks. Yeah. No, no, I mean um, from Orthodox oh, point for of view Orthodox in terms too. of getting value. Yeah. Um, trappy, trappy. Mm -hmm. Nice pick up for Dekiravos. He navigated skillfully there post flop. Um. If you if you do want to ask us a question in the chat, it's probably better if you speak to if you stick to English. I, th I think people are asking us questions in Polish now. Neither of us are Polish speakers. They, ju they, they might just be abusing us in Polish. <laughs> this is true as well. Maybe they don't want they don't want us to know what they're saying. I'm getting out Google Translate. <laughs> Battle of the Blinds, chip leader Barsegian. Okay, sorry, Anna, it's not Polish, it's Croatian. Um, if you're going to squeeze with a good hand, you should have some bad hands as well to squeeze. And, it, and they should be such bad hands that they're not hands you'd want to flat, but something which if you do get called, you have a chance of flopping something. So players do tend to use hands like king four suited, king six suited sometimes um, as squeeze hands. Wow. The two big stacks, happy to just mm -hmm. check it down for their showdown. Um, obviously, tricky spot for Barsegi in there. He is the chip leader, but he does have the dangerous, maybe the most dangerous player at the table behind him. Yeah. But if he wins, he just doesn't like that. You know what he had on the squeeze spot? So we're up to over 800 on the live chat now, David. Okay, I don't know. Uh, you don't know yet. Okay, Polish. We have some Polish as well. At the next break, I'm going to run off and learn how to speak Croatian and Polish. The dangerous health. Ooh, look at this, yeah. Ace King suited. 33 bigs. He looks so composed and studied. Ooh, Chernikov with a ah, six flat here, 6-4 six nice suited play. in the small. <laughs> okay. Orthodox who now coming along for the ride with 9-3 suited, so... Three hands, all of nice which have tennis. reasonable equity. At least Ace King, nice. obviously yeah. ahead. Yeah. Everyone's got a suit. Everyone's live. That's a really good flop for the Ace King and Orthodox, who's hit a pair. <coughs> Interesting to see the sizing here from Helt. I expect a very small sizing. Indeed it is, Dara, 20%. Yeah. And an instant fold from Orthodox, who completely disinterested yeah. with his middle pin bad kicker there. Oh, yeah, it's just a, ter just a terrible hand. Mm. 
as we take a bird's eye view over the table. I don't know if this is uh, actually true or not, but I'm going to read it out anyway. Fun fact, Panka won Mr. Beauty in 2019. Is that an award for most attractive horse? Doesn't sound like a Mis human being award. Mr. Beauty. Mr. Beauty, does that sound like a, a Maybe real? it's a Polish thing. I'm going to Google to see if it even exists. Don't get me wrong, he's a dashing man, but Mr. Beauty, it just doesn't sit well. Not sure that's a real thing. Maybe. There is a Mr. Beauty pageant. Wow. Yeah. Mr. International. International Male Beauty Pageant. That has been run since 2006. You learn something new every day. This so commentary pairing will not. We will not feature in future editions of Mr. Beauty. <laughs> or past editions mm. for that matter. I was going to say we will not objectify the players at the table. <laughs> <laughs> he was the Mr. Beauty of Poland, apparently. <laughs> this is amazing if, if it's true. You have to enter a competition like that, do you? Perhaps. <laughs> Maybe you can nominate people. I'll nominate you next year, David, before you ask. I'll hit the gym now, Mr. so. Mr. Beauty Malta. <sighs> Merit Poker putting on quite a show this week. It must be said the warm-up event smashed its guarantee. This main event also obliterated its guarantee. We've got one more big event on the calendar. The High Roller final table will be on Friday, so please do tune into that one. For now, though, we are keen to crown a champion of this main event. Danger Man Helt. It's going to open up here from under the gun. And action all the way round to Lunkasedian, who lets go of the King 7 suited. Obviously, fearing the under the gun range, one mm. thinks there, it does feel like the kind of hand he could defend with, certainly would defend with against middle position. Yeah. Discouraged, though. Possibly also fearing the, the actual player there, Helt, who, apart from looking at Teddy K KGB, is definitely one of the class acts at this table, technically. Online beast. <laughs> okay, now we're being asked to say things in Polish. This this feels like a slippery slope. It's a trap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Persegian with a tempter here, plus three. He is going to come in. Going to try and wield this big stack, but he's running into it Ooh. here. I wonder if Degtier Avos might has another flat in his range. Might flat the aces, yeah, he might do. They've seen the queens. That went to showdown. Yeah, maybe, maybe he's regretting now that they've seen the queens. He does have a stack now which lends itself to more flats. Yeah, he, he also did a small... Um, three bet against the same player, if you remember. He might do the same thing again, and he m might cause his opponent to think. Yeah, it's the exact same sizing as well he used. So, Barsegian might think, okay, that's the second time he's done that now. But Barsegian only has 10 8 suited. <coughs> yeah, getting a very good price here, but. Uh, difficult to navigate holding 10-8 suited out of position to a three better. Yeah. He is giving it some thought, though. We might be about to use some time banks if we have any left. We do, actually. I see the, a pile yeah. of time banks behind He's the chips He has there. already used one or two. 
Yeah, he's going to go for the call, and to be honest, that is probably the standard play with this hand. Um, you're not going to feel great if you only flop a pair, but you can. There are lots of ways to win with this hand. Now. Oh, danger. Now, yeah, he's definitely putting more tips into the pot. I expect him to play this slowly. He doesn't think his ten is, by any means, a slam dunk best hand. Um, from the point of view of the aces, this looks like an incredibly safe board. 10-3-2 is about as good as it gets. Yeah, I anticipate a bet no more than a million here from Dick Giavos. I think he might even go smaller uh, in the three bet pot. You're right, Darry. He goes yeah. ultra small. Yeah, 20%. Great seen. read. It's, it's fine in this pot. Yeah, these are very good technical size <laughs> he uses here. Now, obviously, the 10 was continuing against any size any reasonable size at least but now oof. well overkill now yeah the unlikely 4-5 gets there Dick Giavos top set maybe doesn't like that card in terms of his chances of getting paid here it's, it's much harder to get paid now against the single pair of hands and a lot of his bluffs have got there as well there might be temptation here to just check and make his hand look like a weak ace that he's bet that he's taking a straight out with, or he could bet really small. One million. One million. Yeah, he's gone for another small bet, tiny bet, one million uh, relative to the pot. Yeah, he has the ace of hearts in his own hand, blocking the possible flush draw, which would be the hand that has decent equity. Yeah. He's much more likely in a very far ahead situation now, yeah, as opposed to a closer spot. Yeah, I think that ends the hand now. I don't see Barsegian. He's giving it some thought, though. Yeah. Hard to see what he's beating anymore. I think the sizing just... The sizing is so small. He might think he has the right price to, to draw to two pair. Which we know would not be good. I think you would have to put some bluffs in there, like King Queen, King Jack, maybe, to make this a call. Yeah, he makes the right decision in the end, even against the tiny sizing. Yeah, great fold from Barsegian, it must be said there. He navigated post slop very, very well. Found the fold on that second scare card. Roughly three laps of the track have been completed, Dara, in these nine players now. Yeah. Any dynamical observations? Uh, not really. I mean, obviously, the Lithuanian who just won that pot has had the best start. He started as the absolute shortest and... Well, sorry, he was the second shortest. Um, this man was the shortest. Uh, but he has spun it up really nicely been very impressed by some of these players already. Barsegian playing really well, um, Lithuanian, and obviously Helt is completely, um, he's like granite. Probably the most interesting thing actually is that Panka, Panka took a hit right out of the gate and he's been car dead since, so that has really uh, limited his options. and. You know, there's a, there's a kind of a lesson there too. Like sometimes when somebody like Panka makes an aggressive move at the start and it works out, and then he cruises to victory, people s think that, that that always works. But it's it's just a high variance style. Sometimes it doesn't work. And um, what's happened here is now Panka has had his hands tied essentially by that early uh, setback. Now we have a very interesting spot developing here. Indeed we do, Dara. Just to catch you guys up, plus one, Mata has opened under the gun one. Orthodoxu, very happy to commit against his stack as three bet from the Look hijack. Look at this fold, wow. With pocket tens and Helt certainly sensing that he was up against two very strong ranges here. Yeah, look at that fold, that's amazing. Uh, and I mean, it just shows you, when some, somebody like um, Helt, who's one of the best online pairs in the world, and people think that, that that means he's a maniac or aggressive style, or, or but a, but a lot of the time those players will make those types of folds because they don't want to get into a big flip, uh, where which removes all the skill element, and instead he will just sit back and wait for much better spots. Well, one suspects that Mata was 
happy to induce this hand prey slightly confused by his decision to take some time now jacks fourth best hand in poker yeah and certainly very believable that he is dominating some of the range flipping with a lot of us yeah and uh, he yes behind maybe a couple of hands but he's only got 14 big blinds he's got to go with this yeah Tara. he really has to go with this we see he's in incredibly good shape and in a brilliant spot to double up to almost 10 million. Yeah. But he hasn't committed those chips yet and he has committed two time cards. Seems to be very reticent about getting it in here. Of course, ICM, ninth place money, not what he's hoping for, but at the same time, pocket jacks. No, he's not going to actually fold. Ooh, he is Dara. Can is you believe incredible. that one? That's an wow. incredible pickup for Orthodoxu. He was dealt tens against Jax and Ace King and actually managed to win a decent sized pot there. You can't open Jax and fold to a three bet, I don't think. No, I think if you're gonna fold, then you probably have to just shove them yourself. Yeah. For that size of stack. Wow, I am a little bit conflummoxed here in the booth alongside Dara O'Carney. I think that one is a head scratcher for us. I think maybe the gravity of the moment getting the better of matter there. That was quite something. Yeah, and wow, oh, could his fortunes have changed so dramatically there, Derry? He gets that in, he's 82% to double up to 10 million. Yeah. He'd be one of the top three stacks right now. Yeah. Instead, one of the short stacks and basically gave a gift to Orthodoxu there. Mm. Little present, he wrapped it up. <laughs> nice bow. Take care Avo. Speaking of people at 10 million, I so impressed by this guy. Shown a few different gears as well. Willingness yeah. to trap, willingness to deceive his opponents. Panka, well, he's going to have to go with this, isn't he? King five yeah. qualifies. Yeah, and the small blind, 11 big blinds. This is a shove all day long and he's actually shoving into a shorter stack as well so jacks, that gives jacks him even more fold equity wow he's revealed jacks he had the jacks yeah and uh, <laughs> held an interested observer there in what hands both of those guys had in that spot obviously he yeah. made the read that it was not a spot to get your ace king in he was yeah. right by the way and he's keeping he's keeping his counsel he's not volunteering the fact that he folded ace king without too much drama or thought when I see after, I believe I don't believe. Really, Jack? <laughs> Orthodoxu claiming there's no way you had Jacks there. Well, we know he did. You're a short stack on the final table. Ah. Okay, yes, there are a couple of other short stacks about, but if those jacks, jacks you are a veritable gift from the poker gods. If you have jacks, you are better. You see, I'm <laughs> And in my experience, Dara, they don't take kindly to you throwing those gifts back in their face. <laughs> yeah. Pause there had me worried. You said oh if I, if I'm not mistaken, they don't think kindly to you. And then there was a long pause. <laughs> it sounded very ominous. So <laughs> held again, moving all in against the two short stacks. This is just standard short stack poker, folks. Nothing too exciting to see here. Yeah, and we are entering into a very short stacked phase of this tournament. As I mentioned there, next blind level, we jump up to 2400 actually puts the average stack at the table under 20 bigs. Yeah. Obviously the stacks are spread out a bit. It will put some people into the five big blind zone. Others oh, nice. will still be sitting relatively pretty with 35, 40 plus. But uh, we watched the warm up there, identical structure, and it did do a similar thing. It did com sort of get a bit strangled and compressed into that shorter stack zone. We talked about watching what was more reminiscent of a um, online Maybe final 30. table at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much, and that's the way it's been so far. Um, 
Patrick Winterbottom, who, ah. as I've mentioned before, is one of my students on the way to the wow. Bahamas for the PSPC, says, I suspect the Ace King 4 bet would have got two folds given what we just saw. <laughs> um, I well, think you're right, but uh, yeah. he obviously wants to know that they had jacks and tens. Yeah. Ooh, and he's got kings now. Orthodox, who, well, he got that little prezi a few minutes ago. He's got the Django's now. Ooh, and he has a potential customer here in it does. Melchizedian. Now, Dara, Melchizedian just 5 million. That's only 17 big blinds, but he's actually in front of three other players right now. Mm. Huge consideration for him Hu there, maybe. Huge ICM consideration now, yeah. Um, earlier on in the tournament, 17 big blinds against a fairly loose uh, on the early position open, you would be quite happy to go with your hand, but because of ICM now, that complicates matters considerably, and yeah, that's why he's folded there. I think that's a great fold, given the circumstance, I have to say. Yeah. It's only 80 Very good awareness. Yeah. And gets through. Are we going to have a show? Nope. Orthodox who cresting 10 million now. <laughs> no good TV table, no good. Marius Bacic has noticed that Panka has shoved in the small blind a few times now. He says at the end they will call Panka for 20 big blinds with 10 3 off. Sometimes I you do get those petulant calls. I don't think Doroshkov is oh one yes, to make yeah. it, but if he goes, who knows? I think you come to make business here, to make money. You wait, you wait, you wait. You are very tired. Tiaravis mm. likely to get embroiled once again. He has had quite the start to this. Yeah, final he has table. picked up more hands than anybody else, is fair to say, but he's played them all very well. Made the most of his card rush. Doroshkov, ha on the other hand, has had very little to play with. This one gets true. He picks up another 600k. Sorry, 750k. to play the final hand of this level Dara it has been an eventful one two three four not professional uh, <laughs> you are professional my friend no. oh. I'm playing spin and go if you know oh me I have the <coughs> shop Mel Cassedian <laughs> releasing the trees. We've seen him very ICM aware here, Dara. Obviously, yeah. short stack, but shorter ones about. Yeah. He's proceeding very cautiously. Held on the other hand, 12 million, First and time, sort of gets table. to play what? into all First these short time, stacks, put them yeah. in an ICM coffin. Like yeah. Is he going to go with this as time. an open? It's an interesting sort of hand category to consider it. Yeah, he might be perceived as very, very tight, but he has decided <laughs> to let it go. I mean, his whole game plan, it's, 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 it's already very clear. He's just going to try and gradually hoover up all the chips okay, without okay. anybody noticing until he has them all. Well, Doroshkov, short How stack here, yeah. king, Mine's seven suited. He's going to make his move. Seven big blinds is enough to go Two with. 50, 
Uh, Mark Sagan's no got a... Break. This is close. No, that Tricky was little one. Break. That, was, that was lunch break. What you're talking about? Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of chat Listen, off the table while <laughs> talk about the break coming up there, whether it's a lunch, a dinch, br dinner break or not. Thank you. I guess when you're in an all-inclusive resort, you would like uh, longer breaks. Chernikov's <laughs> going with this, Dara. Yeah, Chernikov is not a man who'll ever fall king queen for seven big blinds. No, and he and he very aware that he will dominate some of the range. Dara Ushkov obviously will go with queen jacks, queen ten no. suited, king jacks, yeah. that type of thing. Great call there from Chernikov. Unfortunate for Jaroshkov to be dominated uh, here. Battle of the Russians. The uh. <laughs> He's not even standing up. Look at this. The Russian bear is hungry. The Russian bear is standing up ready to do his victory flex if he wins. Jaroshkov sitting down, cool as a cucumber, composing himself for the next hand if he's still in the tournament. And that's a terrible flop for him. He's all but shuts the door he's on Jaroshkov now. He's going to have to hit now. a runner, runner straight now, or we will lose our first player. And that is it. We say goodbye to Jaroshkov in ninth place. Flash nuts. He cashes for Flash nuts. 37k. <laughs> Played superbly well, it must be said, Dara. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure why Chernikov needed to point out that he had the flush <laughs> not as he called as uh, as the man walked away. But uh, <laughs> a little, little bit of overkill. <laughs> yeah, maybe he could tell all his friends he busted the not flush and make it sound more unlucky. And there it is, ninth place for. Doroshkov, one of our baby-faced assassins. We have another baby-faced assassin in the mix, though, in Degtier Elvis. He has played superbly well. Got off to a completely different start yeah, to the final yeah, table so yeah, far. I think, I think he was the second shortest stack, and and now he's one of the bigger stacks. So he's he, he'll be very, very happy with his start. We have a real contrast of styles here. There are players like the Russian Bear that we just saw, uh, Chernikov, Mata also playing a very different style. That, that was quite a strange fool with the jacks. Um, probably push Orthodoxo into the same category. And then on the other side, we have the guys who are like, they're almost like computers. Uh, Dominic Panka, the Dominator, and uh, Justice Held. Um Yeah, so it's it's there's still that sort of battle between the two camps. Yeah, it is an interesting battle. You mentioned there Panka. Obviously, he is one of those supremely good uh, computer type modern players but at the same time he has been neutered somewhat by Chernikov and that Very much so, yeah. quite reckless to be honest wild play we saw at the beginning yeah I mean it, w it, it did work out for uh, for Chernikov on that occasion but had he run into Kings or even Ace King there we'd probably be talking about it, it as, as the punt of the tournament um, so we don't want to be too results based about it and you know we might see another moment like that still well, a fearless move by Chernikov in that spot. He is sitting very pretty. He's just eliminated our player in ninth place. We're taking a short break, but we will be back very, very soon. Don't go away. down to 13 so if it's red but it's mine my choice immediately being admonished by the way by his compatriots yeah it's interesting we got a bit of this yesterday too uh, the, the, the hand post mortems it seems like players are not uh, shy about expressing their opinion on other players play Not exactly the most endearing practice at the table. No, no, indeed not. I don't mind when recreational players do it. It's 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 part of the fun, but uh, it, sure. it it does annoy me when when professional uh, players start indulging in it, especially when they're on a bad end of an outcome. But certainly, yeah, printing money in terms of the choice that was made. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Never want to do anything to discourage bad play as a professional. You only want to encourage it. Bears noting, by the way, Dara, that we are oh, on another pay jump. 
Got there pretty quickly, too. Mm. Yep, Ace piss. queen for Raful. Yeah. I have, my friend. I, have I think he's going to have to call off here. He's Let's very short. Eight big blinds. It's, an, it's also another short stack, and this is another winkle of ICM. You, you're better off calling it off against a short stack than a big stack, because it's more of a benefit to you when you win. You cripple the other guy or, or eliminate him if you cover him slightly. I'm going to enjoy seeing the second card. Raful says the first one is bad for you. Must have squeezed the ace. That's incredible. He, he, he took 30 seconds to squeeze the first card. Wow. And had to use his time card. That's he and only got seven seconds out of that second out of that <laughs> yeah, uh, time card, right, by the yeah. way. Bears, no. Yeah. Good luck, man. And the chips do get in there. Ruffle with a kiss of the ring, it would appear. Mm. Oh, come on. It's a, a flip. Superstition being deployed. And it's a flip with a weighted coin. And advantage Jazar in terms of that weight Ooh. and the ace jack six board. <laughs> Putting Raful in front. Jazar taking it in good spirit there. He won't be eliminated, but he will be down to 125k. Unless he can find a nine. Oh, Close. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's black. <laughs> One point more. Come on. Hold on. Oh. And the river. Allows the ace queen to hold as the two Lebanese players. No, no, I don't cover you. I don't cover you. I don't cover you. I'm still playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have 10 bigs, my friend. How much do you have? Yes, 1.6. I have 1.6. Uh, he's now got the bad news that even if he wins this hand, he's just getting his money back. Up we go. Mata with the two jacks. What is it? Yeah. Strange to s describe it as such, given the strength of the jacks against this queen nine, but this raise does provide some insulation yeah. to Jazar. You'd hate to have to go up against multiple hands with yeah, this for sort sure. of kit. Sure. And yeah, we're see we're definitely seeing some use of the of the time factor now. Raful is not thinking of doing anything with the eight four off here other than folding, but using almost the full thirty seconds. And Jazar is going to get the good news that he does have an overcard. Oh, I have one over. Yeah, good luck. I will survive. Ah, ah, ah. Mata. Mushing his man, good luck. Thanks. More incentivized to do so in the small pots. It's, it's so small. Most. Exactly. Risking very little here. Diamonds are working for Jazar. Still hunting a queen on the King King <laughs> 7 board. And there yeah. is a diamond as mm. suddenly yeah. a glimmer of light at diamond. the end of this tunnel. <laughs> Diamonds no good, only diamonds. Diamonds are forever. Can Maroon Jazar hit the flush? No. no. Instead, he hits the nine. Good game, bye, bye. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Uh, and hard luck. That will spell the end of the road. And perhaps more importantly for those that remain, an additional pay jump. As $22,040 will be. And plus equity rather than face. Um, further action on for on later streets. Those later streets, obviously, things do get murkier as well from yeah. time to time. So, removing the need to make added decisions is, is yeah worth the investment. Absolutely, yeah. With the with the risk premium there, it's quite likely that on an all in bet, he would need sixty to seventy percent equity. And ten nine suit had definitely had it on the flop, but on a lot of turn cards, he would not be sure whether he had uh, seventy percent anymore. Well, the Russian Federation doing a little bit better for itself on this occasion as it's two sevens that Chernikov has put to work. Coming 
Komarovsky is a very pretty hand, but there's no reason to get involved here. Yeah, good ICM fold there. 10-9 suited. This is a tempter in the yeah. big, as David Lappin likes to put it. Yeah, closing the action here. Um, this is a fairly routine call, even though you don't love it against the chip leader. He's already burned a few of his time cards as well. Um, maybe he's using the full 30 seconds here. <laughs> I love the notion of the way he just flicks out the chip. Almost yeah. like Keeping an eye on Chernikov, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Not lost on him, the fact that Chernikov does have the big stack. Ooh, this is trouble, though. He's flop top pair, and Chernikov has a set. Oh, boy. He might go all in here similar to the previous. No, it's actually gone check, Oh, check. my God. Oh, it's no. over for Raful now. It went check, check as Chernikov flopped too good to follow through. Yeah. Now Raful thinks he's the one trapping, but yeah. he is the trappee as that burning smell in your living room is the remainder of Raful's hopes going up in smoke. What does Chernikov do now? Will he just call here and let him bet the river and then s and then put the rest in? Worthy of note, though, Raful isn't drawing dead. A deuce or a ten on the yeah. end yeah. would give him the W, but Chernikov with sevens full, content to just flat, and Raful is done. 1.45 in the middle. Yeah. What if he comes with something like half pot to full pot? Instead, he's just checked. checks it. I think he's gone into check call mode here. Uh, I mean, maybe he'll check shove, but it's possible he's just decided to check call here. It's a small bet as well. Pretty Chernikov. doubtful that the six brought in a straight for Chernikov, but yeah. as played, uh, Raful, this would be incredibly astute, and what a bit of self-preservationism this would be. Yeah, if, he's, if he can save himself here. No, he has put in the raise. Now when he gets shoved on, though, he might be able to get away. Um, he doesn't even have the nut nine here. I mean, he's losing to almost any nine that Chernikov would open from early position. Maybe not nine eight suited, but um, he's losing to all ace nine, king nine, queen nine suited, all those hands. But he ho hasn't left himself with a lot behind either. Chernikov's giving it some Hollywood now before he shoves. And he has effectively shoved. And he hates it now. Yeah, the veil of dread. Yeah. Lowered upon Raful's head. I backed into an Edgar Allan Poe moment there, didn't I? I, I didn't <laughs> even realize it. That was Is he going to be able to somehow find the fold here? That would be amazing. You've got top trips. Doesn't it feel like 6-6 six, six at a minimum? Yeah, it's just you can't feel good about your um, trips now. The only real value you're beating now is 9-8 suited. Because uh, an overpair doesn't even raise on this board on the end. I don't even think 9-8 jams, though. Yeah. He's in the horrors here. Yeah. This is liquefy on the blender settings. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, he's lucky he's not already all in because had Chernikov played his hand uh, normally, he would have bet the flop. Raful would have called, and they might have very well got it in on the turn. Yeah. He does call. <laughs> Russian bear. He does his trademark celebration. Uh, that's a sick one for Raful. Showing a spot of sympathy for his victim. Yeah. And true.
line six off into the muck. It should have company in short order here. Now Chernikov with ace nine on the button goes to work. Yep. Over under 25 seconds for this eight deuce here in the small. Um, that's a that's a good line. <laughs> it is the final table bubble and a payout bubble though, Dara. So yeah, you know, you oh, can no. be aggrieved, but it is inbounds and optimal for Orthodox to do what he's Ooh. doing, and for Over Mata. Here. Did he jam here? Yeah, he sure he has did. Jammed. Yeah, this is this is the standard play with his stack, just over twenty big blinds. And this is a tricky spot for Chernikov. It is. He has called. Yeah, didn't take too long to do uh, so. And he is in rough shape. So might this be the first chink in the armor for is it good? the overwhelming whoa, chip whoa. leader who what? is what a turnaround for Mata. Not, not long ago, we saw him uh, jamming the 7-4 from the small blind for 3 million. And if he holds here, he's going to be up to over 9 million. Well, the Russian bear is currently a cub with ace-nine against ace-queen. And that fact remains on a king-high two-diamond flop where the diamonds are covered. And really, lonely nines are the only path to profit for Chernikov in this pot. Looks like he's ready to count down. Ace on the turn. Doesn't change anything. Although some paths to a chop now. If the board pairs, a seven or a three specifically. Instead, it's a four on the river. Surge Matas. Northbound surge continues. Oh, and the Django's for Orthodoxo. Well, he may take his 20 seconds again, but he will be getting involved this time. Would feel like... And welcome back to continuing coverage of day four of this Merit Western Poker Series main event. From where else but the Merit Crystal Cove Hotel and Casino, Ali Najah tagging in for Dara O'Kearney. Alongside David Lappin and eight of our original nine players with the departure of young Vladislav Doroshkov, who has Punched his ticket for $37,300. The biggest cash of his career. Hard to believe, David. Only been playing poker for a couple of years. And this was his first ever live event. Yeah, he will have caught the bug, no doubt, from this. I expect to see Doroshkov go on to bigger and perhaps better things over the course of the next few years. As you mentioned, two years in the game. My goodness, what a start he's had. You know, I didn't have the heart to mention it when I was doing the player intros, but his average buy-in is $55. That's the level of tournament that he's playing. And we all commented on just how impressive a lot of his procedure was en route to the final table, the comfort with which he appeared to be navigating. And uh, surely we'll be seeing more of that young man. Now, the native Cypriot Orthodoxu off of 9 million with the blinds at 200, 400. Min raises from the small. And the man who has really done well for himself, having spun it up, might make a little bit of sense considering he is a spin-and-go expert, having inked a million dollars in earnings in that particular discipline. Derek Tiariovas, with the queen do suited, does defend in position. Looks up at jack, 8-5, swing and a miss in both seats.
Check, check. Turn, Binks Orthodox Sioux. Quick barrel, quick fold. And first pot of the new frame goes to the Cypriot. Yeah, you mentioned there Greg Tiervarius and his proficiency in spin and goes. That's really going to be an asset in three-handed play, obviously in heads-up play as well. And in these sorts of blind-on-blind -blind spots where he will be very, very good at navigating heads-up situations, he will be very understanding of ranges and how they interact and even wide ranges and how they interact uh, certainly a skill set not everyone's forte believe it or not he's actually started a spin and go school back in his native lithuania barsegian who i mentioned hails from russia during the intros actually armenian Surname tends to be a bit of a giveaway in, in that sense, doesn't it? Ten seven off suit. Another aspect possibly playing into the hands of the Lithuanian Degyariovis is the shallowness of the average stack now. Again, we're in sort of Spin and go territory. And he will have a huge amount of expertise. He will understand sizings better than most. <coughs> Interesting <coughs> to see him become a contender alongside the more experienced players, Helton. The somewhat neutered, it must be said, Panka after that <coughs> wild hand with Chernikov in the early part of this final table. Getting some guidance now is Dektiriovas. Interesting little spot there he created. Picking off a pot from the Lebanese Melkitesian. Melchizedek, sorry. Transposition there. Panka short now, as is Mata. We saw Mata fold those jacks before the break. Oh, really felt like a moment for him there to put himself into contention for this one. It's a strange fold. We saw it was a bad fold. Thank you. It was a bad fold anyway, to be honest. We're not being results oriented in this box. Just feels like Jax is the kind of hand you gotta induce and to treat it like a raise fold, a little disrespectful to those Johnnies. Speak for yourself in terms of not being results oriented, Lap, and I, <laughs> I like 2020 hindsight. Now the shroud of mystery in the track suited justice held. Really proficient player. 9 6 off suit, going to defend against the Chernikov open. Yeah, noteworthy here. Chernikov sizing down from his prior 2.5, which became 2.4, all the way down to just a real 2 plus open size. About time, I think. Two and a tickle. And a brisk 1.2. Delivered. Yeah. If you are going to fire out, good sizing on that board of babies. Makes sense. I wonder by now, has Panka found out about that 10 jack? Wild moment from earlier. Yeah, you do wonder whether or not, you know, a lot of these guys are traveling with friends and, you know, maybe have befriended some others throughout the process who are kind of railing them here in this main event. 
whether or not there's some scouts, some spotters relaying information. For the moment, these guys playing an average stack of just over 20 bigs again. It's a very lean. Yeah, lean, sort of resembling a uh, turbo final table online almost. And that sort of plays into the hand of players like Deg Tiriavos, Helt. These guys, a lot of experience playing these shorter stacked final table situations. Yeah, it really does sort of benefit those with technical proficiency. And Melchizedian has been incredibly patient. He's actually made some fantastic fouls. Very ICM aware, clearly coffined, handcuffed. But all correct decisions so far. Now the ace seven out of the small blind for Held. And he deems it unfit. There is Panka, who it must be said was likely the favorite odds on coming into this final table. Not in terms of chip stack, though he certainly had a deep one. More so in terms of his resume, which includes eight years back winning the PCA main in 2014. And then, of course, right here in 2017 at the Western Series high roller, notching another victory. Yeah, it's an incredibly impressive resume. Add a fifth place in an EPT. I think a win in an EPT high roller to that. Just been there, done that, really. Kind of disappeared from the stage for a little bit, though, didn't he, David? Like a kind of a gap in terms of, of his resume? Yeah, certainly didn't seem to travel the circuit with the same regularity. Did pop up from time to time. Maybe he was due a little bit of run bad in some of those big events. Maybe he was there, didn't make the money. Right, just balancing out. <laughs> eight and a quarter from the ace eight of Alexander Chernikov. Held quickly puts those sixes into the muck. Jack Deuce, inadequate for Mata. <laughs> Who's been the most impressive player thus far, in your opinion, David, if you had to isolate one? I mean, we know Degtia Dekti Riovis spun it up quite nicely. You talked about the, the spin and go aptitude and how it plays in nicely. Is that is that the man you circle? Or were there others that uh, kind of might be vying for that honor? That is the man I would circle, but I think all of these players, with the limited amount of hands we've seen them play across maybe, what, 35, 40 hands so far. Um, Barsagian looks like a contender, to be honest. Well, he did bring the boss stack to the affair. Yeah. Not too often you accidentally stumble upon 16 million, was it, that he, he sat with? Indeed, and he has previous as well. I think the MPP, the Mediterranean Poker Party, mm -hmm. I think he won that one not too long ago in this very room. Actually, it might have been in the big room. Yeah, over very at location. the diamond. Yeah, yeah. Melka Sadian's impressed me in a different way. He's impressed me by folding which is a strange thing to say sometimes, but he's actually been presented with really cuspy, just below qualifying spots that he's turned down and been completely right to do so. Kind of, he's been tested in that way and mm. he's come up with the right answer. As we see Panka with box cars, two sixes, going to rip in his 3.2 from the button. Mm -hmm. 
Parsi again asking for a count here, and how close is it with King Deuce suited? Not, but I guess he might be considering the possibility Panka has something south of 2 million, in which case it would be close. I think once the first digit is 3, you can quickly release here. He will know that he's ahead of a, a few hands. There will be some 9 10 suited. There will be some queen jack offs, that type of thing for sure in there. But you're never ahead with the king deuce when you're ahead, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Seems like that thought dawned on Arsegian. And into the muck it goes. Panka will have been hoping <laughs> for a very <laughs> different sort of final table. He came in, I think, third in chips, something around there. He would have been hoping that that ace-queen squeeze had gotten through or had that you know he'd been successful on a later street, would have been up among the 10 million plus stacks, would have been able to you know, maybe open a little bit more liberally, take advantage of the short stacks that have been about. It went the other way for him. He, he very much uh, ran into, uh, not necessarily the hand, but a, uh, a man who was not willing to uh, lay down with second pair bad kicker sticky <laughs> and, and just stuck it in just put the decision right back on him happened to be uh in there with the ace queen instead of the ace king the aces or kings that would have snapped off in that situation bit of luck for chernikov not to have run into it there but panka since then has been i said neutered i don't think a, a player like him is ever neutered but certainly it puts manners on you when you're forced into this icm conundrum when you're forced into this scrap Dektariovas, I believe, just put Ace Nine suited into the muck up front, if I'm not mistaken, David. So keep an eye on that discretion. Yeah, a function of two shorter stacks still being there. He's just shaving off all the bottom parts of his range there. Um, that one's borderline. I think it's probably correct again. It's another one that's really tested him. I feel like Ace Ten is good enough, and Ace Nine, well, it would be good enough for that stack. With the shorter stacks about, like Mata, he just really needs to outlast these guys. Yep. Not nearly as borderline. Mata's king 10 on the button. Raise, jam, in fact, and take it. I don't see. The Russian bear showing a softer side there. Wide <laughs> smile. <laughs> Definitely the character of this final table. Sure. He's been very expressive. The beating of the chest almost. The arms yeah. aloft. Been great to see. A surprising amount of expression, by the way, a couple of pots ago. You know, not to rewind too far, but out of Panka, who, I, you know, when he hauled that pot in, there was kind of this dramatic, you know, oh, look, I guess the doom switch has been flipped. I'm actually able to bring chips toward me instead of dispense <laughs> them. Um, and it was kind of unexpected for me because in watching him, as we see Barsegian picking up two kings, and boy, just as hell, it's king eight suited. has got some real problems on its hands once this three bet comes in. But... Panka seemed very even keel emotionally. Win, lose, and draw. He was just out there doing his thing very much at home. But uh, maybe even he feels it from time to time. Yeah, it's nice when the facade slips a little and we get to see a little bit of personality, even from these more, Dara called them computer, robotic sort of players. Androids. Yeah. Now, remember, this is a gentleman, David, who, with king six suited, found a four bet. Here he is with king eight. Circumstance is quite a bit different. He's at a final table. But the point to be made is that he is not shy about taking what he deems to be an appropriate <laughs> spot and pressing it. No, and that, uh, it's exactly the same type of dynamic. Yes, it was later position stuff. I believe that hand was maybe hijack cut off or hijack button, if I re remember correctly. But we're, we're dealing with the same hand category here. We're dealing with a player in position 
putting in a three bet and obviously health knows this could be light. Maybe feels like there is some exploitation. Of course, we know it is far from. <laughs> the smile. <laughs> that makes me think the fold is inbound. I think you might be right. I think he's yeah. going to turn this one down. Yeah. Uh, interesting. <laughs> Again, we talked about these guys letting the facade slip momentarily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a great decision, really. He couldn't have been in worse shape, really, when you look at it. So uh, another great decision from Helt, who has got his timing right as much as anything else. Marcy again thinking, I don't need you to do me any favors in that spot, pal. Bring it. I can go all in, mate. <laughs> cool. Cool. I call. Cool. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. King. <laughs> I had a king too. He said kings. He said I had a king too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I fold as king three, but not kings. Oh, kings. <laughs> oh and the anguish. Oh, this time I had on kings. the face I had here of Nalgasadian. Looked so cute, it was worth the timing. He knows the big blind ante is upon him now, next hand. Dropping him into the sub-10 big blind zone. Panka, well. Two tens are upon yes. him, and certainly <laughs> with that 10-ish big blind stack, one presumes. Oh, wait a minute. Perhaps incorrectly presumes. It looks like an open here from Panka David. Surprised? No, I'm going to be honest. I think... Dominic is the kind of player who will look to extract maximum value from a hand like this and will construct some ace-x suited raise folds, even off a stack such as this. So actually, I think in order to balance up the ace-x suited, you can't just have the aces and the kings in there. You probably have to go a little bit lower if you want to find a few more of those light opens. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, he's putting 10s into the equation. Obviously, 10s a hand that then can get flatted by, you know, maybe some undercards um, in the big blind. And they can get in a little bit of trouble. Maybe a, a cheeky suited connector wakes up in the big blind and loses some chips post-flop to the over pair. Um, I think he's obviously inducing. But then I think also it, it provides an escape hatch if a lot of action comes afterwards sure. as well. So there's, sure. there's, there's a lot of nuance about an open such as that. Uh, we mentioned yesterday, Darrow Carney made the point that we never used to see light opens off those kind of stacks years and years ago, but a man came along online by the name of Pizagno, and, well, we thought he was being kind of fishy, but it turns out he was way, way ahead of the curve, and he taught us all a few lessons about short stack play, and that became very in vogue. Chernikov, nothing in vogue about ace-queen suited. That is a, an age-old open. Yeah, yeah, going back to the 2.5x yeah. sizing. Oh, boy. King Jack found the muck, but certainly for Degterejovic. Ali, this is going to be massive. It is. Because Chernikov is not going to fold if what we've seen before is what we're going to see again. Yeah, if history is any indication, some real adhesion is going to be tethered to this ace-queen suited. Degtyrovis flatted the Queens earlier on. A very trappy, deceptive play. Um, he also three-betted the Aces, maybe feeling like he had to show down the Queens, so he had already revealed that string to his bow. Dream I think enough. he is going to come for a, a three-bet here. It would seem a little optimistic to flat this one and, and set the trap. So um, the three-bet does come in to three million, and it will go back over to Chernikov. Snap call. Yeah, yeah. And I I'll tell you what, the snap call really does start to narrow the range, not just from the standpoint of calling three million, but the pace of it. You start to kind of zero in on very specific combos as the jack high two diamond board is a bit damp. Yeah, I think day tier of us will probably look to get this in across two streets might be a bit risky to try and navigate such a wet board over three he checks mm, interesting just checks over to his man who he probably feels has a lot of bluffs in his range actually he probably just felt like he was setting a trap 
Six of Diamonds, kind of a cool card here. I wonder if he'll check again. Won't want to let a rogue diamond in for free. No, he does bet two million. Nice queen suited. Can we see what he yeah. oh, sure Into well. the muck. Can you show it? Yeah, he showed. He showed, he showed. He showed it to C2. Open, open. Oh, and now the remainder of the field taking note of the fact it's that <laughs> Chernikov appeared to have shown that hand to his seatmate, and as a result, he is obligated to show the remainder of the players. Nice pick up there for the real story of this final table thus far, the Lithuanian spin and go specialist. No. Chernikov looking a bit exasperated. And quite different to Email. the set of home improvement. We approve of show one, show all here. <laughs> Panka and Mata both folding. Now Barsegian. Deuces into the muck and well served given Chernikov's got two red nines. Goes back to work. Oh. Okay, I don't put in common. Orthodoxu making sure that he's registered his cards over the RFID readers. <laughs> no takers, but it's back around to held. And he will let it go as well. Small rebate there for Alexander. I appreciate you giving me a handoff there, Ali. Um, Ali has brought some chocolate into the booth. And delightful pistachio infused chocolate. Very dangerous. Yeah. I don't, we don't leave North Cyprus lighter than we arrived, <laughs> do we? I, I mean, a lot of time sitting in a chair and just eating. Really, the two I've booked dominant activities. <laughs> I've booked two seats for my journey home. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but for very different reasons. I was hoping perhaps some of the local talent might, <laughs> might be interested in a visit to the States, David. You know, I'm happy to be a tour guide. Barsegian opens with two eights to 900,000. Again, deuces find the muck. Queen Jack in the cutoff. Folded quite easily. A few more days. Don't lose hope yet. Oh, what makes you think that plans have not been hatched? Oh. <laughs> they haven't. <laughs> Ace 10 in the big blind for Panka now. Got himself at 4.4 million. Boy, this is. Obviously not a hand he's going to want to fold, but was it one that he wanted to jam? The answer we now have, and it is yes. These spots are so interesting because clearly it's a call if everyone's deeper, but it's so much of Barsegian stack. Everyone's shallower. It has such an impact on the ranges. Barsegian, I don't think, would... Consider folding a hand as strong as eights to Dominic Panka if this was a 11 and a half big blind rejam in situations where they were both deep or where <laughs> one of them was deep or he was deep. He does call anyway. We're going to the races. We sure are. And this is a healthy 10.1 million chip pot. You see Panka. <laughs> Like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons, just wrapping his fingers around. 
His fate hanging in the balance. On his feet, sunglasses off. Hoping that he's going to haul this one in. Two overs against the two eights. And King Jack five. Neither player with a club on the monotone texture, but plenty of outs acquired for Panka. Four queens, to be specific. Beyond the ace and ten, he was always hunting. As he has ten outs at present. Blank turn card. And now it is ten outs once for Penka, for whom the bell tolls. Can he connect and double through Barsegian? The answer is no. Mr. Beauty succumbs to the beast. Barsegian there. Sporting lap around the table as he bids adieu to the rest of the field. Will collect tidy eighth place money, David. 49,600 to be exact. Obviously had his hopes a bit higher, but in the end, I don't think he'll be too displeased with his choice in at least that final hand. Presumably the others as well. <laughs> We've broken the 20 million chip barrier in that stack there. Ah, okay. Barsegian. <laughs> A dominant force has emerged. And very interesting to see whether he will wield this lead now. A fantastic opportunity, it must be said, to lean into all of these stacks with some lighter opens. There is a sense that they are all trying to outlast one another right now. Again, Melchizedek, and he gets the ladder. Just three million in the stack. He's down to eight bigs. He's basically folded his way to seventh place right now. He's Which is good for $62,400, by the way. A significant step up from ninth place money, which was 37 3 he, He's still got one more short stack he could navigate past. And there he is, Mata, 2.8 million. Held, putting him to the test from the button. Is King 10 the one? I think Mata will let this one go. We've seen him release in these kinds of spots before. Smile from Held. Very much. A game of survival right now. Hmm? Yeah. So long as there is a clear so short stack remaining <laughs> in the field. You have to sit to yes, yes, you have to sit Who there now. Who do I have to pay? You have to sit there. Somehow personal brawl. Okay, said he in suggestion that suggesting that Justice Held needs to slide over to the nine hole. Justice saying, who do I have to pay to not have to move over there? I have a question. Do you think it's okay? It's okay? Yeah. How many bigs it was? Eight. More. Four I, I got one through before, so it was ten. Yeah. Well, we know it was a little bit more than 10, mm. but the guy is doing a little post-mortem on the shove by Panka, possibly feeling like it was a little bit on the light side. Mm. I think there would be general agreement of that. Melchus Sedian is going to make his move finally here. He's second shortest in chips, but he does have an ace in the cutoff. Gonna try and accumulate rather than survive. Like three million, three million. Now four, now four, <laughs> now four. yeah. Thank you. All smiles as he hauls one in, every little chip counts. Yeah, you can only play the cards you're dealt and there will be periods of time where card distribution is utterly unkind and there will be times where it will test you out by being very adjacent to the bottom parts of your range and how you choose to proceed 
from there is is a test in and of itself and I think he has passed that test so far on this final table deservedly getting to the final seven Battle of the Blinds, Barsegian is facing Chernikov. Maybe the one person he doesn't want to tussle with lightly. Queen Jack against two fives. Eight six deuce. Two quick checks. Now a gut shot obtained by Barsegian. Two quick checks one last time and they're going straight to showdown. Yeah, for the second time, these two guys have played a limped <laughs> blind v blind pot and have been happy to check it down. Maybe a signal there of the specific hand sort of warranted it, to be honest, but also a signal that they don't want to tangle right now. They will have to tangle eventually, but maybe when we're four-handed is a more pleasant time from it both feels players' point of view. It feels irresponsible from an ICM <laughs> standpoint, but they're are often those who will look at that moment and then not come to that agreement and really create discomfort for others who are looking back at them and thinking, buddy, you know this is not a good idea. And they're leveraging the fact that it isn't to really sort of represent an absolutely top end of their range, but do so not always authentically. Indeed. Levels on levels. Mm -hmm. Oh, and again, a wired... Big pocket pair for Jake T. Avis. Oh my goodness, he has been a bit of a card rack, but boy, has he played his hands well also. Min Rays, not tipping his hand whatsoever. Now Queen Jack suited for Serge Mata, the short stack in the cutoff. And yeah, you can kind of feel he wants to get in there. Does flat off of 2.6, David. Might yeah. this give him an out if he's unimproved on the flop? Yeah, I'm wincing at that one. We saw him flat off 12 bigs earlier. I think we might have seen him flat off 16 or 17 bigs right at the start of this final table. I don't like these flats. Oh, well, <laughs> okay, well. Top two pair, and what... A fortuitous development this is for Mata. Now, granted, had he jammed, the money was always going to be getting in. And how much of this 1.8 is going to be on request? Just 700 of it. A jam from Mata. Snap call from Deg Tiriovis. And he's going to realize improbably that he is behind. So sick. So sick, he's thinking. What are you doing in there in the first place? And now, so sick. All in. The action was fast on the flop. It just went bet, shove, call in an instant. Dealer just gathering herself. Now a deuce or a four would counterfeit the queens and jacks. Ace would work as well. Six and a quarter million in the middle. And the river is safe for Serge Mata. <laughs> Ernestas is frustrated. <laughs> yeah, the spin and go maestro is... Certainly incredulous, it would, it would seem. Yeah, showing a little bit of disrespect for that play, which, to be honest, you have to understand. It's certainly non-standard. Mata has sort of flicked in a call there in a spot where he shouldn't. Flopped in. Feels a little sickening. Sure. On the other side of that coin, Mata... <laughs> laughing heartily with his rail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Four, six, point seven. Six point. It's a good stack. Good call, no. <laughs> Oh, um, We're actually going to have a little bit of... <laughs> Cheekiness? Yeah, a bit of lip after the event. A sarcastic, nice call, pre. Don't get me wrong, I do understand the frustration, but... Stay classy. <sighs> Limp from the small blind out of Orthodoxu and still perhaps reeling from those two aces. Don't get any of us. Says run it. Two spades, two aces, and a jack roll off. Yeah, two back doors here. Dick Tiariovis might feel as though this is a good one to stab. Neither player really able to represent well the ace, but he can maybe represent the jack going for some. Because I will stick it in versus you. Don't. Really don't. Yeah, I will stick it in the stack. I mean. Okay. Of course, this <laughs> We talked about it yesterday. No, no, no. <laughs> with the Russian guy who had the cameras, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. He was handsome. No, Habibi, I am... Uh, straight? I'm straight, yes. That's okay. Can you kill me? Plenty of chat, Ali, and uh, not all friendly. It must be said there. No, it must. And let's not forget, this is heated battle <laughs> that these guys are engaged in. And for many of them, it's for the highest stakes they've ever been a part of. We see Mata with the newly minted double going to work with Ace Queen. Raised to 1.4, and that is beefy, David. You gotta wonder whether or not all classes of hands that Mata would be looking to open would be opening for the 1.4 because if they aren't, then it is certainly to his detriment to be picking different sizes with which to open. Unless of course it's specifically when it's around to the small blind versus the big blind. We see a lot of sizing up there. <laughs> yeah, I think Mata very much playing his own game right now. Yeah. The one he's familiar with, the one that he has progressed through this tournament with, and uh, regardless of the disapproving faces and maybe comments of his table mates, he's gonna do it his way. Marching to the beat of his own drum. Now ace three being pondered. Not for long. <coughs> Orthodox Sue. Ace deuce suited in the cutoff. Takers. A nicely eclectic bunch of styles and experience levels, David. You know, I mean, we talked about the multinational nature of the field, and that's, uh, you know, a nice bit of diversity. But I think the diversity I'm more keen on is specifically the fact that we have such contrasting approaches to the affair that it yeah, are predicated yeah. upon, as yeah, mentioned, the yeah. various yeah. levels of experience. And it just makes for tantalizing Usually moments. Uh, you know, you really can't hand. predict anything. 
No, 100%. I, I think we have um, on show here a couple of stone cold internet android killers. Right. I think we've got a couple of maybe, dare I say, old school, big bet approaching clunky players in the mix. We've got some players operating in a much more tippy tappy probing style. Okay. Yeah, sort of the world's fair of <laughs> play styles. I like that. It was interesting on the heels of having handled the player intros at the final table, a number of people came over to me and kind of grabbed my sleeve and said, hey, that guy's a taxi driver? <laughs> Referring to Justice Held. And of course, I had to clarify that, that <laughs> he's not a taxi driver. <laughs> it's his name online. <laughs> Well, Helt shooting Barsegian a look of, are you talking to me? All in. And uh, he's talking with two queens right now, and he's saying all in. Show wasting. Prompt takedown. Wow. I'm happy he opened. To be fair, I feel <laughs> like I've gotten into a taxi or two over the course of my life, and the driver was I'll, wearing I'll something very reminiscent of that <laughs> track suit there. I'm playing very tight. Hmm? I have Maybe to play very tight. Grabbing a cab in Little Odessa out in New York. It is very Teddy KGB chic. Oh, is he, he even looks like a young Malkovich. You can definitely see it. We really should run some Oreos out there I know, just right? to complete the effect. How cool would that be if just cheekily he grabbed an Oreo while he was all in waiting on the other guy to decide and twisted it? Absolutely amazing moment. We, ear. I did spy some off-brand Oreos at the buffet on one of my visits. Don't get <coughs> snack elitist. <laughs> All right. No, I actually they're meant They're not off-brand. Uh, they're just homemade, different Oreos. Here. Homemade here, I would Homemade. imagine. Probably better than Oreos. Not oh, that okay, look at you. Not, not the junky... Uh-huh. Backing it up. Arm American lapping. confectionery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you've turned around and started to yeah. we're, we're take issue with... Uh, or, you know, Oreos are vegan, by we're the way, we're which we're makes them healthy. We're in Europe here. They're Oreos. <laughs> Oreos. Darren and I were playing a, a look alike game when this final table was first assembled. Chat were helping us out too. Alex O'Brien convinced that Chernikov was a Paul Giamatti clone. <laughs> but, uh, Come on. Which I, I have to agree, that was my reaction too. That's ambitious. But there was a funnier one then, which I thought was more accurate. Maybe the, the more having let himself go somewhat Russell Crowe. Oh, the let it go crow? <laughs> let me, uh, let me reevaluate that one. It's a firm no for me on Paul Giamatti. A firm yes, though, for Serge Mata. And you see from the button, he makes it 8.50 to go with Queen-9 suited. So what I kind of alluded to just moments ago when he went to 1.4 with Ace-Queen, we're starting to see some patterns being established. Yeah. Chernikov. Defends with 7-3 off suit, and it's bottom two pair for Mata. Unfortunately for him, Chernikov really just going to be all too ready to put this into the muck, perhaps even before the chips are deposited. Total air. No, we are not entertained, oh, Chernikov. <laughs> he should be leaning over telling stories of the time that he squared off with Augustus Aurelius or something. <laughs> One of the things I love most about poker, David, and I'm sure you would agree, is that it truly serves as one of the few forums on Earth where you'll take just a hedron collider that in no other way would be able to, you know, assemble 
such characters. You know, I mean, I remember specifically at points in my career sitting around and looking over and being like, well, that guy is involved in, in some sort of criminal enterprise. This person is the best surge, brain surgeon in, in the county. Uh, this kid over here is a wonderkin from online. This guy over here is a retired businessman. This is a, a professional athlete. And you just go around and you go, in what other setting would I possibly find these guys all surrounded at a table engrossed in a single activity? <laughs> Ace Jack suited for Mata now, 850K, and really similar hand class to Ace Queen suited, and yet we're not seeing that upsize. Maybe the randomizers at work. Indeed. Suited connector for Orthodox. A little nod of approval. Is well, it to say, you oh, I'm your man? You got me. I'm check blind. Oh, and Helmuthian dark check here headed to the flop from Orthodoxu. 2.3 in the middle. He comes up totally empty on a two-spade queen-high flop for Mata. Gut shot Broadway draw elects not to fire. Mata happy to get to showdown now. I'm re-watching Sopranos at the moment. <laughs> One of my favorite shows from my youth, but I, I very much feel like I watched it in a very different way as a 20-year-old, because it's not really a show for me then. I, I enjoyed the show, don't get me wrong, but re-watching it now, I realize how much it's basically a show made for someone who's sort of 40, because you can relate to Tony in so many ways. Mm -hmm. One of the scenes, I um, don't know if people remember the, the show very well, but there's there's quite a few poker scenes in season two, mm -hmm. and it's exactly that sort of setup. Um, Frank Sinatra Jr. makes an appearance as himself in, one of t in the big game that Tony runs, uh -huh. alongside exactly what you said there, a, uh, a surgeon, obviously a couple of nefarious yeah. characters as yeah. well. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's very relatable, I must say. I'll tell you what, I did make an effort to go back and watch it again as we see Ara with the two jacks under the gun, making a 2.9, not quite all in. Oh, and Mata with A6 suited. I was just gonna say that it's not in high def, it's in standard definition the whole run, and I found it quite difficult you know, we're so spoiled in terms of, you know, video quality now um, to get into as a result. Uh, the Wire, also a really, you know, top-notch show. Suffered sort of a similar fate when I went to go rewatch it. Ace-7, not interested, and this one should get through. I've been binged watch my way through The Wire on three occasions. Wow. Uh, down the years, that's... Uh, but but I hadn't watched huh? Sopranos again, and I, I wanted to, and I had been meaning to for a while, and I think maybe yeah. just the uh, yeah, the TV options over Christmas were not so good, and I thought, okay, now's the time. There you go. I'm into season three now, <coughs> and uh, yeah, but but you see it in loads of TV shows. Breaking Bad has a kind of clunky enough poker scene. A lot of show, American shows, I suppose it is the American pastime, often feature it somewhere along the way. Even TV shows like Friends had poker in it. Mm. And uh, mostly it's done in a really clunky, horrible, terrible sure, way. As sure. a poker player, you're really cringing through those scenes. Not so with the Soprano scenes. Really? It's all seven card stud and it's all pretty well done. Stud, definitely not the iteration we normally see. Five card draw sometimes you'll see. That's another kind of weird. Wow. Walk one time. <laughs> I don't think the walk is inbound, Ara. And in fact, it's the inverse as they say jams. This is pretty close for Melchizedian. Obviously, the other short stack has pulled away now. He's very much on his own there with just eight bigs. This is... Yeah, right on the line. I feel like Queen Jack, Queen 10, he would not be taking much time. Queen 9, just not quite qualifying. And mm. happy to see an ace there. At least he feels like... Queen 9. Well, I wouldn't be giving it away. 
I think if, uh, if he lets his opponent know he's folding Queen-9, he maybe is yeah. revealing yeah, exactly like his cut-off there. Keen ears peeled on that exchange. It's 100% full. Well, it may be 100% fold for Melchisedian, but perhaps not for the likes of Doug Riovis or even Justice Held, who were bookending him. Nor for you, David Lappin? I think that was really close. I think that was a, a very, and he's been f faced with just difficult close decision after difficult close decision for the best part of two hours now. Chernikov with the ace queen opens. King Jack suited on the button here. For Ernestus. A lingering factor for the short stacks here are that even the big stacks only have 20, 25 bigs. It doesn't take much of a cooler to get oh. those kind of stacks in. <laughs> a flat here from Dector Jovis, and I wonder whether or not Melchisedian feels as though a squeeze opportunity is upon him. The answer is no, just pitches the ace 10. Well served to do so. Yeah, that definitely would have felt like a spot where he could have got it in with the best hand or flipping and a good bit of dead money in the middle, but also maybe feeling like these guys might be about to go to war. We'll see if they are. Oh, yes, they are. Queen high flop with two hearts. Top pair, top kicker. Check. Chernikov knuckles to Dekteriovis, who checks back. Now picks up a gut shot to go with his kit. A function of the fact that these guys can really do damage to one another, that it went check, check on the flop there. How awkward is this for Ernestus? I think it's a call. I, I don't think he wants to put more chips in. He's not calling. Uh, I certainly don't think he wants to put blow this pot to the point that it could end up in a, a river all-in situation before he makes his hand. He is getting the right direct price, so I think this is definitely the right way to navigate. Pot up to over five million, and what an inconvenient river that was. Very fortunate to have Chernikov checking to him here, David, as he's able to simply get the showdown free of charge that could have got very very messy you reflect back on that flop i for one was getting very excited at the prospect of a collision if that goes best i think we see a call i think we see another call on the turn yeah that could have been a lot bigger but does go to show how keenly aware these guys are of the catastrophe that going out in seventh place would be for Stack sitting fairly pretty in second, third sort of position. Absolutely. And very wary they are, a point I made a moment ago, of how even the big stacks don't have big stacks right now. Right. The pressure being felt by even those who are relatively deep. Chernikov with Queen 10 suited. Once again opens. And this time no customers. So nice uptick for him as he begins to close in on the 20 million chip mark himself. I'm so short. Like nobody is even close to me. So it's not. 
Yeah. I need I need to play. Very candid. Yeah, I don't think anything was uh, a revelation. <laughs> yes, bro, we know you're short. <laughs> it's annoying. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Give us a pay jump. Exit stage left. Remove these shackles. King four suited now. Small blind for Mata. Will limp. He's 10 for Barsegian. You might just stick him in here. I think against someone like Mata, you wouldn't be loving an induce because Mata is on the tight side, yeah? There was one time. I want to ask you. Like, this back side, we would like nine laps still. Is 8 million was still 20 and bigs, I though, David, and not to split hairs, but. And, this guy, and, him, and him behind me. Uh, they screen off, I told you. 17 yeah. bits. Yeah, yeah. That uh, was that, that's the only hand, uh, a I chunky like portion of the I 17 million to be jamming in there on the off chance that yeah, Mata exactly. is trapping. Like, one million and my stack was like yeah, I don't think we've yeah. seen Mata exactly. show that They're trapping gear solid, so. in quite a good sample at this yeah. point. I think the guys can be pretty confident that he sort of defines his hands with usually quite large raises. No, That did seem like a... Yeah. A, a no, nice pickup. Safe spot. There. Mm. But you get the point that I'm getting at, oh, where absolutely. maybe we can accomplish the same task without risking quite as many of our troops. I'm a benevolent general, <laughs> you know? I want to see the kids go home with all their limbs. That was a little morbid. <laughs> <laughs> can you give me space, please? Oh, Thank so you. Cute. Justice hits. picking up Chernikov, and they both share a seven, which is bad news for the big blind, Ace King Jack. Good news in a way for Chernikov, as he should be able to get away from this. This, of course, held keeps him in with a check back. Ooh. But now. Spade on the turn. I think Chernikov will feel as though he's being pot controlled. And this would require two big streets to get the job done. And that's very dangerous. Be surprised if Hell gave a free card with these three spades out here. On form, 625K, the turn bet in position after the second check from Chernikov. And he's just going to let it go. Nothing wrong with that. It's four day in a row, yeah? It's four day, no? Yeah, four day. Your best card is a spade, and those waters are murky. Indeed, as held shoots Chernikov an almost Rasputin glare. <laughs> I like that. Well, the blinds are going to creep forward to 200 and 500,000. And as a result, even the biggest stack at the table has sub 40 big blinds. Barsegian kept company by Chernikov. We've got another tandem in Held and Dagteriovis. Mata and Orthodoxu level. And then everyone really just keeping an eye on RML Kassetian, who has impressed you with his folds. Really, most of his participation here has not been in the form of getting his chips into the middle, but keeping them out of it. Is looking to find a ladder. 62,400 on tap. That ladder, $13,000 strong. As 
Seven-handed, we continue from here at day four of the Merritt Western Poker Series main event. Ali Najad, David Lappin, glad to have you with us. Be sure to subscribe or like us on YouTube if you find yourself streaming us over one of the multiple channels that coverage is available. Certainly appreciate your support. Chernikov limps from the small blind at the new level. Has the seven smothered. As Orthodox who checks back, comes up empty on the King 8 3 board. Same story for Chernikov. Who slips 700,000 out there. And will take it down. And you know, every now and again, David, I feel as though on balance, players will limp and then take the min raise chips or the, the chips that might have been required in order to raise credibly from the small blind and slip them in their post-flop as opposed to try to take it down pre. Can you put them on top? Yeah, the limp stab is yeah. an effective weapon. Very effective at these stack depths as well. Main reason being is you're giving your opponent an opportunity to define their hands, and when they check back, they can't have anything strong too often. You can still have strong hands because you could be setting the trap with some strong hands when you limp in. So you generally have a pretty big range advantage on a lot of boards, and therefore you can fire the very minimum for a low-risk, reasonable reward. Got to have some of that in your arsenal. Melchizedian will be faced with a... Big blind and big blind ante for one third of his remaining stack in the next hand. That's why he kind of gave it a minute with the jack three suited, but he will take his chances on having a better hand than that as one million of his remaining chips will be on request next hand. Yeah, and with that in mind, I love a light open here if I'm in Barsegian shoes. Uh, not to say that King 8 doesn't qualify anyway, but even if... That was to be a weaker holding. I quite like a, a cheeky little open here with a wide range. Must and be said he's been rather docile as the chip leader. Granted, again, he has company in Chernikov out there, but Chernikov's been, you know, not looking to tussle with him whatsoever. It would seem that given that he's first to act, despite the fact that Chernikov is on his left, he can kind of take that initiative if he saw fit. And here doing so on a rare occasion as... Tiviovas defended and doesn't connect with the queen queen nine board, nor does Barsegian, but we know he's got the advantages of position in the big stack. Yeah, I wonder if you might check this one back. Obviously, he's not getting ace highs to fold. A lot of flatting cards do interact with the, the queen queen nine. At the same time, a small equity denier, never a bad option here. Dick Thierry Ovis has the back doors, and if this was a different sort of not-so-ICM heavy situation, I wouldn't be surprised to see him try and use those back doors in this type of situation to construct a raising range to balance out with the times he has a queen. But on this occasion, with all that ICM in mind, he lets it go. Nice pick up there. And add enough of those little pots together. If you start making these light opens for Barsegian, you start to put some distance between yourself and Chernikov, and then the snowball effect ensues. Yeah, and I think this is a perfect time for Barsegian to switch gears and go for a couple of lighter opens here. Really That's use the fact that mean. there's a short stack out there with four or five bigs, yeah. and everyone will be keenly aware of that fact to try to get two or three steals through per orbit maybe 10-3 very ugly on the other hand but it has a great personality <laughs> it doesn't even have that orthodoxu 
certainly has a qualifiable shove in a not so precarious ICM situation. And a better than average hand for Thierry Ovis means yeah. he probably goes yeah, with this into the very short All stack. All in his, his ranges are <laughs> nailed on. Oh, aye, man. Aye, aye. What was it? Seven deuce. Seven deuce. Just <laughs> what a disaster. He would have rather jammed Jack 3 suited up front. Oh. Should he be calling with it? It was seven news. Bro. No. Um, the shorter you get, the more mm. profitable <laughs> spots yeah, manifest know. for you in the I future. And wait two more rounds again, the there are three players, I believe, with less than 15 big blinds here. And it wouldn't take a particularly oh, really cold deck to set up. them up and get Some you a ladder side. jump, <laughs> even though you are playing that short stack. No, I think he needs to continue yeah, to chance be a place. cockroach second place. Yeah, second. You're happy with second at the place, table, right? sure. make life difficult okay. for the other players. And we got a deal. I'm about to bust, so second place sounds so good. And indeed, Barsegian with the hand that I don't think he would have opened in on a table with everyone sitting with 30 bigs or more. Definitely recognizing this opportunity right now. And look at this, Chernikov, who we've identified as one of the more stickier customers out there, keeping an eye on that super short stack, respecting the fact that Barsegian's the one man that can send him to the locker room, just pitches the two fours. I think Helt will release this 8-6 as well. He is probably keenly aware that Barsegian has switched gears, has opened, I think, maybe three of the last five hands and will be thinking, OK, I know what you're doing, but if you are going to fight back, 8-6, not really the candidate. <laughs> and these guys sort of have to yield to the pressure here. They all have to bend over to some extent. You guys are waiting for me to bust, huh? Yes, Aura. Really? Really? Yeah, like yeah, you no, guys don't know how yeah, patient I am. Like I, I'm no pain, I'm so no patient hungry. at all. Yeah. Like, this was the most if I double I've up been like been twice and I have like 10 million, a lot of things will change. The first double up and after, a lot of things will change. <laughs> uh, I like this out of Aura. You know, it's kind of breaking some of the tension of the moment. Showing that he's well aware of what's going on out there. And almost threatening everyone. He's like, don't let me double twice. <laughs> well, one step at a time for Melchizedian. Here he is on the button. Oh, no. Jack six. Not the one. Help me well take a stab at this. A very poor holding, obviously, but I, I would not be surprised if he makes it like 1.2 million here. Um, he's opening into arguably the tightest player at the table, who is under the ICM cosh right now. Yeah, just a 1.2 exactly. Oh, but Mata does have the goods. Oh my goodness, he shows it. That's not what you should be doing right now. What did we just witness? <laughs> we just witnessed the power of this give me this ICM uh, give me that card scenario that card, <laughs> give me king by the way yeah, yeah. Melchizedian's like listen Serge you don't want ace high yeah, send it this bad. way I'm ready come to go on. come on so yeah health holding didn't really matter in that in. spot uh, if, if we're going to exploit a hand like ace nine there we're opening any two there just won't be enough reshoves, there won't be enough defense, and it's 
basically printing money to open into a player such as that. Who's even obviously trying to just make this ladder jump. Even with Aura's short stack out there, objectively, Surge's fold is incorrect. Oh, yeah. The gap between the 1.2 million open and the calling range is huge. If he's opening any two, he's probably only calling off with a you know, top 10% hand. Mm. That is just an incredible gap to exploit. Sure, it, you might run into it once in a while, and that's very unlucky to go out in seventh when you are a reasonable favorite to make top six, maybe even top five, but it's a pure print. Pelt, a very different proposition here on the button, but he does have a real hand. Into the chip leader here, Mata quickly away. Ace deuce off suit here for Barsagian. Could certainly use this as a three bet. I think that is what we'll see, probably a bump up to three million. No, just all in, just drops the hammer and really puts health in the bin. This is superb stuff from Barsegian, it must be said. I Showing think. sort of what we were alluding to him possibly not employing enough and the hammer was dropped yeah, there. King six suited, huh? King six suited. Yes. Helton Bersagian. Filippa. Filippas. Kings. Kings. Yeah, no, no, but I trust you. I mean, <laughs> if you, if you uh, if react like this, if I don't believe you, you will, uh, you're not a liar. Engaging in lots of verbals. Kind of cool meta. Oh, and Melchizedian does have a hand. Yeah. 1.7. I think Helt may decide to be the sheriff here. He has made the call. Oh, <laughs> look at this. The bazooka right on cue for Chernikov, and he's going to be able to just vanquish Held with ease. How much? I mean, in context, this hand has to be so unbelievably good. <laughs> Creating a dry side. Well, some posturing from Held here, but he's never calling. No, 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 I'm falling. You fall. I'm not all in. Jesus Moment of panic. God. <laughs> the all in, of course, was Melchizedian. And how frustrating is it going to be, given how patient he's been, for him to find the best hand that he's had in an orbit or two at least? And running into aces, but not short on optimism, is he? Well, Queen Jack managed to beat aces earlier, flopping top two. And for Melchizedian, the king on the flop is a very welcome development as he now has five outs moving forward. The three of diamonds not among them, though. And the light begins to flicker at the end of his tunnel. Can he hit a king or an eight? Oh, he oh can. my goodness me! A I binky! Told you, I told you. I told you. I'm a fighter. I told you from yeah, the beginning. You don't you believe me. Uh, you seemed. Uh, you almost came. <laughs> four. Almost gave up. Why? <laughs> four up. Well, Chernikov. Obviously irritated, but even he has to be a touch amused. Ace is underperforming here at the final table. Indeed. Well, one very happy man, six very unhappy men. Wow, wow, wow. Too much chips. I can play three days with these shoes now. 
Two children I can play with this. And health chips, just gravy on top, really. Yeah. That's one, two, three, four, four point five. Five point five. I think he's got about twelve bigs now. From just three and a half. Very relaxed. Yeah. Ara strikes me as the kind of guy that's able to find the good in any situation. King Queen now for Barsegian's button. And we should see a, a little bit more of a free flow, I think, David, now that Malkasetian's stack is no longer really just kind of on the precipice of being rendered. All in. And might this be an example of just that? Yeah, you called it there, and this is close with King Queen. Orthodox who ripping in 6.1 plus. I think you can probably just about let it go. Orthodox who's been pretty snug. Did but he make the call? It looks like uh, he it has seems made like the he call. has, yeah. And on their feet. Big moment. So Barsegian obviously can afford to make this call. They're going to play a 13 million chip pot. Orthodox whose fate hanging in the balance. Burn down. Three off the top of the stub. And the flop. Two hearts. So let's take the king and the queen of hearts off the board for Barsegian. Good news for the man who is all in and at risk. Just fading four cards. Paint there. That's a little spooky. Gut shot acquired as we add three tens. Total of seven outs. That you need to dodge and the ace on the river. <laughs> Orthodoxu with the double, a little fist pump for his rail. How do you feel about Barsegian making the call with the king queen, David? I guess he felt like when he's opening so liberally as he is there, he's opening a very wide range. He's taking advantage of this horrible ICM yep. predicament for everybody else. He can't have too big a gap between his opens and his willingness to call off certainly some of the shorter stacks. He probably felt like he, he had to put the king-queen offsuit there into the, the range that would maybe fold to Chernikov, who's obviously got a much bigger stack, but had to be willing to, to call off against the big blind who only had 12 bigs. It's um, it's tricky because all of these guys trying to outlast one another, navigate past, keen not to put all their chips in if they can avoid it. I do understand. I think it's a really close one, and I do understand it. And uh, I suppose you made the point there, Ali, that he could afford it. And uh, yeah, to some extent, he could maybe you know, take a shot there without it putting any of the chips that are giving him the chip lead right now at risk. That being said, he's made a very dangerous opponent of Orthodoxu now. Another player who has position on him, Chernikov and Orthodoxu, direct position, both well stacked. <laughs> Malki Sedian should maybe join a Buddhist monastery. I mean, he really has the Zen required for the that line of work. Uh, 
8 plus this. But you know what big Wow, and a walk there with the way better than average King High. All the time just thinking about Orthodoxu, how many trips newly minted, has. doesn't want to reinvest. I think it was Dara who mentioned that oftentimes players will live not want to take these coveted imaginary live HUDs. You open it. That show you no. everything. New no. chips. No, 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 we don't need great charts. We're not just put them the feeling. at risk. Hastily. I think you shove this time and I will have a da, 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 da. He will not I be shoving. Know. I think I have a race incoming. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's a really strong one. <laughs> yeah, that was double me up again. I think it was for the next one. <laughs> I think this is it. <laughs> Fast. Wow. <laughs> Still. It's very good. Still alive. Four point five. We have to do it in the same way. So Button on deck to Jovis now. Ara in the small, just as held in the big. Information for all the players that our last tournament for tonight will be the satellite. Frozen at seven handed here at the final table. Satellite into the mystery boundary. There have been multiple doubles now off of the short stack when all in and at risk. Serge Mata enjoying one of them with Queen Jack against two aces and then moments ago Ara Meltisikian <coughs> Melchisetian, sorry with the King 8 out of turn, out of turn. Has Chernikov acted out of turn here, pitched his cards, and oh, now he's going to receive two a two-hand penalty? Not sure what the decision was there. Perhaps just a warning? I think it has to be a penalty. You just can't do that. A raise to 1.25 million as we work to determine what exactly the result was there. A7 into the muck. Takers ultimately. No, no, I told you what tak. Wake up, Lappin. It has been a snoozy passage of play here. Well, maybe just for the last minute or two. <laughs> well, no penalty administered. Chernikov in his seat for the next hand. I did expect it to be at least a hand or two. Obviously, it's 
difficult to employ any sort of subjectivity to these sorts of situations important to stay consistent but you know it it bears mentioning that the spirit of this room and the spirit of this field doesn't appear to be suffering in any way shape or form from you know any of what i think you and i have kind of from a jaded standpoint grown accustomed to seeing in big multi-table tournament fields where every edge is sought Every angle is always being pursued. Uh, and it must be said that all of the players, I think, kind of appreciate that uh, experience, you know? Yeah, that's fair. It's really devoid of a lot of what we might otherwise come to expect. A little limp stab there from Helt. Неудобно, я сижу через тебя, так бы я пушнул бы тут на макароны, бы не вклонил. Ну, не, ну у тебя, я имею в виду, через большой стейк мне неудобно. Пуш. Не, ну, что же, карта уже шла, что же. Короли тоже зашли. Я вообще говорю, что по игре, ну, неудобно. A KG passage of play. О. Oh. No longer. Two aces for Chernikov. I, I wonder if he's just scared. <laughs> they just, they've been expensive, and he's been on the receiving end of a bad beat with those aces already as he doubled up. Mara Melkisetian. Yeah, he has raised it up for a big size here. 12, 1.225 million. Strange not to just... Aces again. Minute, but... He just seemed happy with just the takedown of the blind yeah. ante, so you might be right. Almost a war of attrition right now, David, and that, that sort of climate does seem ripe for the taking should somebody decide to take initiative here and really uh, activate. Yeah, it's difficult because there are only two players at this table who have stacks that can really put the foot on the accelerator in the way that you've described. Everyone else is bound. The shackles are on. The kinky handcuffs. <laughs> Queen suited up front. Min plus. Darrow Kearney and I were sort of discussing the merits of going just north of the min. And in terms of the psychology, there are arguments made, apparently, that there is some value. The math doesn't really change a whole lot, but the mentality might. No takers. Mm -hmm. Orthodox who will get a free orbit's worth of tokens. Thorough hand shuffle in play. I, for one, really like the, uh, the hand shuffle still. Does that make me kind of a swarthy old dog now that we have Shuffle machines. It's not really from a paranoia standpoint. I, maybe I like the romance of it. I, you know, just it's an honest, nice and honest way to go about it. The machines do tend to put some marks in the cards over time, too, I, I've noticed. Yeah, I've noticed that, too. Some of the internals. I think probably a much bigger factor in a cash game environment where spitting out those hands as quick as possible right. is, is money. Yep. Oh, so that's a, a smush back. <laughs> that was 
subtle and romantic, that particular smooch. For those that are unaware, by the way, and it was deeply uncomfortable for me, I don't know about you, David, coming to the island for the first time, this is now my third trip here, that to get the attention of the wait staff, it is deemed absolutely appropriate to make a little kissy noise. Yeah. And nothing untoward about it. But it is just something that is so deeply offensive if you were to try to employ it back stateside that I, I find myself cringing and I've yet to actually do it. Okay, so I didn't realize a punter could do it to a member of the staff. I thought it was an intra-staff code mm. signaling kind of thing. Right. And I think the reason for it I've heard pretty reliably from a lot of people who work oh. poker rooms oh. in Ireland is... It's the sound that penetrates across a, a space where there's a lot of noise, a lot of chip riffling, a lot of chat. Hmm. That noise will apparently travel much better. So if you do need a bit of attention, you need to get hmm. the floor man over or whatever it is, that's the noise to make. Now, I didn't realize so it's it was a noise that we could do. I th I, 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 I'm right. similar to you. I wouldn't do it. I really think I'd like to abuse it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to really conquer my phobia get out there and make several kissy noises, aggressively loud ones, by the way, where like the needle on the record kind of skips, the whole room comes <laughs> grinding to a halt, all eyes are fixed on me, and then I go, oh, no, never mind, I'm fine, <laughs> don't need anything. Ooh. Hello, tens. Minri's open up front. Looks like a 10 found its way into the muck quickly there. <coughs> One less out to a set for Held. Not that he needs it. Held now one of our shorter stacks. He's probably second shortest opening into the shortest here from early position. Suited and connected, though, is a shorter stack than his in Melchizedian. Going to defend. That's 10% of his remaining chips Seven invested in the form of a call. Not to mention the 1 million for Big Blind and Big Blind Annie. He had to put in before that, and that was not the flop that Ara had in mind. Just an overcard dangler out there on the flop to Held's 10s as he has it checked to him. How much did he come with here? Bare minimum, I think. One big. 800,000. Oh, I apologize. Okay. Oi, 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 Not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Given sort of the amount of online experience that Held has, I really do appreciate what he's brought to the affair here this evening in terms of table presence and personality and willingness to kind of engage. And it must be said that for those who do endeavor to play poker professionally, I, I think it's incumbent upon all of the parties of that ilk to consider themselves ambassadors of the game and to really have a sense of responsibility to create a pleasant atmosphere and experience for the more recreational players, uh, without whom the enterprise is far less profitable. I couldn't agree more, Ali. I, I think um, while I, I, I would express a discomfort with judging people overly or telling people what they should and shouldn't do, obviously different personality types exist out there in the world. Some are more gregarious, some are more extrovert. And then there are plenty of people who would rather quietly go about their business or maybe find social interaction awkward from time to time. Um, I do think it benefits all if people can play in a spirit and in a manner that is friendly at the very least. Um, not to say that these guys aren't at war for hundreds of thousands of dollars right now and mm. with meaningful money such as that, maybe friendliness uh, sort of 
come second. But there's no reason for, like you said, the professional players for whom this entire enterprise is deeply related to the presence of amateur players, recreational players, players who do want to win, do want to have experiences like this one at final tables, go deep, make some money from time to time. But maybe that's not the priority for them. It's actually more about blowing off steam and having a recreational endeavor. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, th I think they that's a lesson everyone could learn. Food for thought for those who are just starting out Please. in their careers. Please. Four million. Raise four, four million. So Melchizedian picking the ace five to go with from the button effectively did leave himself 250k back. Dara and I, in a recent episode of the Chip Race, interviewed Elliot Houdon, who those of you out there who follow poker will probably realize won the very, very big one, the WPT at the win uh, a short month ago. And he talked about how when it got down to this sort of stage of the, the tournament, and obviously it was life-changing money for everybody there, um, he did feel the need to stop being friendly and stop being um, chatty with his table mates because there was so much information, counting everyone's stacks, every pot of significance that went somebody's way. That would mean having to readjust, you know, the dynamic, maybe the kinds of ranges you could open into a new stack size that you have to keep aware of. So he felt there was just so much visual information out there. That's before you even get into players and maybe physical ticks they might have or, sure. or anything within a hand as well. He just felt the need to sort of shut, shut off that part of it, that it was sort of now all business at that stage. Sure. And I understood that point as well. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's a unilateral in all situations kind of thing, but uh, certainly food for thought, something to keep in mind. It's challenging at times, too, because, you know, we're all susceptible to the frustrations associated with, you know, maybe getting knocked out of a tournament by, uh, you know, a less experienced player who really does something that is just so incomprehensible. But it is precisely those sorts of decisions that allow you to accumulate chips and, and win money in cash games to pay those buy-ins in those tournaments. And it will cut both ways from time to time, but over the long run, obviously, it is good for business. So encouraging that, or at least not admonishing it, is a suggested approach. Tough, though, man. We're all emotional creatures. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I've watched some poker players that really are just not emotional at all. Sometimes I'm jealous of them, and other times I'm like, oh, man. I don't know if I could do it. I think what's really interesting about this final table and it's becoming a bigger and bigger factor right now is we are seven handed we're not far off a level jump to big blind 600k where the average is going to slip well below 20 big blinds average once again and when we end up with stacks of these depths and this much money being still played for fractions of big blind mistakes mm. become very costly mm -hmm. When we started this tournament off, everyone had a starting stack, which they paid $3,300 for. And if they made a five big blind mistake, you know, they lost 150 bucks. And right. That's not the end of the world. Right. We wouldn't encourage mistakes like that, but you know, these types of mistakes could take place. But now think about what that five big blinds represents. It's very, very important to consider these types of things and therefore have your ranges nailed on first and foremost. And that's where I feel as though our spin and go friend there in center screen has a bit of an advantage over maybe everybody. I imagine Helt is pretty slick when it comes to his very shallow stack stuff. We, we've seen him already um, express that with some absolutely nailed on play. I feel like those two guys probably have the edge as we get shallower and shallower but of course Barsagian he's been very selective he's, he's not overdone it he has the chip lead the K 
king queen call, I guess, defensible. Could maybe have uh, turned that one down and just proceeded in the manner that he'd started to, which was picking off people two, three times in orbit. Aye, aye, aye. But we see now it's all sort of paralyzed and tight and no one can breathe. Or the oxygen has left the room. No good hands, <laughs> nowhere. Only, only bad hands. A6, only. Yeah, there was a good hand. There was, there was comparably a good hand. There's no action, guys. We need to play some hands. <laughs> <laughs> no? Big blind is up soon. I would just like to point out that I'm not having any fun we for the time being. Field. I would like all Maybe of you to you perhaps be a bit more entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. Maybe yes. give me your chips I as well. I only do 80-30s. <laughs> only play like this. I race. I appreciate held breaking, but obviously are my perhaps subconscious stereotypes of the German affect in, <laughs> in and out of poker here with... Wow, well, this could be an interesting clash. Yeah, the King Jack running into two nines in the big. Really two, level in four, stacks six, as well. Seven, seven point five. One, two, three, four, five, eight. Eight point seven. Eight point eight and 25. Only got to ask for it, then then you play a hand. <laughs> <laughs> ace, ace, five. Interesting texture here is obviously plenty of ace, x is in held's opening range. But nines are a lot of hand on this board. A very polite deposit. What looks like 500,000. Yeah, the bare minimum, bit. definitely the right bet size on this texture. Of course, the call from Ernestus, and this turn is not one that rates to be of any concern for him as he checks a second time. Bit of a fork in the road for Held. Is he going to look to tell the tale on three streets? <coughs> the answer is promptly no, the check back. Backdoor clubs arrive. Really a dynamite run out for the nines. Block bet inbound? Yeah, betting one big blind yourself here might be sort of interesting. Held can't beat anything, I don't think. So, may go polar here. Maybe giving some thought to what a bet of 4.5 million would achieve. Running clubs. He has the jacket clubs in hand. Is yeah. potentially interesting part of all of this. Help pretty sure he's never good here. Virtually certain. How much of that 7.9 million does he need to stick out there? He might be considering all of it, to be honest. But I do feel as though the likely bet size is something. Okay, he's got half pot. Interesting. Interesting. I don't think that's going to cut it. Maybe by merging. With a half pot sizing, he can have hands like kings, queens, jacks, <coughs> tens, sort of. Yeah, the tens through kings obviously are, are part of <coughs> what we might expect to see take this line. <coughs> Maybe some backdoor clubs too. There's some club combos. He's played it like a weak ace slash nines or tens plus. But how much weak ace does he open from that position as it stands? Decent amount? Yeah, I think a decent amount. I think suited weak aces, definitely. 
I think all the suited aces, maybe. Um, Look at the price being laid, though. Three to one, roughly. We may burn a few time banks here. This is interesting. Helt has decided to tell the story of... Yeah, great call. Yeah. He knew his opponent was capable. That's sort of what happened there. Yeah. He knew how capable his opponent was. Hell told a good story. Very good story, yeah. actually. Yeah, and it's funny because sometimes we get called in that spot and we feel like it's disrespect, but we can almost... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Better shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Assign it, you know, a measure of respect, actually. You know, that I know that my opponent is capable enough to do this. <laughs> well, David, I. Nice call. I suppose. I King Queen, King Jack. Yeah, but King Queen, I could. I mean, this debatably could turn into. could go to showdown as well. I'm not sure. I felt like you have a pair very often. Now would. So be the time. I tried something. I'm ashamed I don't have the restraint to avoid saying it, but uh, pay that man his money. <laughs> King Queen for Serge Mata. I do appreciate the sporting chuckle you provided there. That really was, uh, was just a hallmark of a good partner in the booth. What I was actually thinking about was how I gave that one a go late last night in the booth. Ah. And my impression was very poor compared to that. Oh, was it? Well, it's all the time I've spent in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> Which is zero. Matter opening off this ten and a half big blind stack to 2.3x. Ace 8 suited, not interested out of the small blind. You seem to be nodding in affirmation. Yeah, quite like it from Matt, I gotta say. Like I, I would go with the min raise myself, but you know, given that his sizings do fluctuate, I do like the use of the king queen in this way. It blocks all the strong hands that might come over the top. His image is strong. It wasn't that extra 150, though, that factored into Dekteriovis' decision to, to lay the ace 8 suited down. That was more my focal point. You're okay with that fold against that open? Yeah, I think your, your range responding is going to be pretty inelastic to sizing. Obviously, egregious sizing, it will change. But I think anything around the min to 2.2, 2.3 all Nine. seems... It's similar, particularly against an opponent who does seem to be just randomizing a little bit with his raise sizes. We've actually seen him show a pattern and then break that pattern already on this final table. We thought we were onto a bet sizing tell, and then I did notice one hand where he went against that. So, yeah, element of randomness with Mata. Uh, but I really like his decision to use the King Queen like that. I just think that's a very good short stack little maneuver. He would get the, I think, credit for a genuine premium hand there, but he's used a hand with blockers very effectively. King do suited on the button. He may well just shove into the two players here, both small and big blind are, I think, Sub 10 bigs. Yeah, obviously held with considerably less than he had before that pot that tried to bluff the king jack through. But he will get a walk here as both Ernestus and Ara lay it down. I'm kind of surprised Queen 3 the gave the stream back. And know what we have. German a walk there. Even though he's on such a short stack? Well, they're both short. They're both sort of scrapping it out for that spot right now. And Queen 3 <coughs> rates to be a better than average hand. Why not put all the ICM pressure on the other guy? Huh? By jamming? Yeah. 
Eight bigs into another guy with about eight or nine bigs. Feels okay. Feels scary. Oh. But it might feel okay. Very scary. Everything's scary right now. Yeah. If we don't see a bust out in these next three, four hands, whatever it is, we have a few minutes left. Blinds are going up to 300, 600 oh with my. a 600 big blind ante. 1.5 million in the middle in dead money. All in. We could see some real carnage at the next blind level. It's just as held. I had better than that. Jams. I, I had better than that. <laughs> I shall record. I didn't look. Really? No? This no. one? I didn't look, he says. <laughs> no, and I don't think he did look. I think that's the yeah, previous hand with the Queen 3. Not. He's wondering if he should have gone ah, with the Queen 3. Okay. And <laughs> we see it 7 8. Help King doesn't actually know maximum. because he doesn't bother looking maximum. unless he has maximum. to. Right. Are you that guy? No, that I look. look. I look. I, I look. always look. I'm a tortured soul. <laughs> Simulated snores emanating <laughs> from our featured final table, rather. After the break, I will be jumping out of the booth to make room for Dara O'Carney, who I have to say is probably the best person to have in this booth for a very, very shallow stacked mm. war, such as the one we will be seeing. Two red kings among the best hands. Only one better. Min raise open. Aha. Uh -huh. And an ace do suited on the button off of 7.7 .7 as the plot thickens. The German leaning in to survey the affair. He even touches his chips a little bit like Teddy KGB. There's, I'm feeling... There's, there's, there's KGB-esque vibes. There's, there's no vibes. doubt about it. Granted, we're guided by the tracksuit. But nevertheless... <laughs> I need to admit that I am anti-sweating Ernestus Deg Teddy Ovis, but strictly because I don't want to have to say that name again. It is a real... Marble mouthful. It's tough. I've just gone with saying it incorrectly for the entire day. Yeah, but and you've done a great job of that, by the way, if it must be said. But doing it confidently. <laughs> you've had at least six different iterations <laughs> of it. One of them's bound to be right. Shame on me, though. I did get the, pronoun the correct pronunciation at one point prior to welcoming the players to the featured table, which I did... Almost well, <laughs> as I skipped over Ara in seat six during the intros. Had to bring him in late. Suggested that it was due to the fact that I wanted to give his sunglasses a moment in the sun. Is that what that was? I, I, it was inadvertent. <laughs> I've been cutting and pasting all of the bios in my, in my uh, mobile and scrolled right past him. We did wonder in the box. Yeah. That was a, a pro move, actually, Lappin. You see Sucherenikov with the two eights getting a walk. Had two sixes and got a walk not that long ago. You had a good hand? You had a good hand? When you raise, I fold and an ace. I always have a good hand. I'm believing you. I'm believing you. I'm believing you. I'm believing you. Two black sixes go promptly into the muck up front. 
Not the same story for an ace 10 out of the hijack though. to go. Chernikov <coughs> perhaps <coughs> showing signs of boredom. I mean, it's queen nine suited. He can get in there, right? This is splashy. This is speculative. It's top pair is what it is on a queen jack six two diamond board. Broadway gutter, backdoor diamonds for Held, who checks back. Chernikov checking a second time. And it's unclear whether or not he's looking to induce or whether or not he's just not that comfortable with the queen nine. And given the three streets of checking, you got to look on your face, David, that I think is consistent with my feeling is that if we're going to bother to flat from the small blind and flop top pair, we got to do something other than check it all the way down. Otherwise, why are we bothering? Yeah. We talk about implied odds in certain situations. We talk about set mining. I suppose that's a great version of it because when we make our sets, we feel like we can win lots of chips later on. So we invest a little bit now. This is sort of a similar equation here. Queen nine, definitely not the kind of hand you want to be in there with generally, but if you are going to be in there, there's an onus upon you to get some value when you do, and he failed to do so. Does manage to pick up the pot, though. Ace Jack now up front for Melchizedian. Suspect he's going to hoist the main Eight. sail. Takes it upstairs to four million, Four leaves million. himself 250 back just in case something chaotic happens behind. No customers as yet, and he'll be quite all right with that. Jack-10 suited, though. No. Not enough. Let's break now. One more hand. Play less than. No, no, play less than. It's a big one. Ara lobbying for this to be yeah. the last hand as opposed to on the back side of the break where it would cost him. Thank you. 600,000 for the big blind and another six for the Annie. Chernikov, ace jack here in the final hand of this blind level. <coughs> Ooh, lurking. Two queens in the small for Degtariovas. Chernikov has him covered. He could get a full double if he chooses to proceed in the right manner. Maybe pick up a jack high flop, but. It's 1.3, yeah? One, one, Let's see if he's going to start it off with a three bet. You did say that he, he flatted queens earlier. Scenario a bit different now? Yeah, that was early position interaction. He decided to flat, hoping for a squeeze behind, and then obviously proceeded in the hand with a, a deceptively strong one. Mm -hmm. um, but we do. <laughs> Take 
take a break now. Yeah, he three bets and the ace jack finds the mark. <laughs> Players will take roughly 15 minutes. But when they come back, rough is really a fair way to describe what the landscape is going to look like as the deepest of all stacks will be just 30 big blinds with those blinds moving to 300, 600, and a 600 big blind ante. 1.5 million in orbit, seven-handed. That is a very pricey bit of poker that's going to be played from this point forward as we welcome you back inside the commentary booth here at the Merritt Crystal Cove Hotel and Casino. Alina Shot and uh, David Lappin. David, the story coming in as I asked you kind of for what the theme that had built at the onset of our frame was Dekteriovis with the spins. Continued that tale here and really off of that stack, I suspect that you're going to place him into a top three finish just based on what we've seen so far. Yeah, I think we've seen a few stories emerge. One, a very entertaining one, I must say, is the story of Malkasetian, the cockroach. Yeah. He refuses yeah. to die right now. And that's, at different points in his shallow stackedness, provided all of his table mates with really difficult situations. Sure. Uh, I think Chernikov emerging certainly as the loosest player, the one more liberal to maybe flat some spots we saw there with the Queen-9. And yeah, with that is going to become a sort of volatile, uh, maybe unquantifiably volatile uh, part of this equation. But yes, as you said, Dek Tiriovas, certainly. I think that big call with the nines especially, and we saw there winning the, the Queen's hand just there at the end as well. Um, I think he's put himself into the role of Bucky's favorite, even though he mightn't be the chip leader right now. Yeah, and with some short stacks out there, to be determined whether or not the theme of chiseling away will continue, big pay jumps are available, or if suddenly people are going to look up and realize now is the time to make the move. We'll find out on the backside of this break. Don't go anywhere as more coverage of the Merritt Western Poker Series main event final table will continue after this. Instead, it's a four on the river. <laughs> surge Matas. Wow. Northbound surge continues. <laughs> oh, and the Django's for Orthodoxo. Well, he may take his 20 seconds again, but he will be getting involved this time. Would feel like a little bit of a waste to hand this strong, not to just open Dara off this stack. Yeah, we saw some time cards consumed for Hollywood purposes with Queens uh, by various players in the early phase, but the, um, the time cards won't be replenished until the final table so the guys who are running short now have to be a bit more economical with them interestingly orthodox who is going for that larger open size as well the 2.4x clearly contagious here yeah i know and what's also contagious is the full consumption of the time <laughs> Mata is not considering doing anything other than folding here with the 9.5 off but he's going to be almost counted down. Is consumption contagious? Is that one of the contagious uh, diseases? Uh, it was It was contagious, I believe, yeah. Even better word smithery from you there, didn't yeah. there? Melka Sedien looks like he's eyeing up his yeah, box there as well. Yeah, yeah, they're all doing... Ooh, this is an interesting spot. 
This could be trouble, Dara. This would mm. definitely form part of a reasonable light three bet shove yeah. range. And he does cover, not by much, but he does cover. Well, actually, no, he doesn't cover because I guess that 3.2 is what Orthodox who has behind. Stacks are very close. He does let it go. You mentioned that he was playing on the snugger yeah. side. Yeah. That would be a sort of a, a looser player's three bet opportunity yeah, there, probably yeah. consistent with what we've yeah. seen before. Yeah, or Orthodox is definitely, it, that's a different proposition from, say, the man in picture, Chernikov opening. Yeah, and Chernikov happy to peel one off here. And wow, what we are going to have flop. a conflict. What a flop. This it's, is... It's a flip from here. Orthodox is looking down at that forward gun. That's all you. Oh, my God. This could be it. Yeah, and he's only got a 2x <coughs> pot bet remaining. He's probably got to decide now whether he wants to check and hopefully see a safe one peel off or if he goes for a bet here and then clearly willing to commit. Yeah. Yeah, I think you probably want to bet big here. This is a board where your strategy should be check or bet big. Um, and Kings is a hand you definitely want to bet big with. Well, he's gone very big, Derry. He's gone two million oh, well he's, over he's, betting the pot here. He's effectively and shoved. They're getting it all in here. And it's going to be a flip. Wow, nice. Orthodox will be absolutely sick to see this holding, hoping maybe for pocket nines, maybe yeah. an A6, something of that nature. This is a far different proposition. He, you can see Komorowski standing up. This is huge for all the players here. Even the chip leader uh, losing 3.2 million here would be significant. Are we about to say goodbye to Orthodoxu, our final table <coughs> bubble boy? Or will he fight to live another day? That's, a, fight another day. that's a safe turn card. Yeah. So now he's a very significant favourite. 78%. 10 outs for Chernikov. Oh! Uh, that is not one of them. <laughs> and some understandable celebration, yeah, an explosion of emotion there from Orthodoxu, who did yeah. a very, very difficult hold <laughs> to stay in the tournament. <laughs> He's very much in the mix. Komarovsky finally getting a gift from the poker gods here. 11 big blinds. The threes were subpar this one, well above par. He's going to ship this in and hope to get called by worse or get it through. Yep, moves all in here. Definitely Ooh. some worse hands can call. Chernikov. So can some flips. Not a man who... Full, who Likely to fall pocket Hello. eights here. Cool. Russian bear calling Hello. with the snowmen. Well, Komarovsky is going to be at risk to be our final table bubble Top boy. Top point eight. Yes. Orthodoxu just getting clarification on the cost of admittance. And here we go, Dara. Huge moment in the tournament. Komarovsky very much in a similar spot that we show, saw Orthodoxu in moments ago. If he gets this double up right back in yep. it, but he could also be going home. Yeah, a few of the players standing up now. This is a big moment, obviously. This could be the final table bubble. Komarovsky has he's just drifted back as he's been car dead, and he now finds himself at risk. He's going to have to win a flip, or he will be missing out on the final table. And no help there. He's now a 70-30 dog, roughly. Needs an ace or jack immediately. Does have some running cards to go with that, but... And now he's down to just card. an ace or a jack. Or we will lose the Valiant Pole, who has impressed us over the last few days. And no help. Get the we get the Russian, yeah. the Russian bear celebration. Yeah, we've seen that celebration on quite a few occasions now over the last couple of days. This man wearing his heart on his beautiful.
the time box and time cards are in play. They've been in play All since we read through. Doroshkov, he picks up Queens under the gun. Um, he would have been going pretty wide there, given that he was under the gun, but or actually under the gun plus one. But um, oh, and we're going to have action straight away. Chernikov wow. is not a man who would ever fold his king suited. Certainly not, Dara. And yeah, really getting no opportunity to sit back, relax, ease into this one. We're straight into a showdown. Yeah. Try to erase the memory of you bringing up spittoons. <laughs> well, look, when these cards end up on their backs, as they indubitably will, Doroshkov, he won't love to see ace-king, but should he win this very big flip, he will be right back in the mix. On the other hand, we might be immediately down to eight. Yeah, so the two Russians are tangling here. <laughs> Doroshkov, even though I know absolutely nothing about him, has really impressed me uh, the whole way through. So, while I'm not rooting against Chernikov, I would like to see a bit more of Doroshkov. It would be interesting to see what he can do if he gets a double up. I agree, Dara. We don't want anyone to leave the party quite yet. Yeah, it always feels a bit weird if you, uh, if you last only one hand on a final table. It's almost like you were never there. So he is favourite. People call this a flip, but the, the pair is a decent enough favourite. Oh, 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 oh. well, and still a flip. Is. Yeah, he's got to fade the flush now. He's act it's, a f it's actually flipped the uh, percentages. Chernikov is now favourite. So many outs. So many outs indeed. At least Doroshkov has a queen of hearts, which is one less heart, but that's a good turn card for Doroshkov. He's taking it in good humor, but this is a sweaty moment. And, and he does a hold. Very much a quesera, whatever it will be. Yeah. Rye smile from Doroshka before that river was dealt. Little yeah. bit of relief there. Yeah, well, there's nothing you can do really in that spot. You just have to wait. The deck is going to decide. We're about to play the final hand of this level, Dara. It has been an eventful. One, two, three, four, not professional. <laughs> you are professional, my friend. No. Oh. I'm playing spin and go, if you know. Oh, me, I have the <coughs> job. Melchizedian <laughs> releasing the trees. We've seen him very ICM aware here, Dara. Obviously, yeah. short stack, but shorter ones about. Yeah. He's proceeding very cautiously. Held on the other hand, 12 million, First and time, sort of table. gets to play what? into all these short time, stacks, put them yeah, in an ICM coffin. Like yeah. Is he going to go with this as an open? It's an interesting sort of hand category to consider it. Yeah, he might be perceived as very, very tight, but he has decided <laughs> to let it go. I mean, his whole game plan, it's, 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 it's already very clear. He's just going to try and gradually hoover up all the chips okay, without anybody right. noticing until he has them all. Well, Doroshkov, short oh stack here. Yeah. King, Mine's seven suited. He's going to make his move. Seven big blinds is enough to go Ooh, with. 50. Mm. Uh, Sagan's got a... This is close. No, that Tricky was little one. Break. That, was, that was lunch break. <laughs> what are you talking about? Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of chat Listen, off the table while talk about the break coming up there, whether it's a lunch, dinner break or not. Thank you. I guess when you're in an all-inclusive resort, you would like uh, longer breaks. Chernikov's <laughs> going with this, Dara. Yeah, Chernikov is not a man who'll ever fall king queen for seven big blinds. No, and he and he very aware that he will dominate some of the range. Dara Ushkov obviously will go with queen jacks, queen ten no. suited, king yeah. jacks, that type of thing. Great call there from Chernikov. Unfortunate for Doroshkov King. to be dominated here. Battle of the Russians. The <laughs> He's not even standing up, look at this. The Russian bear is hungry. The Russian bear is standing up ready to do his victory flex if he wins. Doroshkov sitting down, cool as a cucumber, composing himself for the next hand if he's still in the tournament. And that's a terrible flop for him. 
He's all but shuts the door on Jurassic. He's going to have to hit a runner runner straight now, or we will lose our first player. And that is it. We say goodbye to Doroshkov in ninth place. He cashes for 37k. Played superbly well, it must be said, Dara. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure why Chernikov needed to point out. For my journey home. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but for very different reasons. I was hoping perhaps... Some of the local talent might <laughs> might be interested in a visit to the States, David, you know? I'm happy to be a tour guide. Barsegian opens with two eights to 900,000. Again, deuces find the muck. Queen Jack in the cutoff. Folded quite easily. A few more days. Don't lose hope yet. Oh, what makes you think that plans have not been hatched? Oh. <laughs> they haven't. <laughs> Ace 10 in the big blind for Panka now. Got himself at 4.4 million. Boy, this is. Still on the hunt for a home for $372,800. That is the top prize here at the Merit Poker Western Series main event where just seven of our original nine at our final table remain. Blinds up to 300, 600,000 with a 600K big blind ante. Ali Najad joined now by Dara O'Kearney who is tagged in for David Lappin. And Dara, there is your look at the chip stacks and as you Feast your eyes upon that distribution. You see the seventh, sixth, and even the fifth place stacks of Melchizedek and Mata and Held sort of needing to maybe make a move sooner than later. But if history is any indication, these guys are approaching stack depths that we might typically regard as shallow with yeah. real chisely, grindy, milky attitudes. Yeah, nobody is super deep now, so even the short stack will think if they double up there, they're going to be right back in it. And even the big stacks, you know, they, if they lose an all-in, they're, they're pulled back into the mix. For me, the story so far has been the young Lithuanian who started the day uh, 8 of 9 and is now 2 of 7. Um, interested to see that Dominic Panka, who would have been one of my tips, um, has, has departed the scene. Yeah, I think uh, perhaps the odds-on favorite, certainly in terms of experience, the Polish... Panka finished in eighth place. <laughs> Doroshkov, the Russian, finished in ninth. $62,400. The payout on tap, the jump up to sixth, is $13,000 exactly. I see a lot of support in the chat as well for Held. Held is a, a cult figure, let's say. Um, he's somebody who's not definitely not a household name, but people in the know know how good this guy is. Perhaps more familiar with him under the online handle Taxi Driver. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody who follows the high stakes on GG, the high stakes tournaments will be familiar with that name. Chernikov will take down the first pot at this new blind level. Does have 375,000 plus in career tournament earnings. Best cash to date, 105,000. So certainly an opportunity for him to set a new high water mark. Does most of his tournament bidding in Russia along with Rosvadov, Czech Republic, and right here in Karenia, Northern Cyprus. <coughs> Scrolling all the way down Chernikov's resume, by the way, a really interesting event I'd never even heard of. Back in 2009 in Sharm al-Sheikh, the resort city in Egypt, 
Wow. The Red Sea Poker Cup. What a wonderful name that, for huh? a poker tournament. Yeah, never heard of that either. King nine's offsuit, rather, yep. on the button for Eustace Held. And he has an in raise opened. Looks like Barsegian is going to put him to task, yeah. smacking his wrist. A uh, punitive king eight jam there. Yeah, and a quick fold from the king nine. Interesting, a lot of players would shove the uh, the king nine uh, rather than leave the door open for that. But held style is very much uh, small ball. Um, trying to get into as many situations as possible rather than a couple of big situations for double or nothings. You feel as though that small ball approach in the end balances out, obviously, there. Yeah. If he jams, he ends up winning that particular pot, but there are other situations in which the small raise allows him to escape perhaps yeah. spots where you know, Indeed, he would yeah. otherwise be headed to the locker room. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's something that Phil Helmut, of all people, uh, pioneered, and people used to laugh at back in the day, mm -hmm. raise folding off shallow stacks. Um, but since the advent of the solvers, we've now found out that that's actually not, not only a viable strategy, it's a very good strategy. Interesting how solvers <laughs> caught up to the zeitgeist yeah. in some of those situations and really validated things that people were doing that they'd kind of arrived upon more so through experience as yeah. we see the blind squaring off here in a limp pot queen 10 5 two quick checks big equity on the turn here for barsegian who is always best with king high doesn't make the flush and it's checked all the way down note these guys are the two bigger stacks at the table so looking to stay out of one another's way yeah that's understandable with so much left to earn Quite different styles as well. Barsegian is kind of in the in the small ball school of uh, play lots of pots, take lot, lots of probes of pots. Uh, whereas Chernikov is not afraid to put all of his chips into the middle. As we saw right at the start, uh, essentially it was the hand he won against Panka, which severe, severely hampered Panka going forward. That's just 15 minutes, I think. Perhaps the player that impressed David and I most, Dara, is the Lithuanian, Dirk Terejovas. Yeah, yeah he's, he's been phenomenal today. He started second shortest in, uh, in chips. He did get a card rush in the first session, but he played it perfectly and uh, exploited it to the maximum. Well, Serge Mata with the ace-queen is jamming here. Chernikov's going to call with ace-10. This is a wonderful development. Orthodoxu not waking up with anything frisky in the big and so they'll be on their backs here and you see Chernikov's reaction instantly disappointed to see that he is dominated does have 27 percent equity though in this 9.2 million chip pot does have the hearts working for him uh, unfortunately for him one of those hearts is in Mata's hand as well but that does increase his prospects slightly So to the flop we go as Serge Mata has to sweat. The hearts. A heart draw on the flop. Chernikov shrugging his shoulders, but this is a wonderful development for him. The tens and the hearts are all his. And Ooh. there is the heart yeah. on the turn. Yeah. Ace, queen, draws dead. And in short order, we have our first casualty of the new blind level. Thank as you, thank you, man. Serge Mata thank you, see you. says goodbye. The Lebanese participant who really did march to the beat of his own drum, it must be said, here yeah. at this final table, and I suspect en route to it. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Nothing wrong with what ended up being his final hand as all of us would have met the same fate. Indeed, yeah.
Like very similar style good. to the man on screen there, actually, Chernikov. Uh, they, they, they're mind. very similar styles, but Chernikov is running really, really well. And Matt, unfortunately, got lucky on that occasion for him. Like, if you will rewatch and you will see, like, how card dead I was, yeah. like really, like, unreal card dead. He's not exaggerating. Yeah. R.M. Elkisedian. Help, move, help moving all in now for just over nine big blinds. Mm. We suspected we were going to see quite a bit of this in this new level. Yeah. Chernikov might call off here. He's the one guy who might call a nine big blind job with Queen 10. Five, 5.5. Having a think here. Well, he does have two blinds behind him, and I think a lot of this, yeah. you know, giving away the strength of his hand is certainly hazardous. Yeah. Yeah, if they wake up with a hand for sure, he makes it easier for them. And this is going to get through. Be a nice pickup for Held. Yeah. Where are your aces now? Your aces there being where are them Yeah, now? he allowed himself one last raise full <laughs> with the King Nine broken. that we saw, but now that he's down to nine big blinds, <laughs> he's reached the point where there's no more raise full. I remember. But he's back up to eleven and a half now, so he has some more weapons. Brad, Davai, do your job. <laughs> <laughs> You have three more, yeah? Chernikov has a hand here. He can definitely open with his stack. Yeah, yeah. He has so many chips now. Two jacks awaiting RML Kisedian, and he very gladly oh, wow. jams over the top of this Chernikov open. Oh. Of course, Chernikov going to give him a spin here. Big smile on his face, can well afford to do so. Still yeah. will have 20 yeah. million. At a minimum, regardless of outcome, but he is looking to send yet another player packing here in this first orbit of the new level. Melchizedian giving it the Mr. Miyagi, rubbing his hands together, <laughs> trying to haul in this 8.1 million well in front and stays that way on the queen high flop, but the three dangler has connected. Backdoor wheel and heart prospects also loom for Chernikov. <laughs> calls for action like a Hollywood director yeah. and gets it He's on the turn as he picks up deuces. The sweat is real. A four to one favorite with one to come is Melchizedian. He's been so patient. And that patience continues to be fighter. rewarded. Me, I, I trust you. I mean, trust me. I fight. I said yesterday I was scared when you said told me said to me that. I told you I'm not just trash talking. I, I'm, I'm not I'm trash talking, bro. Yes, I, was I told you I'm a I fucking was, fighter. I was scared. I've been fighting all my life. Trust me. All my life. All my life. All my life. All my life. How now? Uh, more than me. <laughs> my goal is to have a yellow chip. <laughs> just once. One, two, three, four, seven, seven point five. I have eight million. No. Eight million. <laughs> Jernikov picking up another hand. He's going to open here for sure at the sixes. Tempter for the Lithuanian on the bottom, but he lets it go. Yeah, baby suited ace, deemed yeah. inadequate. <laughs> and the rich get richer. That tends to be the effect, provided that you take the initiative. And to this point, Dar, we really haven't seen anybody who's had the big stack look to get abusive, but it could be a function of the fact that 
deep comes in quotes. Mm. You know, it, it, nobody who is the big stack could really afford to get out there and begin to attempt to bludgeon the remainder of the field because the blinds just mercilessly kept pace. Yeah. Yeah, Chernikov, even though he's very loose, I did make the point earlier on commentary that he's not particularly aggressive. He just likes to play a lot of pots. So he's not the kind of guy who's going to pepper you with three bets and put a lot of pressure on post lap in spots where he doesn't have it necessarily. When Matt had doubled up to him, I thought maybe Matt might be the guy to do that, but then Matt seemed to just uh, hunker down and he was quite happy to... Uh, to um, Kind of coast for a while. Yeah, yeah, he played a lot tighter than, uh, when he actually had the stack than when he didn't. So it would have been a different story had we seen Panka get a stack or... Oh, I no doubt. Or held, I think. Um, we saw Chernikov call from the small blind with a queen nine suited flop top pair against held and then just check all three streets out of position wow uh, you know kind of a yeah weird incongruence if you will yeah yeah like i say he's not particularly aggressive post flop he has th that's not to say he's completely passive he has done a few bluffs he he bluffed um maybe some of the he bluffed early on the final table but on a river yeah, maybe against I'm telling you, you me like we can chill a bit. Yeah, it's the Lebanese yeah, pair, but uh, by and large, he's just played very straightforward post-lop, and he's actually been quite trappy with his big hands as well. Suited and connected in the hijack is the young Lithuanian. Taking it up. Those yellow chips, a million each. New arrivals to the final table. A7 for Chernikov in the big blind. And he will defend for an extra 600. Three point three in the middle to the flop we go. King ten five middle pair for Degteriovas. Chernikov is going to range bet this board. Um, the two high cards favor his range, although not his. Well, actually, in this case, he does actually have the ten, and Chernikov just does give up there. Yeah. He, he plays pretty straightforward. When he has nothing, he just check folds. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, <laughs> Lithuanian flashed the 10 there. <coughs> Being Lithuanian, he will be able to speak Russian to the Russians. Queen Jack suited. A couple clicks up from the 9 10 of clubs, which were serviceable. One suspects these will be as well. Once more, 1.2. An 8 and a 9 of clubs into the muck, along with a 4 of clubs as the prospects for a flush begin to dwindle. Chernikov with ace 10 of hearts, yep. certainly coming along. Yeah, and again, it's very much his style to just call here rather than to think about three betting. Orthodox who folds the 9-5 of spades, Dara. The price is somewhat attractive, though. Mm -hmm. You do need to play yep. some of those non-interfering combinations. Yep. And here you would have had second pair on a seven-high board. But, of course, somehow it is monotone and in all clubs as it's gin for Degteriovas. But Chernikov really yep. with nothing to proceed with. No. Suspect a snap fold here inbound. Yeah, he shrugs. I've got nothing I fold again. Um, Dead Shears went for a very small mm -hmm. bet there, 20% of posh, uh, um, which is a function of the board there on monotone yeah. boards. Yeah. 
Ace King for Barsegian. Russian speaker, but of Armenian descent. A lot of cultural overlap there. Product of the geography as much as anything else. Good discipline fold there from the Lithuanian. Yeah, don't want to get involved with the unsuited high card, low card hands. A lot of free looks being provided, by the way, here, Dar, yeah. and it sort of defies yeah. the gravity of the moment here. There's a lot of pay jumps left and a lot of data points that are being logged by yeah. the sharper side of the spectrum here that is yeah. going to recognize exactly what kind of ranges people are opening, what kind of ranges they're flatting and check folding with. Yeah. Yeah, they started early on the on the final table, and often it's the case that once the tone is set, everybody sort of joins in and starts showing. One man I haven't seen showing cards is held. Um, yeah. The man on screen there he won't be going with, well, maybe. It's a temperature, but he's under the gun. He's the whole table to get through, so he will fold. King. <laughs> Chernikov shoots it up to 1.2. Down to 11 big blinds. Pass. He passes, wow. Mm. <laughs> Just Ace good queen. <laughs> He's screaming <laughs> Ace queen. We saw that it was Ace five. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> do spiat. Ace five? Ace. Ace five. But I fall against him. Like, if you shove, I told you. Victor Se Victoria Savina in the if chat appealing for a like. Ah, yeah, we would greatly appreciate if you hit the like button if you're watching. It helps get the word out about the stream. If he followed, yeah, I will show. Like and subscribe. Like and for that subscribe. matter. Versus him, I'm not going to be friendly. Yeah. As we. Work to bring you. You know what I mean. Yeah. You're able to show any strong like streaming content from here in Karenia, sure Northern I mean, Cyprus. Ah, come on, <laughs> don't laugh at me. Like you're spinning up there. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> come on, like okay, you guys. don't mess with me, bro. <laughs> you know the range as well, like. <laughs> you got me, guys. Okay, Ma Malkasijan has found the hand that he was waiting for. Ace queen. He's shoving into another short stack. Held. And let's see what he's got. No, he's not interested, in whatever it was. 10 9 off. It doesn't make the grade. You can see these very experienced online pairs like Hell. They really don't have to think about these pre flop spots. They have their ranges pretty much nailed in, even with the complication of ICM. Uh -huh. Suited under yeah. the gun for Chernikov. Perfectly legitimate open when you are the chip leader. Yeah. Ace nine. Mm, tempter, but I think, yeah, it's just too early for him. There are three people behind. The lights. And the speed with which he operates in those sort of, sort of spots that maybe others might oh, yeah. deem cuspy no. really That's it is. Yeah. sort of galvanizes the sense that he is so comfortable with ranges. Yeah, he's an online step. beast. He knows exactly what the ranges are. So how does found the spot he was waiting for? Ace uh, 10. He's, okay, he's three bet, but he's effectively all in. Um, <laughs> yes and no, though, because he could certainly find his way into a check down situation against Chernikov, who's demonstrated that 
unimproved, he is willing and even improved <laughs> in a, in true, a major actually, way yeah. to just yeah. let you get there. This is true. Bottom pair actually, against top pair. Now that he's hit, he might be, he might be tempted to check. Such a weird spot. He obviously wasn't expecting just the flat. And he's decided, well, I have to show a quick call because Chernikov has a pair. Um, he, he's pulled ahead of lower pairs. He's ahead of King Queen. Those types of hands. Um, but he's in pretty bad shape because the hand held actually holds the ace 10. Mm -hmm. And this is a great chance now for the German to double. I got some time. Chernikov needs a queen or a nine. That's what help needs to fade, and he has done it. So the German's patience rewarded here. Luckily, I didn't go all in. Maybe he folds if I don't go if I go all in. Okay, he's joking there. He says, look, I didn't go in all pre flop He might have folded. I got the yellow one, so I'm okay to bust now. Um, That's a good one. Having a bit of fun there. Obviously, Chernikov was not going to fold getting 4-1 to pre-flop. It is remarkable just how resilient the short stack have uh, short stacks rather have been. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think for the online players, it's, it's it's actually easier because they know their ranges, so there's no uncertainty in their mind. They know what the right players are. If they lose, they lose. They know that they had made the right play. Whereas uh, cash game players sometimes or or even inexperienced live players often don't exactly have the ranges nailed in. So they have the tension of like, did I make a mistake when I folded there? Or was that hand I shoved actually a correct shove? It is rather intimidating as well when you come to, to recognize that somebody just has command over what they're doing yeah. here at the final table, not vacillating in any situation whatsoever. And yeah. Start to feel a bit outclassed at times. Ace, queen suited in the small for Barsegian. If we find Chernikov with the hand, this could be an interesting pot because these stacks are quite similar now after the last... Uh, yeah, in fact, Barsegian now covers Chernikov and Chernikov lets 8-5 suited go, which is interesting. He uh, doesn't want to tango with the Armenian. No, I, I think he recognizes that that's the one stack that could send him packing to be avoided as a result. Yeah. Ace Jack for Barsegian now on the button. Yeah. Raising into the two big, big stacks on the table. He does cover them both, but not by much. Oh, actually, no, sorry, it's orthodox in the big band. I thought it was uh, the young Lithuanian. Orthodoxy was quite short. Defend here would be defensible. One big blind with 9-7 suited. Orthodox who tends to agree. Unintrusive one gapper, and he flops a gutty and a flush draw up against top pair, top kicker. Yeah, this this could all go in here. Oh my God, him and his. Barsegian is definitely C batting this, and Orthodox who might decide to play his draw fast because it's nine high, and he has the gut shot. Yeah. He has moved all in. Snap, check, jam, Snap, and, and a call, call from Barsegian, of course. Wow. And it's basically a flip now. You can see the percentages on screen there. Look at the size of this pot, Dara. Suddenly, in the yeah. blink of an eye, 16.9 million. This is a huge spot for the uh, two short stacks as well, because one of the guy who's actually fourth in chips could... Oh, my son. He's hit his oh, and there's the five of diamonds. No waiting. Wow. He has his, his opponent dead. 60 million. Wow. Nothing would rescue the ace jack and the Cypriot with the double fist pump. 
Cyprus bear. Cyprus bear, yes. <laughs> My horse, the name is over the top. Over the top? My horse. Yeah. Ah, yes. Nice. Over the top? He's, he's an online player, no? I think maybe his real horse. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's some German humor going you on really there. You really have a horse? Like yeah. a real horse? Yeah, he's running. Nice Can we? <laughs> he's running in the race horse, right? Can we have a ride? Yeah. Yeah. There's a culture <laughs> clash here. Well, I, I didn't think the horse was at main valet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The online huh? pairs were suspecting he might mean a, oh, a, a player he staked in the sense of horse, but he means an actual so race horse. Over the top? <laughs> when, you, when you see two races, yes, make a bet. I didn't if you that there is a track. If you, if you can. Thank you. Over the top. So setback there for Barca again. That pulls him back and levels the stacks up again. Some parody. Journey beginning Cove. to take shape. Chernikov has really picked up a lot of hands recently. It looked like he gave serious consideration to playing the 9 6 suited there, but let it go in the end. And the Lithuanian will fold the Queen 5 off. So invigorating to suddenly be crowned with a 17 million chip stack after yeah. really. Kind of having to sit back and spectate. Yeah. He's been super short at different points in this final table, but so long as you hang in there, anything can happen. That's the extent of the motivational speaking we'll be providing during this <laughs> broadcast. <laughs> yeah. So about 7 million. Hmm? About 7 million. Yeah. Now, um, Orthodoxo yeah, has a very routine open on the button. Gonna flex. Brings it in for the men. Interesting spot for Lithuanian. Huh? You can Two fours in the small, yeah. Dara. Yeah. Sides to call. This is a standard play. Sometimes we forget that you're allowed to flat call at the, you know, in these stages of the tournament. Yeah. You think you either have to fold or three bet yeah. or jam. Yeah, and that's oh, another thing which has come from the solvers. Right? It used to be considered a donkey play to call, particularly from the small blend, but uh, it's perfectly viable. Um, <laughs> now, Orthodoxo has two overs and a gut shot. So Action checked over to him. King yeah. of clubs working as well. Yeah, the fours won't get stubborn here. Three over cards. Three too many. Yeah. So suddenly momentum beginning to mount in the Cypriot seat. You happy I'm not here? <laughs> or you missed me? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Maybe it would have been better to stay away. Huh? Maybe it would have been better to stay away. You will see now. Wait. Maybe I will see. Wait. Ace Queen for Barsigian. Kind of unfamiliar territory for him here. Sub 10 million. Yeah. But the blinds where they <laughs> are, it's only 16 bigs. He's like, what do I do? He's using a time bank here. This is interesting. I guess this is, yeah, this is not as trivial as the spot looks. 
He's trying to decide between shove and raise here. He's, he's gone for the shove. Yeah. Didn't want to raise call or raise fold. So that only leaves one option, shove. Deuces into the muck. That is the advantage of the shove. You fold out some flips. Unscathed. Love easy decisions, huh? Mm -hmm. You love easy decisions. Me? Me too. Easy fold. Easy For me, like, I'm a fast player, you know? Yeah, I mean, I still have plenty. Yeah, look how many I got. Oh, who is more? Three, four, five, <laughs> all of them, I have. eight I have. Five, six, I have six. Six? Five. Five? <laughs> How old are I'm you? I'm too weak. What do you think? Thirty something. That's great. To Doxu, who I believe is now the chip lead. Oh, wow, that is a tight fold. Ace nine off suit and with didn't even give it a beat, yeah, Dara. With the, with the chip lead. <laughs> Perhaps some clairvoyance, though, <laughs> would have been running into this. Yeah. He's basically committed himself to Yeah, here. effective jam from yeah. Melchizedekian's ace king. We've seen it on a number of occasions players opting to turn down hands that we suspected should have been getting in there and instead. Yeah avoid catastrophe and now catastrophe is potentially on the horizon for Barsegian who is in the big blind recognizes that the range for Melchizedian off of this depth is yeah. going to be broad this is super close this is super <laughs> super close for chip EV this is a call but it's not a chip EV situation it's ICM so that's complicating matters yeah and he's made the call and amazing spot for Melchizedek. Not only is he ahead, but we know that the a nine has been folded. 13.5 million chip pot. Huge spot for both players. Barsegan, not too long ago, was cruising as the chip leader. Now he could be cut down to short stack if he loses this, and he's well behind. And conversely, might Melky Setian be able to loosen his collar? Finally, two deuces and a jack. Chop outs for Barsegian. Two actual nines remain. They don't show up on the turn. Looking to fade the deuce five, jack or nine. And the ace king has done it. In a sense, Barsegian is very unlucky there because the way the hand is supposed to, in inverted commas, play out is the chip leader is supposed to open the ace nine. Right. The ace king is then supposed to jam, and he has a very trivial fold in the big blind then with ace nine. And Melchizedek um, actually doubles true uh, orthodoxy instead of him. You think I'm lying? No, 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 the you're not scared. The only time I lied was when I said I had aces when I folded. You're not? Really, you had it? I checked nine off. That hand? Yeah. Really? Uh, no way. Why you said aces? I wanted to make sure I got good image for time and heavy, you know? But now it doesn't matter. Fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Fun thing, <laughs> really? Yeah. You're crazy sick. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> retard. I knew, I, I fucking knew you, you're doing something. It's like Justice Held is out a mea culpa moment right. there with yeah. He's saying I, that, that time I pretended I had aces, actually only I had jack nine. <laughs> His justification was wonderful too. He said I wanted a tight image for the final table, but now it doesn't matter. Oh, and look at this. Oh, yeah, oh, he was so short not, not long ago. <laughs> Tides feel like they might have turned here for... Oh, this could be trouble for Hell. This is a tempter. This is a tempter. Especially given the context, right? Melky Sedian has been desperate to be able to partake in some of this yeah. action at this table. Now he's gifted 13 and yeah. a half million. 
and you can't blame Justice Held for thinking that maybe he's feeling it and just getting a little oh. out of line. He jams Chernikov in the big blind with Ace Jack. He's not, he's not going to fold his Ace Jack, I don't think. 8.3, I the, think. The nines are going to be a tough spot if Chernikov jams. You called? He can't Ooh. possibly. He has called. He just called, he and now... Now the nines have folded. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I passed. He called you. 8.3, he called you. I'm, I'm snapping you, by the way, for yeah, sure. Yeah, of course yeah, he's snapping with nines awesome. against just held, but against once Chernikov I mean, comes uh, in the pot, he folds. Well, it's kind of cool possible. because... It's possible, but... While Melchizedian certainly had the Not shot now, at a yeah. triple like if he were to do something savage, bust, bro. Yeah. like call, he's able to allow Chernikov to take the you, risk huh? here. Yeah, because you yeah. bluffed me. That's Absolutely. the kind of you lied about it. Said it earlier. Uh, shouldn't have said it. Ace Jack oh. holding on the ten high board. He's getting his bag. Wow, what a roller coaster. Turn does provide wheel outs for a chop. But still, situation is grim for Justice Held. Can he find a seven or a three? No. It's the six of diamonds, and he wraps the table emphatically. Will be missed. Should we'll be, be missed. said, Dara. Yeah, will be missed. He would be my pick as the uh, most technically proficient player at the final table. Um, not his day, didn't run well. That was a good spot to go for. He was just unlucky to run into the ace jack behind. And the Russian bear again. Yeah. Collecting the remainder of Justice Held's tokens. As he will head to the cage. There's a check with $75,400 awaiting him. As the field now plays for 93,300 five-handed. Just look at the breakdown. Milky City, and despite doubling, still sits fourth. Yeah. Barsegian down to just seven bigs. Yeah, he was our trip leader not so long ago. Now he's by far the shortest act. In fact, he's so short that even if he doubles, he's still the shorty. Okay, fuck it, <laughs> Yeah, like I have to fold. Uh -huh, okay. No? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I say I'm worried. By the way, if the nines were in there, they would have tripled. I think. Ten, oh, not tripled, think but. Nobody hit, no. No. Yeah, you're right, yeah. It would have held yeah, on that 10 held. high board. Yeah. Jack's queens I would not fold. Yeah, and the butterfly yeah. effect of Barsegian now making the move with 9-6 and I yeah. think that's a true that's a huge result for him adding one and a half million when you only have four just over four million it's for other I was touching on the butterfly effect, which you alluded to, of Orthodoxus's decision not yeah. to open the pot, which, of course, had he done, there would have been a three bet in front and an escape for Barsegian instead. He is left. Oh, he's moving all in again here. Yeah, to try to reclaim some of the lost tokens. He knows his decision here, but he's balancing the times when he does actually have to think. And Jams again. with the ace queen. Orthodoxu in the small with a six. Yeah, that's a good quick fold there. Oh, wait. this is a call though. Two sevens in the big. How much? Five seven. Just checking how much it is. Yeah. ICM is a factor, but I think he oh. will eventually come to the decision. It, and oh. he yeah, he makes a pretty quick call. Yeah, sure does. Uh, suggesting he knew exactly what was the right way to go. Yeah. The spin and go specialist going to have command over ranges as we've touched on. Yeah, yeah he's going to be particularly good in those button small blind big blind spots. 54% favorite here. We could be losing the guy who was chip leading not so long ago. They're playing for 12.3 million, and Barsegian is behind. Needs help. Doesn't get it. But that's a bad flop. Even if he hit his ace or queen, there, there's a lot of kill outs now for the sevens. Open ended is the leader. Spade on the turn, and we remove two of the outs. 
that the ace queen had. The ace of spades and queen of spades. And it is four outs once for the Armenian to stay alive. Is it there? No. The king of diamonds and Degterovis will collect the remainder of the Barsegian chips. Good sportsmanship being shown here. Obviously, tremendously disappointing outcome for him. But he did manage to secure the pay jump as Justice Held found the exit just before him. I like the club. <laughs> 18K. And just like that, we are going to be four-handed. Can't really fault him too much, Dara. I nope. didn't see anything that suggested that the wounds were self-inflicted. Not at all. He played absolutely flawlessly in my view. He can be really proud of his performance there. It just wasn't his day. And obviously that's the way the cookie crumbles from time to time here in tournament poker as just four remain in the main event. The first of four six-figure paydays has been secured. And really for me, the most notable of the participants right now has to be Melchisetian who just nursed a small stack Pay ladder after pay ladder, card dead, patient, milky, yeah. and rewarded for the effort. And who knows what the future holds for the oh, Lebanese no. delegate. Yeah. I believe we have a new chip leader as well. Um, and interesting side note, the ICM is absolutely massive now uh, because with four left, the pay jump from third to second is actually the biggest remaining pay jump. A limp and a check back as we take the ace 5 4 board. He would bet this board a lot because he has more aces in his limping range. Um, El Cassidian will raise almost all of his aces, maybe even all of his aces in the big blind over the limp. So this bet is not so much about the fact that he's hit the four as there's an ace on board. Bottom pair in the wheel gutty, firing 600,000. Little lick of the lips there and a glance down at his stack. Time bank being used here. Yeah, King High's pretty strong here. Uh, hard to make a pair, as they say. And if your opponent doesn't have a pair, your King High figures to be good. And that's why he's taking his time here. It's a small bet as well. It's only one third pot. Raised to 1.6, Dara, and you're starting to see kind of what Melchizedian has wanted the ability to do for the entirety of this final table, which is sort of flex, maybe make a few moves. Yeah. Of course, Ernestus not going to go anywhere for the time being. No, he's got a pair and a gut shot. Oh, wow. The king on the turn. Melchizedian hits the best hand. Neither player with the flush draw. He might Do you favor down. a check back? Yeah, he might slow down now. Yeah, he slowed down because he basically has pulled ahead a lot of the calls and an ace to listen to Oh, like wow. Oh, my lord. So Now, an awful run out for the king nine, which yeah. pulled ahead briefly. But four hearts and four to a wheel on board, both presenting issues and do you think we're going to see a little block bet coming out of Dekteriovas, or? It's a tricky spot. Um, the answer is no. The answer is no. Like, you're, he, he has a particularly bad straight, and but no hearts. No hearts. That's the reason he didn't bet. Go on. F uh, you were embarking on the thought. Yeah. Uh, b uh, no hearts. So he's losing, he's losing to any heart, and he, he only has the the bad four-liner, so his straight isn't even particularly strong. So it's hard for his hand, if he bets it, to get called by worse. Um, but if he checks, he might induce a bluff, or he might get a thin value bet from a worse hand. <laughs> In those spots, you're always comparing two ranges. You're comparing the range. What, what will he bet if I check? And what will he call if I bet? Um, and 
it's it's your evaluation of those two ranges that determines whether you have a check call or a lead. It's almost unfortunate that he hit the king on the turn because had he not, he might have been far more incentivized to bet in position Absolutely. on the arrival yeah. of the fourth heart. Yeah, I think he was probably firing again on the turn. Um, but he did pick up showdown, so Please. it was the correct decision. He had pulled ahead of everything except an ace, and an ace wasn't going to fold. And just too much showdown value to turn his hand into a bluff, he deemed, yeah. on the river. But, yeah. but yeah, again, no point betting the river. Yeah. Raise and take it with the two threes. How much here? 24. 24. And you? About 20. 20. And you, how much you got? I know. 23. 23. I mean, I was 25. I should be. 25, 200. 16. You? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think. Do you guys want to check numbers or something? About no, 10. Yeah. A, bit, a bit more. Ask them if they want. I don't mind to check numbers. I don't know if they huh? knew what is this. What? I don't know if they knew what is this. <laughs> check for the numbers. <laughs> I will ask them. Do you want to check numbers? Like we can. Or you want to play? We play? Uh, now we finish the game. Uh, uh, English. Uh, uh, English. Uh, uh, Chernikov is actually the chip leader. I thought it was the Lithuanian, but Chernikov still has well over 20 million. Seems to be some discussion of a deal. Yeah, it does feel that they're... It would make sense. Four stacks are relatively, uh, relatively equal. You want to check? Looks like we might be going on an unscheduled break. Might be looking to find out, based on the remaining prize pool, what exactly the ICM chop would look like at present. And you pointed out, Dara, that... It is a little bit gambly for a lot of money yeah. for all four of these guys right now. The sort of gamble that I would imagine they're not all together accustomed to. As you look at those chip counts, 18 bigs, the shallowest of stacks, 40 bigs, the largest of them. As we welcome you back inside the commentary booth here at the Merritt Crystal Cove, home to Merritt Poker and the Merritt Poker Western Series. Final table right now, unscheduled break on our hands, Dara. And of course, the story, it has to be said, is that of the Lebanese uh, player, Ara Melchisedian, who finally was able to just break free and double up and is really kind of asserting himself here. It would, it would feel to me like a disappointment if they did decide to chop it and only play for a little bit because I'm eager to see how he's going to approach the situation from here forward. Yeah, he's played the short stack very patiently, very disciplined. Um, we've also seen the elimination of two of the more skilled players uh, with the last two eliminations, Held and Bargesian. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of opened it up as well. Um, so yeah, it, it will be interesting to see what happens now. Yeah, well, we're going to have a few minutes of an unscheduled break here at the final table, but we will return with hopefully no deal, <laughs> as I selfishly <laughs> speak about it. Stay close. More coverage of the main event final table from here in Karenia, Northern Cyprus after this. We don't want anyone to leave the party quite yet. Yeah, it always feels a bit weird if you uh, if you last only one hand on a final table. It's almost like you were never there. So he is favourite. People call this a flip, but the the pair is a uh, decent enough favourite. Oh, 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 oh. um, well, still a flip. Nice. Yeah, he's got to fade the flush now. He's act it's, a f it's actually flipped the uh, percentages 
Chernikov is now favourite. So many outs. So many outs indeed. At least Doroshkov has a queen of hearts, which is one less heart, but that's a good turn card for Doroshkov. He's taking it in good humour, but this is a sweaty moment. And, and he does a hold. Very much a quesera, whatever it will be. Yeah. Rice smile from Doroshka before that river was dealt. Little yeah. bit of relief there. Yeah, well, there's nothing you can do really in that spot. You just have to wait. The deck is going to decide. And we're about to play the final hand of this level, Dara. It has been an eventful. One, two, three, four, not professional. <laughs> You are professional, my friend. Oh. I'm playing spin and go, if you know. Oh, me, I have the <coughs> shop. Melchizedian <laughs> releasing the trees. We've seen him very ICM aware here, Dara. Obviously, yeah. short stack, but shorter ones about. Yeah. He's proceeding very cautiously. Held on the other hand, 12 million, First and sort of gets table. to play Both into all these short stacks, put them yeah, in an ICM playing. coffin. Like yeah. Is he going to go with this as an open? It's an interesting sort of hand category to consider it. Yeah, he might be perceived as very, very tight, but he has decided to <laughs> let it go. I mean, his whole game plan, it's, 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 it's already very clear. He's just going to try and gradually hoover up all the chips okay, without anybody right. noticing until he has them all. Well, Doroshkov, short stack here, yeah. king seven suited. He's going to make his move. Seven big blinds is enough to go Two with. Barsagan's got a... This is close. No, that Tricky was little one. Break. That, was, that was lunch break, what you're talking about. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of chat Listen, off the table break. while talk about the break coming up there, whether it's a lunch, dinch, dinner break or not. Thank you. I guess when you're in an all inclusive resort, you would like uh, longer breaks. Chernikov's <laughs> going with this, Dara. Yeah, Chernikov is not a man who'll ever fall king queen for seven big blinds. No, and he, and he very aware that he will dominate some of the range, Dara Ushkov. Obviously, will go with queen jacks, queen ten no. suited, king yeah. jacks, that type of thing. Great call there from Chernikov. Unfortunate for Doroshkov to be dominated here. Battle of the Russians. The <laughs> He's not even standing up. Look at this. The Russian bear is hungry. The Russian bear is standing up ready to do his victory flex if he wins. Doroshkov sitting down, cool as a cucumber, composing himself for the next hand if he's still in the tournament. And that's a terrible flop for him. He's all but shuts the door on Doroshkov now. He's going to have to hit a runner, runner straight now, or we will lose our first player. And that is it. We say goodbye to Doroshkov in ninth place. He cashes for 37k. <laughs> Played superbly well, it must be said, Dara. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure why Chernikov needed to point out. For my journey home. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but for very different reasons. I was hoping perhaps some of the local talent might <laughs> might be interested in a visit to the States, David, you know? I'm happy to be a tour guide. Barsegian opens with two eights to 900,000. Again, deuces find the mug. Queen Jack in the cutoff. Folded quite easily. A few more days. Don't lose hope yet. Oh, what makes you think that Plans have not been hatched. Oh. <laughs> they haven't. <laughs> Ace 10 in the big blind for Panka now. Got himself at 4.4 million. Boy, this is obviously not a hand he's going to want to fold. But was it one that he wanted to jam? The answer we now have. And it is yes. These spots are so interesting because clearly it's a call if everyone's deeper, but it's so much of Barsegian stack, everyone's shallower. It has such an impact 
on the ranges. Barsegian, I don't think, would consider folding a hand as strong as eights to Dominic Panka if this was a 11 and a half big blind rejam in situations where they were both deep or where one of them was deep or he was deep. He does call anyway. We're going to the races. We sure are. And this is a healthy 10.1 million chip pot. You see Panka. <laughs> Like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons, just wrapping his fingers around. <laughs> his fate hanging in the balance, on his feet, sunglasses off, hoping that he's going to haul this one in. Two overs against the two eights, and King Jack five. Neither player with a club on the monotone texture, but plenty of outs acquired for Panka. Four queens, to be specific. Beyond the ace and ten, he was always hunting. As he has ten outs at present. Blank turn card. And now it is ten outs once for Penka. For whom the bell tolls, can he connect and double through Barsegian? The answer is no. Mr. Beauty succumbs to the beast. Barsegian there. Sporting lap around the table as he bids adieu to the rest of the field. Will collect tidy. Eighth place, absolutely top end of their range, but do so not always authentically. Indeed. Levels on levels. Mm -hmm. Oh, and again, a wired... Big pocket pair for Deg T. Avis. Oh my goodness, he has been a bit of a card rack, but boy, has he played his hands well also. Min Rays, not tipping his hand whatsoever. Now Queen Jack suited for Serge Mata, the short stack in the cutoff. And yeah, you can kind of feel he wants to get in there. Does flat off of 2.6, David. Might yeah. this give him an out if he's unimproved on the flop? Yeah, I'm wincing at that one. We saw him flat off 12 bigs earlier. I think we might have seen him flat off 16 or 17 bigs right at the start of this final table. I don't like these flats. Oh, well, <laughs> okay, well. Top two pair, and what... A fortuitous development this is for Mata. Now, granted, had he jammed, the money was always going to be getting in. And how much of this 1.8 is going to be on request? Just 700 of it. A jam from Mata. Snap call from Deg Tiriovis. And he's going to realize improbably that he is behind. So sick. So sick, he's thinking. What are you doing in there in the first place? And now, so sick. All in. The action was fast on the flop. It just went bet, shove, call in an instant. Dealer just gathering herself. Now, a deuce or a four would counterfeit the queens and jacks. Ace would work as well. Six and a quarter million in the middle. And the river is safe for Serge Mata. Ernestas is frustrated. <laughs> yeah, the spin and go maestro is... Certainly incredulous, it would, it would seem. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, and Melka Sedian does have a hand. <laughs> Yeah. 1.7. 1.7 race. I think Helt I may decide to be the sheriff here. 
He has made the call. Oh, <laughs> look at this. The bazooka right on cue for Chernikov. And he's going to be able to just vanquish Held with ease. How much? I mean, in context, this hand has to be so unbelievably good. <laughs> Creating a dry side. Well, some posturing from Held here, but he's never calling. No, 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 no. I'm falling. You fall. I'm not all in. Jesus Moment of panic. <laughs> <laughs> the all in, of course, was Melchisedian. And how frustrating is it going to be, given how patient he's been, for him to find the best hand that he's had in an orbit or two at least? And running into aces, but not short on optimism, is he? Well, Queen Jack managed to beat aces earlier, flopping top two. And for Melchizedian, the king on the flop is a very welcome development as he now has five outs moving forward. The three of diamonds not among them, though. And the light begins to flicker at the end of his tunnel. Can he hit a king or an eight? Oh, he can! oh my goodness me! A I binky. Told you, I told you. I told you. I'm a fighter. I told you from yeah, the beginning. You don't you believe me. The, you seem the. You almost came. <laughs> four. Almost gave up. Why? <laughs> four up. King Queen now for Barsegian's button. And we should see a, a little bit more of a free flow, I think, David, now that Malkisedian's stack is no longer really just kind of on the precipice of being rendered. All in. All in. And might this be an example of just that? Yeah, you called it there, and this is close with King Queen. Orthodox who ripping in 6.1 plus. I think you can probably just about let it go. Orthodox who's been pretty snug. Did but he make the call? It looks like uh, he it has seems like he call. has, yeah. And on their feet. Big moment. So Barsegian obviously can afford to make this call. And they're going to play a 13 million chip pot. Orthodox whose fate hanging in the balance. Burn down. Three off the top of the stub. And the flop. Two hearts. So let's take the king and the queen of hearts off the board for Barsegian. Good news for the man who is all in and at risk. Just fading four cards. Paint there, that's a little spooky. Gut shot acquired as we add three tens. Total of seven outs that you need to dodge and the ace on the river. Orthodoxu with the double, a little fist pump for his rail. How do you feel about Barsegian making the call with the king queen? Perhaps be a bit more entertaining. Yeah. And I yes. King as maybe queen. give me your chips. I as only well. do 80-30s. <laughs> only play like this. I race. I appreciate held breaking. What obviously are my perhaps subconscious stereotypes of the German affect in, <laughs> in and out of poker here with. Wow, well, this could be an interesting clash. Yeah, the King Jack running into two nines in the big. How much really level two, in four, stacks six, as well. Seven, seven point five, one, two, three, four, five, eight, eight point seven, eight point eight, and twenty five. Five, four, four. 
only gonna ask for it then. Then you play a hand. <laughs> <laughs> ace ace five. Interesting texture here is obviously plenty of ace x is in held's opening range. But nines are a lot of hand on this board. A very polite deposit. What looks like five hundred thousand. Yeah, the bare minimum, definitely the right bet size on this texture. Of course, the call from Ernestus, and this turn is not one that rates to be of any concern for him as he checks a second time. Bit of a fork in the road for Held. Is he going to look to tell the tale on three streets? <coughs> the answer is promptly no, the check back. Backdoor clubs arrive. Really a dynamite run out for the nines. Block bet inbound. Yeah, betting one big blind yourself here might be sort of interesting. Held can't beat anything, I don't think. So, okay. The warmest of welcome backs to the Merritt Crystal Cove Hotel Resort Casino. David Lappin back in the booth. Gonna take you home, I think alongside Dara O'Carney. Yeah, look very much looking forward to taking it, to taking it home with you, David. Um, You're going to take me home, Dara? Yeah, I will make sure that you get home safe and sound. <laughs> you can rely on me. You, look how look how uh, bunch still stacks are now. Yeah, a big change from when I was last in the booth, probably less than one hour ago. Serge Mata, Justice Held, and uh, Barsagian. Well, Barsagian was in great Nick at that point. Dara, what happened to him over that hour? He just lost every all-in and they were all cool. One of them was quite unlucky. Uh, um, Orthodoxy, who had just inherited the chip lead, decided not to play Ace-9 off in the cutoff, which was a very unusual decision. And Ace-King raised on the button and Barsegian, uh, the Ace-King was short, so Barsegian stuck it in with Ace-9 in the big blinds. Had the hand played out the normal way, it would have been the Ace-9 opens, the Ace-King shoves, and then he folds the big blind. So... That was unlucky, and yeah, he just lost all of the all-ins. Sort of interference by absence. Yeah, yeah. Orthodox who had just got a big double, and obviously had decided he was, he was going to sit on his chips for a while. Well, with that misfortune brings us to <laughs> four-handed play. Very much the end game. Not necessarily going to be a rapid fire affair now with those bust outs. Obviously, stacks have deepened somewhat. A reminder what these guys are playing for. Everyone guaranteed $124,600. Third will get $168,400. Second, $274,500. And first prize, well, the title first of all, and $372,800. Dara? First prize money, pretty tasty up there. Players like a trophy on their mantle, maybe in their trophy cabinet. I know you're a man with multiple trophy cabinets. You've been <laughs> top of the pile in many endeavors in your life. But um, what do you think matters more in these situations? Trophy, title, or $372,800. Um, I'm going to go with the money in this spot, but it kind of depends on who you are and what your priorities in life are. Like, if you're a very rich businessman and the money might not mean very much to you and winning a poker tournament, you might never do that again in your life. Uh, conversely, you could be a recreational player. The money could could be would be nice but yeah. maybe you no, want uh, the trophy but for oh, yeah, yeah. for grizzled I old professionals like us um I the day too i'm all about the benjamins yeah. you're all about the benjamins yeah i mean are we going to tell the um yeah. no there's no reason to start bringing up okay. uh, stories about <laughs> okay. the uh, the disdain i have for trophies <laughs> on occasion I, I think that would be uh, it would only serve to ruin the occasion yeah um uh, we don't know whether a deal was done or not uh, we heard ali before uh, speculate that they were going off to discuss a deal. We haven't got any word. 
I guess we'll know from how they play. Um, I have to say, personally, if I was either Detiverius or, um, yeah, if I, I particularly if I was him, I don't think I would be looking to deal. But it depends on how much this means to him in terms of his bankroll as well. Yeah, as we see him play it apart against the ever dangerous Chernikov in the big blind who defends the ace four of space, as well he might. He has flopped best, but Dektiari Ovas will be emboldened to fire a C bet on what appears to be his board. Yep, absolutely. Small C bet here. That'll get the job done most of the time. Under 20% this time he went. Yeah, most of the time is not this time. No. However, with Chernikov lurking the ace four here in the big blind. There will be some jack X in his range that maybe Degtiari Ovas would target. Given that it's button versus big blind, I think he would be well suited to maybe take the foot off the gas here. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think he's going for the bet, but I think this might be a mistake. I, I, I honestly don't think Chernikov would even fold a jack here. Yes, um, exactly. He is sticky. Yeah. He goes for a big sizing. I guess if you are going to go for a bet, a big sizing is the right sizing yeah. to go for. Yeah, I mean, this does put pressure on for sure. Now he might feel obliged to triple barrel because apart from anything else, clubs have missed. Well, Chernikov with a bluff catcher, but may feel like his opponent has a lot of bluffs. Yeah, this is a tricky spot. In theory, this is a, this, I think this is absolutely a triple barrel spot because this is still his board. But in practice, I would be very wary against Chernikov. The Russian bear doesn't like to fold much. I think he's going to come with a big bet, Dara. He's, he's coming with, come the, time with the time back for now. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of ways you can go. It, it depends on what you're trying to target to fold. If you, if you want to get a jack to fold, the big bet should get the job done, even against Chernikov. If you only want a busted flush draw that you're worried might be a king high flush draw. Um, or indeed a 10 high or 8 high. Or a 10 high or 8 high that have hit, that's hit, hit a pair. So he, in the end, he decided not to bluff. and um, Probably relieved. I think he would realize Chernikov, the type of guy who would go to war with an ace and a bad kicker in that spot. Yeah, for sure. And to be honest, it's not. it wouldn't, it wouldn't even be a bad call because... In these wide range situations, top pair, even with a very bad kicker, is a very strong hand. Not just because you've got top pair, but also because you're blocking your opponent's top pair. There's only other two aces left in the deck. Good analysis there. That last hand notwithstanding, Dara, a question I posed to Ali earlier on um, was just how much a player with a propensity or a specialization, I suppose is a better <coughs> way of putting it, in spinning goes, would feel about the prospect of short-handed but also short-handed shallow stack play that's basically what he does for a living it is yeah the only difference is in spin and goals there's no um icm uh -huh. and 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 in this particular setup the icm is particularly extreme three-handed because of the rather large jump from third to second so that's the only winkle but i'm sure i mean he's played superbly he seemed to know his ranges in every spot um so i definitely don't think he's clueless in icm terms no far from it um, we saw him make some big correct folds uh, for ICM, so um, yeah, no, he just seems like a really good all-round player. Yeah, no, range is glued on, i got to say. There was a, a, a fairly innocuous spot which passed without, I think, any comment um, very close to the end of the, the last segment I was here for, where he just folded sixes under the gun off like 24 bigs when there was stacks of... 12, 13, 6 bigs behind him and just didn't think anything of it just snap folded under the gun, no yeah. interest yeah, yeah. no that's exactly it and then there were other spots where he was opening 10-9 suited um, but again, the correct open um, whereas we have seen some um, inconsistent play let's say from uh, some of the older school players Melka Seti in 15 big blinds in the cutoff here Ooh. no blockers this is this is um high wire the lack of blockers is an How issue much? eight something hmm. i don't think this is ever a call here the queen jack suited no. for 15 bigs just too much maybe a tempter for 10 bigs not for yeah. this amount you are 
Yeah, it's most of your stock, two thirds of your stock as well. Even stock. Worth noting here, Ara. Melkasetian cockroached his way into 700 play. Yeah, absolutely. And at one point, he was he was in amazing shape, um, four hand, five handed. Yeah, just refused to die, refused to die. Do you know what? Reminiscent of an O'Carney <laughs> short stack navigation through this final table. I've seen you do something similar many, many times, Dara. I think yeah. you, I think if you'd seen him throughout this, I know you've been in and out of the booth, but I think if yeah. you'd watch, you would almost maybe feel a um, kindred, a spirit. familial relationship with yeah. him. Like a, yeah. I know you like to make I a lot of poker players your like poker yeah. sons. Yeah. I think yeah. you might have like found another one here. A Lebanese yeah. poker son. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Small, small pair. Yeah. Small. He said he had a small pair there. Again, this has been a feature of this table. They're 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 not um, unwilling, let's say, to reveal their holdings, and generally quite honest about them. There was one quite funny moment uh, near the end of uh, Hell's stay at the table where he turns to his neighbour and said, "That time I told you had ace, I had aces on the second house table. I actually had jack nine." <laughs> I just say. Health's personality came out more and more. Yeah. The more sort of tense it became, seven-handed, yeah. the more sort of tippy-tappy, everyone short, everyone strangled. I think the line I said to Ali was it was like the oxygen had been taken out of the room. The more he felt the onus to sort of lighten yeah. things up <laughs> with some banter. And I have to say it was good banter. Yeah, it was good banter, yeah. 1.5. And uh, yeah, his, his neighbor asked him, why are you telling me now? And he said, well, I want you to have a tight image for the, uh, for the final table, but now it doesn't matter. <laughs> Now it's just going to be a function of who wakes up with hands. We're all yeah, so exactly. Short. Yeah, we're all playing our ranges now. We have 15 big blinds. It is what it is. Ten big. I had Queen Jack, of course, suited, but 15 too much. As we zoom out for a moment there to take a look at the impact of that last big hand there, Deg Tiariovas obviously. Um, deciding to fight fire with fire at some level there in a battle against Chernikov. Uh, he did go for the second barrel with the no equity bluff and it didn't go well for him. Chernikov picked up those chips up to 31 million now, 42% of the overall chips in play. Pole position, Dara, actually, that's quite a cool situation when we consider that anomaly within our payout structure here of actually yeah. quite high ICM. Yeah during a period where normally the ICM is starting to ease off ever so slightly. Yeah, normally four-handed the ICM is, is significantly less than nine-handed, eight-handed, but because of this weird um, hot, big pay jump from third to second, it actually starts to rise again um, as you start to approach that particular pay jump. Well, our good pal and colleague Barry Carter did tweet out there as we began this final table that there would be a lesson, a free lesson, dare I say, in ICM uh, for anyone wanting to watch the coverage. I hope we provided it to some extent here. Dara O'Carney, obviously the main man when it comes to understanding all the nuances of the independent chip model. All that risk premium implications. All the risk premiums and bubble factors, yep. All those lovely words. Um, speculation in the chat that they have done a deal. As I said, we uh, we genuinely don't know. We haven't been told anything. Certainly wouldn't assume it from what we've seen since. Nobody's flinging their chips in. No, and in fact, um, nice tweet from our friend uh, Jason Smith. Said they all look really sad since they came back from the deal, no deal bar, etc. The buzz has gone from the table. You're going to earn your wages tonight, kids. <laughs> <coughs> so, Chernikov in the small band. How's he going to proceed here with the King 10? He's going to 3 exit Dara, and that will get the job done. Yep. A quick raise and take it there against Orthodoxu. A point I want to bring up here, actually, and this is an interesting one, I feel. There's a psychological number that I think a lot of players come into a final table sort of feeling like, well, I'll be content with that. Yeah. If I get third, if I get fourth, if I get into the top six, maybe you have different aspirations based on mm. how you begin the final mm. table, what position you're in. But I think that is certainly a factor we see sometimes. It can be a catastrophic mistake to sort of take your eye off the ball when you consider 
Yes, OK, you might have locked up that number, that sort mm -hmm. of special figure in your head that was going to buy you the new car or whatever it happens to be. But actually, in reality, 800. there's far more money on the line the deeper we go. There is, yeah. Each page, apart from this unusual structure, in general, each page jump gets bigger than the last. And yet you do have this thing where people hit their number and now they just kind of relax at a point where they should actually become more vigilant. Um, I think it's very dangerous to set a number that you're happy with. Anytime I've made a big final table live, I ha I've deliberately not done that. In fact, generally the numbers don't register with me. I just look at the shape of the payouts and that determines the ICM and we have a big hand here and all in and a call, wow. Look at this. So Melchizedian obviously feeling like Ace-8 was good enough for all of it. Orthodox who wakes up with the super premium behind. Mm, this is a huge spot now. There's no eight there. Are we maybe saying goodbye to Melchizedian? He's taking it in good spirit. Well, mm, some chop some opportunities chops, now. Yeah. He's down to 7%, down but there's 13% chop. A 4, a 10, an 8 to stay alive. <laughs> no. The king seals his fate. He's played superbly. Thank um, you. And we're Thank down to three-handed now. Yeah, I made reference earlier on today to how he impressed me, more than most actually, by folding. And I, and I don't mean that facetiously whatsoever, yeah. Daryl. What we basically saw was he was faced with spots over and over and again that were right on the cusp of a range that you might consider going with, and he turned each of them down. Yeah. Congratulations to that man. Yeah, yeah he had one, one spot um, five-handed where he opened pocket nines and Hell decided to go with ace seven suitors on the button he shoved. And then Chernikov woke up with ace jack and he called and he instantly released his nines. Now, I believe that was the correct fold, but had he called there, he would have actually held and he would have been a massive chip leader. Um, sliding doors moment. That was the sliding doors moment, yeah. We've had a few of them on this table. Matter earlier on comes to mind when he we, well, we assumed he was inducing the jacks, but actually folded them. Would have yeah. been up against tens. That was his moment. Yeah. As Orthodoxu, straight back in the mix here now. Three-handed play, Dara. Dare I say it's a spin and go? <laughs> it's a spin and go, but with massive ICM. <laughs> it's a jackpot sit and go, spin and go. <laughs> Yeah, a million for first, hundred for second. Actually, it's it's worse than that, <laughs> it though. Is wor it is worse. So, a Russian, a Cypriot, and a Lithuanian walked, walked in, into a poker room. Walked into a poker room with an all-you-can-eat, all-inclusive. Yeah, we very strange stage of the tournament now. Assuming they haven't done a deal, ICM is absolutely massive now. But after there's one more elimination, there's no more ICM. Yeah. Do you think these guys are aware of that wrinkle? It took us a few days to figure it out. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. Chernikov, you feel is 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 very much in the screw ICM mode. He's he's just going to go for it all. Um, Thank you for using the word screw, by the way. A lot uh, of people. I, uh, I almost let the word the, the the other word out there. Um, and as you said, the Lithuanian is a spin and go player where there's no uh, where there's no ICM, but he is obviously ICM aware. If he gets heads up, it'll be interesting because he'll probably have played heads up 100,000 times online, maybe. At least. Yeah. And, and, and again, no messing there. Yeah, like no messing. No, that, that would be the number is probably that's probably a gross under if underestimate. You're a, if you're a spin and go pro, you're probably playing 40 to 50 spin and goes an hour. Yeah. So you might be playing 400, 500 spin and goes a day. And you're, getting, you're probably getting heads up 300 in 350 of those yeah. if it's 500. And if you're playing five days a week, 
That's uh, 1750, and it, um, which works out at almost a million a year. Act. No, sorry, a hundred thousand a year. So that so would the be estimate was spot on, really. Yeah, that would be um, very intimidating to get heads <laughs> up against a guy, and, you, and he goes, "I have been heads up 100,000 times online this year." Yeah, but the counterpoint is, you just go, "Yeah, but no. it's now the count space." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, many of those did you win? 50,400. <laughs> I'm one of the best. Chernikov gets it done there with the small pair. Drops the hammer. Applies the ICM pressure. Puts the shoe on the other foot. Yeah. Jasper Jr. says, why all the talk about I, E-Y-E, see him? I see him. So thank you to the uh, 400 people who have stuck around to watch this exciting conclusion here. Where did those other 300 people go? Well, actually, we had we had less than 400 um, when we went to the break, so at least a few of them have come back. I think they all left when you left. They were like, lapping's well, out, that's it, that's no fun. It's no fun anymore. I was inducing that comment, i got to be honest. Yeah. Shameless. Completely Absolutely shameless. shameless. And just like that, we'd lost 20 people in an, in an instant. And I'm not even joking. <laughs> Michael already <laughs> asked the question, have Darren and I managed to play any poker ourselves? We didn't know. We thought we might be able to get a, a sneaky nightly tournament in uh, one of the days. But actually, do you know what? It's been pretty tiring, not yeah. in a complaining way. It's been great to be here. But these um, commentary days are fairly long. I likened it to Darren. It's like you play every hand. And, and you survive the day every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no, uh, there's no moments where you get to go back to the room and, and throw furniture around because <laughs> you've just bust. Indeed not. Or do that um, consolation sleep immediately after bust out. Do you do those, David? I don't sleep, but I look. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let our audience in a little peek behind the curtain. Oh, no. He's very worried. You should see his face. He's so oh, worried no. right now. Don't talk consolation sleep. I said now, nothing else. Dara and I, there's a, we have a secret shame. We don't do it always. We might do it once a trip. But occasionally, if, particularly if we simultaneously bust to the tournament, we go for ice creams. We do go for ice cream, yeah. All in. All in here with the ace queen. This should get the job done, and it does. Anyone else out there in the chat have a bust out ritual? Ice creams are, I think that's kind of, they go together, don't they? Constellation yeah, ice cream. You, mo you move from ICM to ice cream. <laughs> so the Lithuanian who's now the short stack, but he definitely has his three handed ranges nailed in. Gonna see a lot of raggedy hands here. I kind of feel like Jack Two's got to get involved. Better than average hand, Dara. Tr tricky one, obviously. Yeah, but and it's mm, yeah, that's interesting. A prospatizum. Over the top, baby. <laughs> Huge thank you to some of our regulars in the chat. We've had quite a few people. <coughs> Wurzel Gummidge springs to mind. Donna Morton, of course, their Dark Angel. Indeed. Michael Retty, Jasper, Aidan Quinlan. Decent Irish contingent, too. Yeah, very much so. Another walk. And uh, Orthodox there made reference again to, he told us earlier on the stream that he has a racehorse called Over the Top, uh, which led to a wonderfully confused discussion between him and the online players. When he said horse, they all said, oh, where does he play? What sites does he play on? And they just assumed he meant a, a, a player that he staked online. And he explained that it was actu an actual race horse uh, uh -huh. that runs. Orthodoxy folding on the button. Interesting spot here, probably limp. Yeah, he does limp here. 
And Chernikov will check behind with the Queen Nine. Some floppage. some value yeah but um, Chernikov has nothing to pay him off with I did comment that Chernikov actually plays pretty straightforward post flop doesn't just doesn't uh, apply too much pressure when he doesn't have it we have some uh, bust out rituals in the chat Michael Rettel says usually head to the bar after a bust out that's a reasonably common one Joe B says, after tournament at Cheesesteak, then Cherry Garcia in the Borgata. Oh, Philly Cheesecake. Well, tired, mm. my friend. Ooh, all in, but the same hand. And some Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's, indeed. Well, is Deg Thierry Ovis about to hit the rail here? Unlikely. Would be very unlikely. Would have to, he'd have to get four flushed. Chernikova can't be loving Ace Eight in this spot, Dara. I think you've just changed his uh, his gender there. It's actually Chernikov. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I've said I've said it like a hundred <laughs> times today. Yeah. <laughs> Testament to how difficult some of the pronunciations have been today. That every single time I try to pronounce Dechiari Ovias. I oh have to God. look at it, that's and I'm still not sure I got yeah, there no, at the that, end. That, that's a difficult one. Yeah, good fold, I think, on balance. Obviously, yeah. an ace stands yeah. to be the best hand yeah. so yeah. often yeah. here. Yeah. But actually, yeah. an yeah. almost yeah. 20 big blind shove. And yeah. as we have said, ICM is at its yeah. most extreme yeah. now. Yeah. Harvey Norris yeah. asks, where's your next commentary gig? We don't really know. Uh, yeah. Harvey, yeah. commentary is very much yeah. a sideline yeah. for us. Um, yeah. But we have enjoyed this a lot. It's been great to work with Ali. Real professional after years of having to put up with, <laughs> with, with lesser professionals. Obviously, it's always great to work with David, too. It's very harsh on Ian Simpson, our former newsman, who I can only assume you were referencing. Clearly. No, I want to second that. A great pleasure to work with veteran broadcaster Please. Ali Najad for the like last I, few days. I feel like I got slow rolled there. Uh, where's the government says I googled some photos of Rochdale. Up the Rochdale. Up the Dale. And Jasper Jr. says great comment, great job with the commentary gents. You guys and Ali have been very enjoyable. Thank you. We've, we've definitely had fun here. And it's not over yet. We still have two more days. Yeah, we're going to be bringing you coverage of the High Roller. Um, that's going to be an exciting one. We're going to get straight into the, the nitty-gritty, straight into the final day of that one. And mm. let me tell you, there's a few beasts in the room out there. Late Reg just closed on that event, so yeah. um, that's probably going to produce a creamy field. All in on the small blind. Less than 20 bigs. The raggy ace doesn't want to do anything else. I know looking into the future, we've obviously mentioned in October the EPT that will be here. Merit Poker putting on at least four of these types of events per year now yeah. to go along with other traveling tours that want to come. Yeah. Darren and I will certainly be giving the uh, shout out to Unibet when we get home about how much our players might love a trip to North Cyprus at some point in the year. Indeed. So as these guys with their ambition here in Crinia want to get bigger and bigger and attract more and more people to the island. Um. Uh, Wurzel Gummer says, how would you describe the field composition for a 3K? Um, mixed. Uh, I mean, we've obviously had some genuine beasts, and we saw that on the final table with Held and Panke in particular. Um, you know, they're guys who would not be out of place in, in a 25K. 
Um, but then we have had other players who are uh, what we des would describe as purely recreational. These guys going to play mm. fairly deep here with some. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, Lithuania would be railing this int with interest, praying they play a big pot. I was, I was just about to say, could have been very interesting if Orthodoxu had had any semblance of a piece, but he actually folded the hand before our graphics could <laughs> even emerge. Yeah, it was like zero I'm, interest. I'm done with this hand. That is such a disappointing flop. It's it's the wrong color. I don't have any matching symbols. Uh, Jamie Nixon is still in the high roller, Michael, by virtue of the fact he's firing his second bullet. Yeah. And uh, let's see about other questions. Is there no smoking in the tournament room now? I haven't seen any smoking in the tournament room. I have seen smoking in the halls, but uh, not the tournament room. So I think they must have changed that rule. Yeah, no smoking in the tournament rule. Uh, in the tournament room is a rule. Um, to go with that, you can smoke in the smoking sections of restaurants and the kind of poker kitchen area. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a slightly different vibe to other European countries in that respect. A bit more like going back in time, Dara. Yeah. But also, it has to be said, it's, there's not as much smoking as in certain Eastern European countries. Uh, certainly any time I go to Bulgaria, I'm just stunned by the fact that you can apparently smoke anywhere. Let's just put it like this. I, haven't, I don't think I've actually inhaled uh, cigarette smoke at any point this trip. Dejtiari Ovas has gone big ball for the most part uh, in the last few hands, but he's going to just open up. This is, I guess, an induce. I think it is an induce, and I think it might do the trick, to be honest. Yeah. He's only got 13.6 million. I can't imagine it being a raised fold no, unless it came Chernikov has just three called. bet, four bet. But just flats, okay. Well, Chernikov, as you said, they're no, always yeah. inclined to sort of flat and no, see no, a flop no, and yeah. play from there. Very much his style. There was one hand where Held uh, chopped his stack with a three bet and, and Chernikov just called. I feel like Chernikov maybe has to be sticky ones here. Yeah, yeah he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's got he's got all the back doors here. Back not doors, no pair. There's not no pair as well. Has some showdown. He's hit a pair oh. now and they've picked up a flush draw. Well, this one could get messy. Yeah, he's not going anywhere now. Um, Dejtiari Ovis won't fear the queen because ace-queen not part of the flatting mm. range. Queen Checked. six also not likely to be. It is possible there's some flush combos. He has the ten of spades, which is sort of important. It's worth noting he checked back his hand there. I'm pretty sure that was to check whether he had the ten of spades. Um, he knew that his hand was ace ten off, and he knew obviously mm -hmm. he didn't have the ace of spades. All in and a call. Oh, wow, just like that, guys. Wow, this no is no messing about. This is a huge moment. Um, wow, look at the pot. 19 million in this pot. Chernikov. I feel like Chernikov could have found a, a flat there on the turn, but we won't belabor that now and, and focus instead on this all important river card. He has a lot of outs. He sure does. 13 outs there, you can see them on screen. And oh, that's one of them! That's the cruel way. Yeah. That is cruel on. Well, okay. <laughs> that was amazing. That's my that's my favourite. We're going that's back my to the Lithuanian. We're, Go. <laughs> we're going back to the Lithuanian. <laughs> we lose the Lithuanian gentleman who has played superbly, and you can see the look on his face there. There that. he is, Degtiariovas, our third place finisher. Well, he found himself in a spin and go familiar territory there at the end, but it wasn't to be. The Russian bear, well, he hits runner, runner, trips. Yeah, he certainly would have taken that at the start of the day when he was eight of nine, um, and he was very, very short. But three-handed, he would have fancied his chances. Yeah, I think he was my favorite three-handed, but it just didn't go well. And I suppose at some level, it doesn't matter how much experience you have in the format. Ultimately, card distribution will decide an awful lot. And we're gone to our break. 
We will be going to a break now in just one moment. Those guys are just going to set up for heads up play. Very much looking forward to what will be an engrossing encounter. Dara, hard to go against the chip leader. Always kind of feel like they've got a, a pretty substantial edge here. Do you see any way for Orthodox Orthodoxu? Absolutely, I do. Yeah, I think the cards often decide heads up. Um, I do think Chernikov's style is probably well suited to heads up. He's he's the more loose, sort of willing to put his chips in type player. But maybe Orthodoxu will will adjust for heads up. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, fascinating encounter on the cards here, guys. Please do join us. It's just going to be a few minutes. These guys are going to be ready really, really quickly. And uh, yeah, can't wait to find out. We're going to crown a champion here at the Merit Poker Western Series main event. Check it out. Seven suited. He's going to make his move. Seven big blinds is enough to go Ooh, with. Mm. Uh, Sagan's no got a. Break. This is close. No, that was Tricky little one. Break. That was that was lunch break. What you're talking about? Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of chat Listen, off the table while. Break. Talk about the break coming up there. Whether it's a lunch a dinner break or not. Thank you. I guess when you're in an all-inclusive resort, you would like uh, longer breaks. Chernikov's <laughs> going with this, Dara. Yeah, Chernikov is not a man who'll ever fall king queen for seven big blinds. No, and he's and he very aware that he will okay, dominate some of the range, Dara Ushkov. Obviously, will go with queen jacks, queen ten no. suited, king yeah. jacks, that type of thing. Great call there from Chernikov. Unfortunate for Dara to be dominated here. Battle of the Russians. The <laughs> He's not even standing up. Look at this. The Russian bear is hungry. The Russian bear is standing up, ready to do his victory flex if he wins. Doroshka sitting down, cool as a cucumber, composing himself for the next hand if he's still in the tournament. And that's a terrible flop for him. He's all but shuts the door he's on Doroshka. He's going to have to hit a runner, runner straight now, or we will lose our first player. And that is it. We say goodbye to Doroshkov in ninth place. Flash mat. He cashes for Flash mat. 37K. <laughs> Played superbly well, it must be said, Dara. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure why Chernikov needed to point out that he had the <laughs> flush knot, as he called it, uh, as the man walked up. Eating, really, the two I booked dominant activities. <laughs> I booked two seats for my journey home. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but for very different reasons. I was hoping perhaps some of the local talent might <laughs> might be interested in a visit to the States, David, you know? I'm happy to be a tour guide. Barsegian opens with two eights to 900,000. Again, deuces find the muck. Queen Jack in the cutoff. Folded quite easily. A few more days. Don't lose hope yet. Oh, what makes you think that Plans have not been hatched. Oh. <laughs> they haven't. <laughs> Ace 10 in the big blind for Panka now. Got himself at 4.4 million. Boy, this is obviously not a hand he's going to want to fold. But was it one that he wanted to jam? The answer we now have. And it is yes. These spots are so interesting because clearly it's a call if everyone's deeper, but it's so much of Barsegian stack, everyone's shallower, it has such an impact on the ranges. Barsegian, I don't think, would consider folding a hand as strong as eights to Dominic Panka if this was a 11 and a half big blind rejam in situations where they were both deep or where one of them was deep or he was deep he does call anyway we're going to the races we sure are and this is a healthy 10.1 million chip pot you see panka 
like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons, just wrapping his fingers around. His fate hanging in the balance, on his feet, sunglasses off, hoping that he's going to haul this one in. Two overs against the two eights, and King Jack five. Neither player with a club on the monotone texture, but plenty of outs acquired for Panka. Four queens, to be specific. Beyond the ace and ten, he was always hunting, as he has ten outs at present. Blank turn card, and now it is ten outs once for Panka. For whom the bell tolls, can he connect and double through Barsegian? The answer is no. Mr. Beauty succumbs to the beast. Barsegian there. Sporting lap around the table as he bids adieu to the rest of the field. Perhaps the player that impressed David and I most, Dara, is the Lithuanian, Derek Teriovas. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's been phenomenal today. He started the second shortest in, uh, in chips. He did get a card rush in the first session, but he played it perfectly and uh, exploited it to the maximum. Well, Serge Mata with the ace-queen is jamming here. Chernikov's going to call with ace-10. This is a wonderful development. Orthodoxu not waking up with anything frisky in the big and so they'll be on their backs here and you see Chernikov's reaction instantly disappointed to see that he is dominated does have 27 percent equity though in this 9.2 million chip pot does have the hearts working for him uh, unfortunately for him one of those hearts is in Mata's hand as well but that does increase his prospects slightly So to the flop we go, as Serge Mata has to sweat. I told no lies, just seven minutes later and these guys are ready to battle. Live from Merrick Crystal Cove Hotel, we are heads up there, O'Kearney. Yeah. It's going to be super exciting now. All that talk of ICM is out the window. They are playing for the difference between first and second. And chip stacks, well, a 60 40 uh, in favor of Chernikov, but close enough and deep enough that we could have a bit of play here. Yeah, plenty of room to battle. Obviously, these blinds at 4 8 will creep up to 5 1. That still leaves them relatively deep, 29 and 46 deep, should that occur. So, yeah, this one could go on for quite some time. Could indeed, yeah. Um, slightly different styles. Chernikov is the more willing to put his chips in the middle. He's the chip leader. Um, but sometimes things change heads up and players uh, can shift and switch gears. Well, an all-important stat is that both players guaranteed at least 274k now <coughs> and basically playing for a hundy. 100k heads up. A hundy. A hundy. You're going with hundy. I went with hundy. I could go with hundo. I thought hundy. <laughs> <laughs> a reminder for any latecomers there. This final table was a fascinating, engrossing, enthralling affair, it must be said. It started with a bang. There was a very cagey middle. I suppose it has gotten a little bit more aggressive. Some more bust outs in the recent past. Indeed. Interesting here, uh, Orthodox who electing to raise the 5 4 on the button. And <laughs> Chernikov is sticking it in his eye. Yeah, Chernikov keen to close this one out quickly, maybe. Yeah. A reminder of the fallen, Doroshkov, 37k. He finished in ninth place. In eighth place, Dominic Panka, disappointing result for Dominic, obviously coming in in third place, 49,600. We saw that huge hand against Chernikov. 
go wrong for him early on. He squeezed the ace queen, got the king jack board, Chernikov just happy to shove. The 10 jack got the job done on that occasion. Panka then had to navigate short for a while. As we look down at Chernikov and an ace jack again, there. Mm. As I said, the cards are very important heads up. And so far, at least in the first two hands, Chernikov has had the edge on that front. But Orthodox is going to see the flop. Yeah, for a 3x as well. Big raise, heads up. And they both miss, which will usually be the case, heads up. Oh, look at this, Dara. This is a gear change from Orthodoxu. But Chernikov is not a man who tends to fold to the first bet. And he's hit his ace in the river. It's very hard for Orthodoxu to have the ace. Oh, he's not repping mm, much here, Dara. Not repping much at all. Like He did just... 10 high. Call. Well, he announces his hand as 10 high. We he preface this by saying it could be a long heads up battle not looking like it will be right now no at the moment it's, it's all the russian bear um orthodox looked to change gears there but um i don't mind that the the turn bet there but the river bet was optimistic he really didn't have too much asx in his range yeah not repping a huge amount a reminder of again of the fallen surge matter he played the short stack for quite some time finished in seventh place 62,400. just his health very much the star of the show for a period. Come sixth place, 75,000. Disappointing result, I'm sure, for him. And Edward Barsegian in fifth, 93,300. We see Orthodox with the Ace King get the job done in a quick one there. Mm -hmm. JB oh. Wellbeing in the chat says, Have you two secured comms for all events this year? Enjoyed it. David's grown on me. It's grown. It's growing on you, or David has grown on you. David has grown on me. Oh. Um, what parts of your body have I grown on? Oh God, David, really? <laughs> Just you, you, you put it out there. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm commentating with a certain other Irish commentator now, and my finger's going to be hovering over the mute button. we we'll leave the audience to uh, speculate. <laughs> so it's been fairly even, Stephen, so far. No major movement as of yet. And button fold there. Not sure we saw what he folded, but it was good timing because Chernikov at King Queen. Yeah, no. Chernikov. Definitely in the ascendancy now, pole position, looking to make this a rapid-fire affair. Yeah. We see the trophy there on the table. Heads-up can come at you pretty fast as well. You're, pl uh, you're obviously playing every hand, and you know you lose four or five in a row, and you can start feeling beaten up. Again, a 3x, Dara. Yeah, this is Chernikov style, big, big ball poker. Well, you mentioned they're winning a few pots in a row and how it sort of can create in the mind a feeling of momentum, obviously an illusory feeling, but momentum is one of those curiously human anomalies. Yeah, yeah. Our brains are pattern-seeking, and we do notice these things when we lose four or five in a row, and it feels like we're more likely to lose the next one, but actually, you know, numbers have no memory, as they say. Well, really interesting oh, look at here. This. Orthodox. Look at this. Orthodox might stick this in now. Yeah, this is 20 bigs. I think you might have to, to be honest, yeah. given the level of aggression we've seen. Is he going for just call? Oh, wow. This is going to be hard to navigate, Dara. Stack to pot ratio of 0.7 to 1. This There's is one more bet in this hand, maybe. Yeah. Maybe he just figures he's going to go with any flop that doesn't have an ace on it. Well, and that's he's, probably gonna, he's gonna quite like oh. that board. All in snap call. Well, Chernikov got shot against set. His hand very much wedged in the cookie jar right now. This could be a huge but flip he still, around. He still has 18 percent. Uh, he has backdoor spades as well as the gut shot. 
Orthodoxu. Orthodoxu doing the commentary for the rail. And he's picked up the spades, oi, oi. but that kills it. The house is enough for Orthodoxu. Aye, aye, aye. Bit of a misstep there mm. from Chernikov, Dara. Live by the sword, die by the sword. I mean, we saw him do that on the very first hand he played on the final table against Panka. He got away with it on that occasion, got Panka to fall because Panka had nothing. The problem is you'll run Cyber into stuff. Bear. Cyprus Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. That's a huge momentum shift there. And it really is game on now. Yeah, we're even Stevens, Dara. Even Stevens, and you'd have to make Orthodox your favourite now because. Well, it feels like he's going about his business a little bit more thoughtfully. A little bit more sedately, yeah, yeah. Cypriot Bear. Yes. Cypriot Bear now has to stack his chips while playing heads up, never easy. He has what we Irish call a big mohel of chips in front of him. Indeed he does. Yeah, the 5-5 five five call there, which is getting some uh, attention in the chat, was definitely unorthodox. Uh, if he hadn't flopped his set, it's interesting to know what his plan was on different flops with three overcards. Sure was. Dar I think we're getting it in here. <laughs> really? These, these two hands are far too good for these ra <laughs> compared to the ranges we've seen these guys play. Well, Orthodox <laughs> doesn't look like he wants to get it in pre-flop. <laughs> I mean, he did just flat for almost half his stack with fives previous hand. So, and I jest, of course, but there does feel as though there's a, a willingness to gamble has crept in, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Chernikov is betting his pair of sixes. Orthodox is sticking. Oh, no, he raised. He raised, and quick fold from Chernikov. And now maybe it's Chernikov's turn to feel beaten up. Everyone feels in a hurry right now. It's playing very, very fast. It's playing so fast that Orthodox can't get these chips stacked. A <laughs> <laughs> mutual respect between these two guys. They probably both played more unorthodox than anyone else at this final table. And I guess both have gotten there in the end. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. They certainly have played a very different style from um, most of the other players, but here they are, heads up. And a contrast in styles, even between these two. Orthodox is trying to keep the pot small. Chernikov is trying to blow pots. Uh, he calls with the queen three off. Gamble, gamble. Gamble, gamble indeed. They both miss. Orthodox is going to. Yeah, Siba takes it. Hey, the sprinkling of back doors there. He's still struggling to stack all those chips. Battle of the Bears. Sticking to the strategy of three Xing from the bottom. The correct adjustment to that would be to tighten your range considerably in the big blind. Um, you don't want to put that much chips in out of position. Put that a strong hand. three again, another hand we've seen before, and 5-4, which was the first hand Orthodoxy was dealt heads up. Pretty reasonable defend here, the queen three suited. Yeah. Oh, mm. hello. Well, the 5-4 has absolutely nothing, so Orthodoxy declining to bluff at this. I thought we might see a stab there. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, JB will be asking if Andy deals have been done we genuinely don't know so 
We can't, uh, unfortunately, inform you on that. from Chernikov, unexpected. Orthodoxu just flashes one card to our reader, so uh, as we Jack eight against Jack X. This could be a bit of fun. Yeah. Play along at home. Um, well, mm. certainly a reason for Chernikov to continue here. Gooder and over. Orthodoxu could certainly have connected. Yeah. I think Jack ten, seven, and four all in the range. And now it's a double gutter. Quick check back. Ooh, wow. There it is. Well. Fault. So probably yeah. a good hand for Orthodox Supri then. One guesses maybe a King Jack or a yeah. Ace Jack. Yeah. Looks like they're changing the deck. Ah. Zoom out for a moment. Look at that. Take stock of what has been going down. Chernikov began this heads-up confrontation with a reasonable chip lead. Immediately chipped up some more. I think he won maybe five or six of the first seven pots. But then a huge showdown. We saw Orthodox who flop a set. Played it a little unorthodox pre, I must say, with the pocket fives. But um, once the good shot had been achieved by Chernikov, he was willing to play for all of us. Turn paired the board and shut the door for Chernikov and since then we've basically been even Stephen playing for a hundred K the difference between first and second right now a hundred bags to use some over off to use poker parlance where does that come from, Dara? I believe it's a cockney phrase. Um, oh. Or maybe horse racing, but it's certainly UK based, for sure. It's a bag is a grand? Yeah, a bag is a grand. Well, this one could certainly get messy for Chernikov. He hasn't played it. Oh my goodness, I was going to say he hasn't played. A hand slow, and he tends to play these marginal hands very fast. We saw with the Jack yeah. 10 earlier, it was a, a second pair hand. Ooh. He was just willing to gamble with it. Well, he's put oh, Orthodoxu in a very tricky spot here, who is probably thinking there's quite a few flush draws in this super aggressive line, but fearing the four, obviously fearing the Jack better kicker. Some hands you wouldn't actually anticipate being in the raising range would be in Chernikov's. I think he's got to go with it there against this villain. Yeah, you've top pair, and it, I mean, he can have any draw. He can also have any jack. Most of the jacks are actually worse than yours. Do you ever proceed here with a call and maybe fold if it's a club? No, you can't really do no, that with the nine of clubs. Because in your you, have, hands. you have the nine of clubs yourself. Oh, so. it's so funky. It's a tricky spot, but I would go with my hand here. Yeah, that, like it's. He's he folded. Folded. Wow. wow. So the aggression plays off there. Um, Very strange yeah. way he gets his chips sometimes, Chernikov. Yeah. yeah, he benefits. He does benefit from people folding those spots for sure. Um, whereas Gomic has explained where the bag comes from. It's a bag of sand, a grand. So it is Cockney rhyming slang. Nice, nice, nice. And uh, Oh, okay. Well, we have an expert. At, wh wh what's monkey come from? Monkey's 500, I know, but I don't know where that comes from, and I'm going to guess he does. That's definitely a horse racing one. Um, 
but I don't know what the, what the origin of monkey is. In Quinlan asking, what would the standard raise at this stack deck be with the big blind ante in play, which it is? Generally, you would be, you'd be looking at 2.3 to 2.5. Um, that would be the standard. Yeah, Chernikov generally going on the larger size. Uh, Orthodoxu generally favouring that sort of sizing you described there. There, the 2.4 maybe is what he's choosing. Indeed. Um. Wurzel doesn't know where monkey comes from, so I'm going to sh try and Google it. Ten. Uh, the reason why it's London slang for 500 is it's derived from the 500 rupee note, which featured a monkey. Okay. Orthodoxu, big raise here with the pocket threes. Just flashes one three as he takes that one down. Yeah, and in fact, Aidan Quinlan was aware of that too. He's just said the same thing in the chat. And Michael Rettle too. Soldiers came back from the war and referred to the 500 as a monkey. We have a very, very well-educated chat, I have to say. YouTube chat gets a lot of stick, um, but ours is unusually well informed. Why is a 25 called a pony? I have no idea. As we see unorthodox suit, as I'm going to name him from now on, flop best here. He's setting the trap very much against a, a, an aggressive opponent. I quite like it, actually. I think he's probably realising he might get more chips by inducing bluffs from Chernikov, who has shown a willingness to fling chips liberally. Um, according to Google, there, there's no clear... Uh, th th there are a number of different explanations for why a 25 is called a pony. Um, but... The one that's coming up the most often is apparently it's the 25 rupee note has a pony on it as well. well. So, Chernikov on the button will open it up with his standard 3x rays. Orthodoxu won't be folding the threes. No, and I think Chernikov will yeah. really quite like his queen nine suited in this spot. Three bets to 10 million. Oof. And he's beaten into the pot, Dara, by Chernikov. Super unorthodox. They're getting to the flop now with a stacked pot ratio of just over one. And he flops the set again. Some man. Every time he calls for half the effective stack, he flops a set, and he turns. Oh my quads. goodness gracious me! Well, continues checking. I like the checks. I, I think against this particular villain, you just gotta throw rope at him, yeah. and uh, it's gonna work here. Eleven million. All in. He shoved. He's not even gonna give him a chance to catch up with the draw, Dara. Mm. I don't like that. I gotta no, say. No, I would have liked to. I and think you flat Chernikov's exactly the kind of guy who might follow through. Yeah, Patrick Winterbottom in the chat noticed how just how Sa fast they're playing. Uh, Cypress Bear wins that one, yeah. <laughs> um, I would just like to note, to point to the fact that um, in that hand, Chernikov bet all of his yellow chips. Oh. Exactly 11 million and bet it very quickly. So it, I don't think a lot of thought went to the bet size. It was just, I'm going to bet this pile of chips here. Oh. Patrick Winterbottom it says, don't shove. Yeah, it agreed. Don't shove when you've got quads against Russian Bear. I, f I feel like it could have been, well, it couldn't be the last hand because Chernikov had a small lead, but I feel like it could have been the penultimate hand. Yeah, this is a massive thing. Now <sighs> Now he's got more than a 3-1 to one chip lead, How having much started him. 16. 16 million. Is this a, is this a, a rub down or? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's eyeballing the stack at 16. We see it's 17. Pretty similar and well. Wasting no time, Chernikov all in. All wow. in. Wow, just a jack seven. 
uh, shove for the 20 something big blinds. Yeah, uh, pro tip, when your head's up, you don't. Have, you never have to ask the other person how many chips they have because it's whatever number you don't have. The, chi the number of chips don't change. <laughs> well, I'm inclined not to sort of be silly with this now. It does feel as though the wheels have come off to some degree, which does make me feel like, even though we're not privy to it, some sort of deal has probably taken place. I, I'm, I, I'm not sure. I think Chernikov would play like this even if he, if <laughs> he, didn't, he, would. If he didn't have a deal. Uh, there is a reckless this. abandon, though. Taking there is, yeah. Vautour describes it very well as Big Eleven-esque. Cool. Okay. And now we have a limped pot. Okay, now Chernikov's limped. That's a new strategy for him. Orthodox who's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to check with my 4-2. And it goes check, check. The speed of the action. The speed is just remarkable. Yeah, we can't even keep up here, I've guys. never I seen a heads-up play so fast. I have number two. He has number two. And number two is okay. not enough because number ten would Wait, have hang on makes a, a flush. Did Chernikov check back? He did, yeah. With the second nuts? Yes. N no, he was out of position. No, he, no, he was in he position, you're button. right. Yeah, he had the button. Okay, yeah. I'm, I, I am inclined to think that there's, I don't know what's happening right now, but I, I, I think they're playing at such a pace that I think he actually forgot his own holding. Because you must, you simply must bet second <laughs> nuts on that river. And he snap checked it back. Uh, he snap checked it back, yeah. It's, yeah, the man who shoved the gutter um, just checked back with the second nuts in a really small pot. And Chernikov all in with the King Jack. Telly Savalas. Yeah. Uh, this is this is a big shove, twenty five big blinds. And Orthodoxu with the nine high. <laughs> that was a very sad fold. That was a oh my god! He's shoved twenty five big blinds and now I have to fold. Chernikov, well, he's kind of bulldozed his way back. It's now only two to one. He was more than three to one down. Six five against seven five. Same. They both have absolutely nothing. Same. They both, they have, both a have a good shot. Same. They're both seven completely disinterested. <laughs> it's <laughs> remarkable, yeah. He's holding his head like it's just... We're, we're getting in a hand about every 45 seconds right now. Yeah. He looked a little surprised there that the push was pushed to him. I think he thought that might have been a chop. I know technically I'm the play-by-play -play guy, but it's too fast for me to say the words. <laughs> yeah, and I'm the analyst guy. Um, and, there's, and, and there's absolutely no time for you to it's analyze difficult. what's happening. It's difficult to analyze some of these players. Well, by the time you get your first utterance out about yeah, the pre-flop pre behavior, the hand's already over, the yeah. next hand's being dealt. Yeah. Okay. Orthodox who quickly Folds releases the 7-3. Yeah. As, as he should, I think. If you're going to yep. have some folds, I think that's definitely Agreed. the sort of stuff that you're going to pitch. They are playing for something, even if they're not playing for anything. And I don't know, and you don't know. No. But they are playing for something very definite, and I want to... A trophy and a title. No. Well, yes. But also something else. An interview with Ali Najat. Oh. Maybe that explains why they're... Uh <laughs> you think that might be why they're punting? <laughs> <laughs> if, if that's the only prize. <laughs> <laughs> well... Okay, we are on the turn suddenly. I was about to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have never seen a heads up. This is this is this is the fastest heads up I believe in the history of poker. Four, eight. I win. You win. Go. Next hand. Next hand. Come on. Come on. Dealer. Come on. We want to get to that um, all-you-can-eat buffet before it closes. Okay, Dara, let me do this next one on my own. I'm going to try and keep up. Okay, go for it. Let's do it. You can try the next one. 
Do I have to? Let me check your contract. No, apparently not. Apparently it's me again. Okay, we have a big slick here for Orthodoxu. I assume we're going to go for that 1.9 million bet. That has been his standard. Now a little, little extra on top here, 2.1. Chernikov with the offsuit ace. Could go both ways here. Does decide to just call. So some of the aggression has been taken out of proceedings. To the flop we go. 963, two spades. Orthodox. Ooh, with the two over cards and the flush draw. Chernikov may stick around with the ace high. No, he doesn't. They, 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 they slowed down there. That's ridiculous, David. Uh, they gave you plenty ample opportunity. I felt like it was okay. I felt like yeah. I could go. I don't think I could have done the previous two hands. Yeah, that was that was the slowest hand they've played so far. Uh, do we know what both of these guys do for a living? We do not. Why are you not privy to deals? Uh, we're stuck in the commentary booth, to be honest. And, uh, you know, the world could end outside for all we know, and we'd only find out an hour later. We always take it to a morbid place at this time of night. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the first time you've suggested that there's nobody <laughs> else outside the door. We're going to yeah. walk into some sort of Shaun of the Dead hellscape when we yeah. leave the booth. Finally. Michael Rettle makes a good point. Trash hands, they play fast. That's, that is true. You saw Orthodox who, and you didn't pick this up in your expert commentary. <laughs> he slowed down noticeably when he looked at the Ace King. Mm, true, true. Okay, Chernikov's in there with the Ace 10. Orthodox who defending the Queen 7. Again, the really fast check, check, check with, with nothing. On yeah. King 5-5. Five five. Both guys have enough showdown. And yes, I think both still have enough showdown. And this will go check check. They're both, gi they're both giving away timing tells here for sure. Uh, Voter says um, Chernikov is a web developer, and Orthodoxy was a prison officer. Um, that might be a joke. I might just have read out Connell's joke, but I think or Chernikov is a lecturer in psychoanalysis. In Lacanian or Freudian? Lacanian, definitely Lacanian. Look at those okay. patches. That's just the cardigans doing that for you, isn't it? It is, yeah. You just think only professors wear cardigans. Chernikov opens. Orthodoxy releases. Next hand, please. If you want to go smoke cigarettes, okay, yeah? If you want to go smoke cigarettes, it's okay. No problem with me. Interesting. He's suggesting a cigarette break, even though he's not the smoker. Code language, is that Is that code language for let's chop it? Chernikov. Oh he's God. on the short stack now. He's going to open things up with the A6 off. So 2.9. So a hefty 3.5x. Orthodox who is going to defend his suited 10. Okay, this could be an interesting one. These are hands that both have prospects. To the flop we go. And Ooh. 10 has hit 10 on has first hit. glance. Jack, 10, 8, rainbow. They both have a pair. Chernikov, happy to take a oh. showdown at this point. He's picked up a pair now, so probably calls this bet of 2K. Yeah, he does. Orthodox who, marginal value. Certainly shriveled up. They've both got raisins ten. now, and I think happy to take showdown. They do. And Orthodox, who's 10, will hold, and he will drag in another pot. 10 million in that pot. He's now up to 55.5 five million. Yeah. <laughs> Connell is, is committing to the bit here that uh, Orthodox, who's a prison officer, he starts with he opened that hand quicker than a cell door, um, and then he goes on to say only a screw would offer a cigarette break in that spot. And credit to our dealer, keeping up with the pace of play. Yeah, tremendous standard of dealing here. It really is. Orthodox, who, well, we've seen him play these small pairs very, very fast. I imagine Eight. he's going to raise it up here. He does. And Chernikov could go either Eight. way with a queen eight. Just a call by the looks of things. No, all in. Ooh. 26 big blinds. Yeah, why not? 
queen, eight off suit. And it's a flip. This could be it. Orthodox suit looking at a man who either has over cards or a better hand. No, he lets it go. We don't get the flip. Jernikov. I mean, this style, you do get those fools. Gortur suggesting we need two dealers. Keep up with this. We need seven commentators to keep up with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has been rapid fire. Chernikov looks as though he's limped in here with the 8-5 off suit. Yeah, battle of the raggy three gappers. Yeah, Orthodox who happy to take a flop. There are going to be boards that interact with both ranges here. Like this one, for example. Jack 8-4, middle pin against bottom pair. Both with back doors. That will probably freeze the action. It does. And a five dealt as quick as you like there. Chernikov improving to two pair, he bets, and the Orthodox is, who I think has amazing. check folded, but yes, that is what happened. Yeah. Wow. It is uh, impossible to keep up with. Um. Okay, I think we might have uh, somebody who knows what he's talking about in the chat now. Konstantinos Konstantinu, who sounds local, says Orthodox who is a betting shop owner. I, oh. de I could definitely buy that. Um, Dark Angel says these are not pro players. I believe that's correct. And Ray Wheatley says no Vogel sign, two minutes stalling here. No, I, I'd like to see one of those side by sides. Do you ever see that um, video that goes viral uh, from time to time on Twitter of Ronnie O'Sullivan's fastest 147 and mm -hmm. Peter Ebden pondering one <laughs> shot and Ronnie clears up in the same amount of time? <laughs> I feel as though we could watch a Vogel sign hand. <laughs> and watch these guys play like 11 hands. I think there's a Vogelsang hand going on at, at the PC at the moment that started before, <laughs> the, before the final table started <laughs> and they're only on the turn. Well, Jack 8 against 10-8 now. A limp pot. Neither player connecting. Chernikov First two bets wins. Yeah, Chernikov firing at... They have... Both tend to be just checking when they have nothing and betting when they have it, but Chernikov mixing it up there, betting with nothing. Yeah, Chernikov rallying now back to almost 30 million. Konstantinos Konstantino pointing out that he does also have a racing horse. Hor That's what they're called, yeah. Race horse. <laughs> I've forgotten words now. He has a racist horse. He has a race horse. A horse that races. Single race pot here. 10 4 versus Queen 3 on the 10 6 deuce. Chernikov likely to bet at some point. No, you can't predict anything here. If he checks back, I'm going to be shocked. Just check by the hands over. Who knows what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is absolutely. <laughs> I. <laughs> Okay, we're going to have to focus here, David. I, I am we're, doing my we're best, gonna guys. We're going to have to focus. We're going to have to focus. Can we watch this on, like, 0.5x speed? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm dialed in here. Do you want to give one a go on your own? I'm going to give one a go on my own. Okay, I sit back. Here we go. Jack oh. four on the button. He's just limped. And Orthodox who <laughs> doesn't want to raise the Russian bear, so he checks with the 8-6. Uh, they both missed, and two quick checks, two quick checks, they still have nothing, uh, well, slightly slower check from Chernikov, and... Both playing the board? Board. Both <laughs> playing the board, yeah. <laughs> Why would you bet there and try and steal it? <laughs> when you can just play the board and take half the pot. I estoy llamando, Helu. Mira por li. En cada la disposición, mira, ni os llame.
Αφού έχουμε το ρεστές φίλοι. Έχουμε το, έχουμε. It must be said over the course of this final table, Chernikov has played fearlessly. That hand against Panka early on, setting the tone. Oh. Orthodoxy raising it up here to the 1.9 uh, million is standard size from earlier. Chernikov going to call with the suited gapper. Flop is 10.85. Orthodoxy. Board of a pair, so. Orthodox is going to bet his top pair. Chernikov's going to call his bottom pair. Ooh. Action card. Action card, yeah. Chernikov turns open ended. Chernikov could go fast here. I've seen him raise in situations like this one. Mm. Wouldn't be surprised at all. No, he does just call. 30% hand here, Chernikov. Open ended and a pair. Ace misses both. Will Orthodox you consider going for some thin value? I well, he might. I don't think so. Not against uh, oh. Russian Bear. <coughs> Checks the back, wins the 13.6 million, adds to his. Cyprus oh. Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Cyprus Bear takes one down. Uh, a grumpy Russian Bear right now. Yeah, he's a little bit grumpy. We've seen him in great form, but he doesn't look too happy at the moment. Um, Aiden Quinn says, at what point level do they just start drinking shots for the trophy? Maybe they're already there. So, on we go. Cypress Bear against Russian Bear. Blinds are up. 500k, 1 million. With a million anti. That may force the action a little more. Well, we don't need to force the action with two premium hands such as this. Mm. Chernikov is going to, wow, 3.5x the Queens. Well, How much? Orthodox is probably going to stick him Ten in million. now. 10 million, well, effectively no, committing. Half the stack. And Chernikov won't take too long, I presume, before, over... Before he calls. <laughs> oh, before he sticks in this 19 no, million. Has, Orthodox has. who's made his bed. <laughs> They're going to go to showdown. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This could be it, though. Uh, he's drawing to the ace. Cypress Bear needs an ace from space. Chernikov looking to take the lead here if his ladies can hold. Yeah! There's ace. the ace. There's the ace. Orthodoxu with the premature celebration. <laughs> The mic's, <laughs> the mic's gone. Oh, wow. Running spades, running straight those, cards, those. or a queen. And Chernikov. Yeah. yeah. No, just a queen now, Dara. Just 5%. We are about to crown a champion unless, unless a queen comes out here on the river. Nope. Yes. And that is it. We have crowned a champion here at the Merit Western Cyprus Series. We don't need to commentate. He's taking over the commentary as well. Cyprus Bear, the winner. $372,000 to the good. Orthodox Orthodoxu is our champion. He will be talking to Ali Najad momentarily. Spare a thought for Michael our second for place you. finisher there. Russian bear. Boy, did he entertain us, Chernikov. I want Jessica for you. Dara, before we toss to Ali and that winner's interview. Thanks all guys, thanks all. Yeah, let's just watch the winner celebration maybe. Let him have his moment. And Israel trying to get into shot here. Well, why not? Bring your friends into the picture. Yeah. Huge congratulations. A tremendous moment for a local guy. Absolutely, yeah. You have to see it. You really do love to see it.
This is this is a moment he'll remember for the rest of his life. And the virtual confetti falling behind him. with this guy. I prefer virtual confetti, Dara, to the real stuff. Much yeah. easier to clean up the set afterwards. Orthodoxus, Orthodoxu is our champion. There you see it, the payouts, $372,800. What a huge day in the life of that man. Very well deserved. Some unorthodox play, it must be said, down the home straight. Dara, I, I wanna say, he was sort of the forgotten man at some level on our final table as he navigated sort of in quiet fashion compared to some of the others. He made a few noteworthy big folds. He generally looked to avoid confrontation, but you don't get the heads up without being willing to tango when the music is right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there was one last tango in Cyprus. Uh, he did change gears significantly heads up. He realized he was going to have to put the money in against uh, his opponent. It was, a, it was a contrast of styles. He was kind of mid-pack the whole way, and that's why we probably didn't pay too much attention to him. There wasn't periods where he seemed to be a threat of elimination. There wasn't periods where he was in the chip lead. So he timed it perfectly. He came right at the last minute. He did indeed, and sparing a thought there for Chernikov, who obviously was one of the major figures on this final table, uh, and during throughout the final day, really, he made some questionable flats, sometimes erring on the side of passivity pre-flop, and then, conversely, some eyebrow-raising shoves erring on the side of aggression post-flop. Yeah, he was quite inconsistent, let's say, in spots. There were certain spots where he just decided he was putting all the chips in because he had something, he had some kind of equity. And then there were other spots where he took more passive lines than uh, than a lot of players would. Well, two fabulous characters, Cypriot Bear, Russian Bear. I am keen to hear from Cypriot Bear now. We're going to toss to Ali Najad and that all-important winner's interview. After four grueling days of competition, the Merit Poker Western Series main event has crowned a champion. The Cyprus Bear, Orthodoxos Orthodoxu, joins me now. I gotta tell you, it was very exciting watching you at this final table, and in no small part due to the fact that you really seem to be a feel-based player. You weren't approaching this with a very technical attitude. You just went with your gut, and we love to see it. But did you have a strategy coming into today's final table? No, I'm not a tournament player. I don't have any strategy. I play like I feel myself. Yeah. Who was your toughest opponent here as you worked your way toward the title? And uh, don't understand the question. Who was the toughest player at the table, in, Ernesto, in your opinion? Ernesto, Ernesto, I don't remember the second name. Ernestas, the Lithuanian. Yes, the young, the young boy here. Yeah. It was played perfect, perfect. So he, he was a big challenge. He have, yes, he have the best strategy, uh, Ernesto only. At what point during the final table did you begin to feel like maybe, just maybe, you can win this tournament? Yes. When I, did you feel that? I feel when I come in the final table, one of my friends who come together, Parayotis, is for you. Cheering. <laughs> To me. Obviously, a very emotional moment for you. What do you want to say to other players out there, like yourself, who usually play cash games? They don't play tournaments. They don't have much experience about the fact that maybe they can win a tournament like this, too. It's very difficult, but I think they can try if they have economy. They start from small game. It's not... Uh, Necessary to play this game because it's expensive money. Nobody can buy 3,000 tournaments. 
uh, I think is to start to play more little. Yeah. Practice. Start small, and then eventually your dreams can come true. Well, Thank you very to, much. to make it official, Orthodoxus, I want to welcome the tournament Thank director you. here Thank at Merit Poker, Miss Angela Kozachuk, to give you your trophy. Once again, my congratulations. It was Thank really you. amazing, an amazing game, and you really deserve it. Bravo. Thank you very much. This is Thank for you. you. <laughs> Orthodoxus, Orthodoxu, the Cypress Bear, your winner here in the main.